Hello friends, welcome to DevOps Complete Course. My name is A.R. Shankar. I am so much excited to teach DevOps Complete Course and thanks for enrolling to my course. Before diving into DevOps, let's see what is our course or training objectives. Our course objectives are quite simple. In this course, you are going to learn industry most favorite DevOps tools stack I mean at this moment in the industry which DevOps tools are mostly used those tools are covered in this training. Next you are able to set up production ready DevOps CI/CD pipelines. Once you complete this course you can create your own CI/CD pipelines for your environments or for your projects. These are the objectives of this course. Now let's see who can learn this course. People who want to shift from other technologies like if you are already working as a system admin or database administrator or storage admin, cloud engineer, programmer or developer, any kind of other technologies you are working and you would like to shift onto DevOps, this course is suitable. And who are desperate to move on to DevOps culture? You heard about DevOps culture gives more advantage in your projects and you want to enhance your skills towards to the DevOps culture, then this course is for you. Who can't? People from non-IT background. I strongly don't recommend for the people who are coming from non-IT background. Next we'll see what is the technology stack do we cover in this course. Tools covered. We are going to cover Git as a version control system, Jenkins as a continuous integration tool, Maven as a build tool, SonarCube for code analysis, JFrog Artifactory for artifact repository, Docker for containerization, Ansible for deployment and configuration management, Kubernetes for container management, Prometheus for monitoring and also Grafana for alerting. These are the tools we are going to cover in this training. If you don't know any of these tools, don't worry, you are going to understand these tools going forward. Before starting your journey with me, I would like to highlight few points. All these DevOps tools set up and configured on AWS Cloud. So you should have some AWS knowledge. If you are already having AWS skill, well and good. If you don't know, don't worry, I am going to teach whatever is required for this course. Each participant should create their own AWS account. In this course, I am going to show you how can you create free tier AWS account. That is where we are going to set up our DevOps environment. If you are new to Unix or Linux, Please go through with Linux free course which is available in our platform. I am going to show you how can you enroll for this course in a while. These lectures are online training recorded videos. So we haven't created a dedicated videos for this training. At this moment we are providing online training recorded videos. But going forward we are going to update these videos with the dedicated videos. So that you can see more quality and efficient videos. This is not a certification course. We are covering multiple tools or technologies in this course. So it is not possible to concentrate on certification. And moreover, these are mostly hands-on sessions. Teaching programming skills are not part of this course. If you are expecting some programming skills or scripting languages from this course, maybe you are at wrong place. We don't cover Java, Python or cell scripting in this course. We more concentrated on how we can create a DevOps environment. Less theory and more hands-on. We have concentrated more on hands-on sessions rather than discussing as a theory one. Alright, that's all for this lecture. In next video, we are going to see introduction to DevOps. Thanks for watching. See you there. Hello friends, welcome back. In this lecture, we are going to see what is DevOps, then DevOps engineer roles and the tools what do we cover in this training. First, let's see what is DevOps. I am going to show you the Wikipedia definition. DevOps is a set of practices that combines software development and IT operations. So, it has a set of practices which combines software development nothing but dev and IT operations nothing but ops. So who is managing these two with the set of practices, those guys we call it as a DevOps engineers. The aim of DevOps is to shorten the system development life cycle and provide 
continuous delivery with high software quality. So you can understand continuous delivery in later point of time, but using this set of rules, we are going to deliver the high quality software. That is the simple definition of DevOps. Let's go and see what is the roles of DevOps engineers so that you can understand more clearly. So DevOps is quite simple and it is difficult. Why it is simple and why it is difficult you are going to understand by end of this lecture. First let's see what DevOps engineer does do. Developer give you a piece of code to whom they will give they will give it to the DevOps engineers and the DevOps engineers has to copy this code onto the server. So he has to copy this code onto the server. But while developer giving this code to DevOps engineer he asked us to follow some rules or he kept some conditions. Let's see those conditions or rules. If we see first condition, I will give code every day or couple of times in a day. Okay, if developer is giving code only once, it could be easy for us to deploy on a server because only once I can copy this one onto the server. But if he is giving multiple times in a day or every day, somehow I need to manage this code and also I should have proper tracking when he has given that code to me and also when I have deployed that onto server. For that we may need additional tools. Next condition is compile and deploy it on test and prod servers. So before taking or copying this code onto the server we need to compile it. So we need to deploy it on test servers. So it is not only one server there are different environments test environment and prod environment. So he is asking us to do a compilation and also deploy it on a test environment first to test it then onto production servers. So it means we need to compile this code every time every day and also we need to deploy this code every time and every day on test environments as well as on production environments. So if it is once again it could be easy but if it is multiple times maybe I need to think about some automation or using some tools. Next prod servers are used by client so it should be up and running all the time. This is one of the biggest problem. So if I am deploying this code that code may or may not work on production systems. So if it is not working it is difficult for our clients. I should take care that only working code I should deploy over here because clients are using and uh, it should be up and running all the time. To achieve these three conditions we need to do some activities or some automation before copying developer code onto the server. Let's understand with the diagram. If you see here developer has a code on his system. Now I want to copy this one onto the server. But he said he is going to give this code every time. So I need to maintain his code appropriately. To maintain this code appropriately either we can do some automation or else we can use a tool. So there is a tool called source code management tool which helps us to manage our code appropriately. So we should use a source code management tool. We are going to see what are the products of source code management in later sessions. But we should have a source code management which can manage our source code. Next we are having this code but we need to compile right this code every time we need to compile because code cannot be directly understood by your server. Your server can understand only system understandable language to convert to this source code into a system understandable language we need to compile it. So we need compilation tool to compile our code. Once it is compiled we need to do testing also right. So to manage this compilation and testing appropriately we need a integration tool. So we should have a integration tool. So if it is working fine I want to deploy it on a server. If I am deploying only once that would be fine but if I am deploying multiple times I need some automation tool. That is where deployment tools comes into the picture. So we need a deployment tool. So I'm just giving a what tools do we need but these tools have the products. Deployment tool have multiple products. Integration tools might have multiple products. We need to choose at least one product in these categories. Okay. So once it is deployed on a server in case servers are not working or not functioning properly to manage these servers we need IT infrastructure. So 
IT infrastructure nothing but multiple servers in case server is not running with after deployment we need a new server or some additional resources we need all this come under to infrastructure okay next our code is deployed on a server if it is up and running we need to monitor our applications or our servers why because whether it is working fine or not for that we need monitoring tools so we should use monitoring tools to manage these servers properly so that we can make sure that these servers are up and running all the time if you see these are the minimum different tools we should use to deploy developer code onto your server appropriately okay now we'll see how the complete software development life cycle works then you can understand where exactly we are going to use this here you can see different stages of software development life cycle let me explain how does it work usually client come up with a requirement nothing but a project that project is analyzed and prepare a documentation by the project management team these guys prepare a documentation that what exactly client is looking and what could be the final application this application goes to the development team so development team understand those requirements and start building the application to fulfill the client requirement while they are developing the code will be pushed into the source code repository source code repository nothing but where they keep their code from the source code repository it will go to the compile stage because source code cannot be deployed directly onto the server that's the reason first it will go to the compilation once it is compiled then it undergo with a unit test unit test nothing but whether this code is functioning properly or not that can be done at the unit test level then static analysis static analysis nothing but whether we are following the code standards or not in case some vulnerabilities or security alerts are there it can be analyzed in the static analysis once it is fine then it goes to the packaging from packaging it goes to the environment provisioning nothing but to deploy this package we need servers right those servers are containers or vms here we are going to provision those systems then system of records nothing but if this application may require some inputs from the other applications those are virtualized but we can concentrate here very less why because it will come in the initial stage of your software development life cycle then acceptance test nothing but whether product is working fine or not then deployable software is created deployable software means it can be given to the client or anyone we can deploy it and we can test the application so here we do unit testing here we are going to do the functional testing unit testing nothing but we do on the source code functional testing we do on the deployable software so here we do load testing nothing but what are the resources requirement to run this application how much cpu ram is required then performance testing how it is performing after running couple of hours is it consuming more resources is there unnecessary resources is it holding this kind of things done at the testing phase ready to release software once it is undergone with these requirements if everything looks fine it is ready to release the software then production environment it will go to the production environment means production servers with the appropriate approval from the clients once it is running on production and everything is fine client confirms that this product is working as expected but if he need additional features again it will go here and this cycle will be continue until this product reaches to the customer expectation but if you see in the real world most of the products are continue to enhance because they have to release new features quite frequently to attract the customers so this entire flow would be continue to work as long as we are releasing new features okay now let's see a little bit of animation how does it work i am going to quickly explain with animation first requirements goes to the software development team and they build the code and push it into the source code repository once it is there in the source code repository it will go to the compilation stage here code get compiled and then unit test runs on the code and unit test reports are sent to the project management team then static code analysis and it will go under to packaging from packaging it goes to the environment provisioning here required infrastructure has been provisioned then it go under to system of records and service virtualization 
then acceptance test once it pass acceptance test it goes to the deployable software it becomes a deployable software then load testing then performance testing once it is done it will go under as a ready to release software so once ready to release software it will go to the customer sign off if customer agrees it will go and deploy into the production this is how the flow will happen here if you see the tools involved at each stage in the development and configuration stage we have a visual studio and eclipse which are used by developers but actual devops engineer work starts from here so source code repository has to managed by devops engineers here we can use bitbucket git or gitlabs here we have a jenkins that is continuous integration tool on jenkins we have compilation tool called maven for java if it is a net we are going to use ms build and unit testing we have selenium proctator junit and static code analysis we have sonar cube packaging we have nexus and artifactory and environment provisioning chef ansible openstack kubernetes vagrant puppet docker all these are environment provisioning tools then service virtualization ca and lisa acceptance test again selenium proctator then identity and access management these two tools application performance monitoring these tools performance load testing jmeter ready to release software selenium these all are come under to testing phase so we don't deal testing phase much in the devops flow it will be tested on the deployable software so here whatever happens this we call it as a functional testing testing team involves in the functional testing then production environment here aws kubernetes docker vmware so these all are the tools we can use and service management and monitoring where we can monitor here we have log slash prometheus splunk these all are tools which can be useful at the service management and monitoring so if you see i kept only few tools which are relevant under particular section apart from this there are lot of tools are available but we need to learn one tool at each category now i am going to show you which tools we are going to learn under each category before looking at the tools first let's see what are the steps in the devops life cycle in devops there is continuous development continuous integration continuous deployment continuous testing and continuous monitoring these are the five steps which are involved in the devops life cycle now we'll see what tools do we cover in this life cycle first one continuous development developers use various tools to develop their code developed code get pushed onto source code management so developers develop their code then they pushed it onto source code management to develop their code they may use ide ide nothing but where they write their code there are lot of ides are available among them visual studio and eclipse are most used one most of the cases devops engineers doesn't write application code because writing application code is not devops engineer role devops engineers are responsible to maintain code using source code management tool so we are not writing code we are maintaining the code so to maintain code we need to use source code management tools i have shown you that right we need to use source code management tools to maintain their code so under continuous development we don't develop the code but source code management comes under to devops engineer role this we are going to handle if we see the source code management tools which are there in the market these are the source code management tools git bitbucket subversion perforce gitlab and few other are there these are some of the popular source code management tools among these we are going to use git as our source code management tool with that if we see under continuous development we only handle source code management that is git we need to learn under continuous development next continuous integration in continuous integration we have multiple tools again we have jenkins bamboo circle ci team city and few other among this we are going to use jenkins as our continuous integration tool so if we see in continuous integration we use jenkins but it is a continuous integration tool here we are going to integrate multiple tools if we see what and all tools we are going to integrate with the continuous integration 
that is unit testing tools like j unit n unit these all are plugins you can understand plugins later point of time next code build maven ant gradle code analysis vera code sonar cube code artifacts artifacts nothing but once code is compiled some output comes that output we call it as a artifacts to store those artifacts we use code artifacts those are nexus and artifactory we don't store artifacts on source code management tool nothing but git or bitbucket on this we don't store we need to use artifact repositories for those you are going to understand more details about this in the later sessions so if we see for code analysis we are going to use sonar cube code build maven and artifact repository jfrog artifactory these tools we are covering in this course so under continuous integration apart from jenkins we are going to see unit test as j unit build tool maven code analysis sonar cube build artifacts we are going to use jfrog artifactory as well as docker hub because we are dealing with containers for that we need docker hub then continuous deployment under continuous deployment we have various tools we can use ansible urban code deploy jenkins travel ci octopus deploy these are some of the tools among this we are going to use ansible so continuous deployment we are going to use ansible under continuous deployment infrastructure also comes why because we need infrastructure to deploy our applications so infrastructure can be docker kubernetes or else traditional data center amazon web services azure or gcp like that we have various tools among these we are going to use amazon web services and kubernetes but teaching amazon web services is not scope of this training but we are going to deploy on this one later point of time we are going to use docker and kubernetes so here infrastructure we are going to use aws docker and kubernetes under continuous deployment apart from infrastructure we also need to maintain configuration management tools configuration management tools helps us to provision these resources or maintain this appropriately so if we see the configuration management tools ansible chef salt stack puppet these are the tools which are there under configuration management tools among this again we are using ansible then continuous testing here most of the cases testing is done by separate team so even though it is part of devops flow we don't maintain the testing because again it is huge so if we see the continuous testing selenium apache jmeter tricians so these are the continuous testing tools so we are not dealing with this continuous testing tools so we can skip it then continuous monitoring under monitoring we have nagios jabex prometheus among these we are going to choose prometheus so under continuous monitoring we are going to deal with the prometheus so these are the tools we are going to cover in our training so source code management git continuous integration jenkins unit test j unit build tool maven code analysis sonar cube build artifacts jfrog artifactory and docker hub continuous deployment ansible infrastructure we are going to deal with aws docker and kubernetes but in aws we just deal with ec2 service apart from that nothing configuration management ansible then continuous testing we don't deal with anything then continuous monitoring prometheus these are the list of the tools don't get scared by looking at these tools these all are quite easy to learn i am going to show you with examples so you can able to correlate with the real time work so that you don't feel like you are learning a new tool it will be like a process at last if we see our first diagram this is what we have seen right development system and server next it involves these steps we need a source code management tool compilation tool integration tool deployment tool infrastructure and monitoring here source code management git compilation tool maven integration tool jenkins deployment tool ansible infrastructure aws docker and kubernetes i just kept kubernetes then monitoring prometheus this is how we can choose tools and i have chosen these tools depends upon the market share because most of the industries are using these tools that's why i have chosen so it will add benefit for you if you learn these tools all right that's all for this lecture
from next video we are going to see our source code management tool called git thanks for watching and see you there hello friends in this lecture we are going to see what and all resources do we require to start with this training here i have listed out what and all resources do we need initially we need to open these accounts that is github account aws account and a docker hub account if you have already these accounts well and good if you don't have don't worry i am going to show you how you can open these accounts whenever it is necessary then softwares to install we need mobile xterm or putty if it is windows in case you are using mac os then no need to install this one because on mac os we have terminal we can use terminal to connect to our servers then git bash next any text editor in my case i am using sublime text editor in your case you can use any text editor which you are comfortable that's all for this lecture in next section we are going to see about git thanks for watching and see you there hello friends welcome back in this lecture we are going to see how to create an aws free tier account as i discussed in our previous lecture we need an aws account to set up our linux server creating an aws account is also helpful for you if you are using aws or devops services in the later point of time now let's go and see how can we set up an aws account open google page and type for aws free tier account The first page itself shows us that aws.amazon.com free. Click on this. Here you have a option to create a free account. Let's create it. Here provide email ID and password and the AWS account name. Continue to create. Next. You can choose whether it is a professional account or personal account. In my case, I am leaving it as a professional account. You can change it to the personal if you are creating for your own. I have provided my information over here. In your case, you should fill with your information. Then click here and create account and continue. Here you need to provide your credit or debit card information to proceed further. I have provided my card information and you can provide your PAN card details if necessary. Then click on verify and add. Now they are going to validate your card by deducting 2 rupees in Indian currency. If it is other country they are going to detect according to their local currency. I am providing my OTP and submit. It is verifying my payment information. If it is valid one, it takes us to the next page. Next thing is confirm your identity. Now we need to provide our phone number so that they are going to validate with either text message or voice call. I am in India, so country and region name is plus 91. I have given my mobile number and send SMS rather than voice call. Now I am going to receive a 4 digits verification code. I need to provide here to validate. Verify code. Ok, my identity has been verified successfully. And continue. Now we came to the select a support plan page. Let me increase font size. Here AWS offers 3 type of plans. That is basic plan, development plan and business plan. If you go with the development plan, you can see the what and all options you are going to get. They will give technical support. And if you go for business plan, even here also you are going to get technical support. But the response could be quicker than the development plan. In basic plan, they don't give any technical support. But for us, it is learning purpose. Let's create a free tier account. We have created our AWS account. If you would like to share your role and interest with AWS, then you can provide this information. Otherwise, you can go here and choose AWS Management Console. Now, we came to AWS sign-in page. We are going to use root user. We should provide our email ID to log into account. If you don't have account, still you can create it from here. 
by choosing option called create a new AWS account. I have provided my email ID. Next, I am providing my password and sign in. Now I have logged into my AWS console and if you want to see all services you can click over here but among these many services we are going to use only one service for our Linux practice that is EC2 service under compute. So let's click over here. If you see here our account is not yet activated fully because we might be missing one of these steps. I know that I haven't validated my email ID yet. They are going to send an verification email ID to our account within 24 hours. But usually they don't take much time. I might have received an email from AWS by this time. Let me log into my Gmail account and check it out. If you see here, I have received two emails from AWS. One is welcome to AWS Web Services. Another one is your account is ready. Let me see what is here. And they are asking me to click here to access my account. Let's click here. Okay, this is billing dashboard. And let's go to EC2 service. Alright, now I could able to access my EC2 services. So it means that my account is activated now. Now we can create EC2 instances from here. How to provision a Linux EC2 instance we are going to see in the next lecture. Thanks for watching. See you there. Are you in the confusion where to start your DevOps journey? Then think in this way. Where exactly the DevOps process starts? Of course, it starts from planning, but the technical activity starts from the writing code. Let's assume that you are not dealing with the application code. Then next immediate step is maintaining the source code. But maintaining the source code as versions and also working with group of people became unavoidable in most of the projects. So we need some tools which helps us to maintain source code, versions and working with group of people. That is where git and github comes into the picture. So learning git and github would be the right point to start your devops journey. But there are lot of things to know in git and github which creates confusion if people would like to understand in the devops engineer perspective. If you are also in the same position then this course is for you. Welcome to my new course git and github for devops engineers. This course talks about Git and GitHub in the DevOps engineer perspective, how it works in the DevOps process from creating a repository to releasing code onto production. I spent most of the time to perform hands-on labs rather than theory unlike my other courses. In the last section of this course, I have discussed about a real-time project to explain how exactly we can start working with a DevOps project. Hope this gives enough confidence to start working with your real-time projects. With that, I believe I have given enough information regarding this course. What do you learn inside this course? Hopefully, I will see you in the course. Thank you. Hello folks. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about course content overview so that you will get a clear idea what you are going to learn in this course. First section is getting ready. If you have any query, there are multiple mediums you can reach out to me. I have listed out all those over here. Next, what is version control system? How to set up Git on Windows and Linux systems and working with Git Bash. This is about first module. In second module, working with Git. Here we are going to see how to create a repository and working with different stages of Git, comparing changes in the local repository. Next module is working with GitHub. Here we are going to see why do we need GitHub and how to create a GitHub account. And creating a repository from GitHub account, cloning and pushing changes onto remote repository. Next working with other developer. Here we are going to see how to work with other developers code. If we are unable to push changes onto remote repository, how can we resolve it? 
enabling SSH based authentication between Git and GitHub. How a developer write code and push it onto remote repository. This we see in this module. Next module is Git commits. What is Git commits? How does it work? Knowing about specific commit changes. Committing changes on GitHub GUI. These we talk in this module. Next Git branches. Why do we need branches? Branching strategies and how branches works in the DevOps workflow. Committing changes on branches. Resolving merge conflicts. These we talk in the Git branches module. Next module is working with team. Here we talk about Git forks. What is pull request and how does it work? Working with private repositories. Protected branches and contributors. This we talk in working with team. Next reverting changes. If we have done any changes to our working directory, how can we revert? Similar way, how can we revert from staging area and the local repository and git ignore file. At last, we are working with a project. Here we talk about project overview, how to set up repositories for a new project, allowing developers to check in code, enabling DevOps workflow on dev branch, merging changes from dev branch to UVAT branch, releasing code onto production. This project will give you a complete overview of how Git works in the real-time projects. As a nurture, if we see course objectives, we are talking about Git and GitHub, DevOps engineer activities on Git and GitHub, how DevOps engineers works with the developers, how Git and GitHub works in the DevOps, a real-time project. That's all for this lecture. See you in the next lecture. Hello guys, before starting with our course, few housekeeping rules I would like to discuss. First thing, prerequisites. During this course, I am executing few Linux commands. If you know Linux basics, well and good. If you don't have, don't worry, still you can follow along with me. If you are really curious about to learn Linux basics which are required for DevOps, maybe you can check out my other course, Linux for Cloud and DevOps Engineers. Next, AWS EC2 service. In this course, I am going to use multiple EC2 instances during our project. For that, you should have AWS EC2 service knowledge. If you don't have, still don't worry, you can easily follow with me. Next, resources. I am expecting that you should have an AWS account. If you don't have an AWS account, at the end of this course, I have added a separate lecture how to create an AWS account. You can watch that video to create an AWS account. Next, GitHub account. I am going to create a GitHub account during this course, so you need not to create now itself. And the resources or documents which I use during this course are updated in this GitHub URL. Hello guys, a quick introduction about myself. My name is J.R. Shankar. I have 10 plus years of IT experience. I am working as a DevOps consultant in one of the leading IT company. Apart from DevOps, I have also experience on AWS and Linux. I am one of the content creator for our Velaxi Technologies YouTube channel. During this course, if you have any query, you can reach out to me through these mediums. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Hello friends. In this lecture, we are going to see what is version control system and why do we need to use version control system. In our course, we are going to use Git as our version control system. Let's go and see why version control system came into the picture. First, let's understand the problem. You want to write some code with group of people. Usually, in real-time cases, group of people working on same project. Whenever group of people are working on same project, they need to collaborate with each other to write the code. I am writing one module, another guy is writing another module. We want to combine this code or we want to understand what other person is developing and how I need to develop. This is the biggest problem and the exchange was happening manually. Nothing but copying from one developer laptop to another developer laptop. And also it is very tricky to manage. Why? Because I have given my code to my peer today. Again tomorrow if I am doing some changes to my code, again I need to share with him. Like this, if we have more number of people working on same project, it is more complex. To avoid this problem, industry come up with a solution called version control system.
Now let's see what is version control system. A system that keeps record of your changes. While you are writing your code, if you are doing any changes to your code, it is tracking or it records those changes. Let's take an example that I have written some code yesterday and today I have done some changes. Like this every day I am modifying my code. But after one week if I want to recollect what changes I have done today, it is quite difficult. Why? Because whatever changes I have done today causing for some issue. So I want to revert changes what I have done today. In this case, version control system works effectively. It remembers each and every change what we have done our code and when we have done. Next, allows for collaborative development. As I said, multiple people are working on same project. Code sharing is quite a difficult problem. But if we use version control system, it is very easy to share our code and work collaboratively. Next, allows you to know who made what changes and when. As I said, whenever we do any changes, it tracks those changes and remembers who has done those changes. Next, allows you to revert any changes. If we done some changes today, it is not working and I want to go back to yesterday's code, it is quite easy for me because it tracks what changes I have done today and allows me to revert to previous code. So these are the major advantages of using version control system. Now let's see what kind of version control systems are available. One is local, then centralized and distributed. First let's understand what is local. Local version control system works on your local computer. It means that in my laptop I can install this version control system and I can track my changes. Assume that I am updating my file multiple times then each time the file will be recorded what changes you have done and when you have done those changes and it always point to the latest update what you have done if you want to go back to the previous version you can go easily but local version control system works if you are a single developer or you don't want to collaboratively work with your team but this doesn't solve the problem if we want to write the code with a group of people next let's see centralized version control system in centralized version control system you have a centralized repository or main server repository and collaborators and developers communicates with the main server repository and write the code and you don't have any local copy of your code or project in the centralized repository in case if centralized repository is not accessible developers or collaborators could not able to write the code why because this should be always accessible so centralized repository solves the problem to work with group of people but in case centralized repository is not accessible it is a problem for the collaborators or developers. Next let's see distributed version control system. Distributed version control system is the mostly or widely used version control system. Why because it has a main server repository as well as the local repository. Nothing but whatever code you are having same code is available in the developer system. You can sync central repository with the local repository and developers can continue write the code even though centralized repository is not accessible because same code or project is available in the local system. They can write the code and commit in the local repository and they push it into the centralized repository. But in this case pushing your changes directly to the centralized repository is not possible. You must push your changes into the local repository. From local repository it will go to the centralized repository. In this case even though centralized repository is not available or local repository is not available there is no problem because even other collaborators or developers also having the same code. You can push this code into the central repository from there again everybody can able to pull it. So pull nothing but taking the code into your local repository push nothing but pushing the code into the centralized repository. You are going to understand these terms little deeper in going forward sessions. Now let's see what and all version control systems are available in the market. Git is one of the version control system. Bitbucket, Subversion, Mercurial, Perforce, GitLab. Like this we have multiple version control systems are there. Among these we are using Git as our version control system. That's all for this lecture and see you in the next video.
Hello friends, welcome back. In previous lecture, we have seen what is version control system and the types of version control systems. As I said, we are going to use Git as our version control system. In this lecture, we are going to see how do we set up our Git environment. To demonstrate this Git course, I am going to use two users, that is developer1 who is working on Windows system. Developer1 is going to work on my laptop. I am going to install Git over here. Next, developer2, we are going to create a Amazon Linux EC2 instance and we will use it as a developer2. So that you can understand how we can work with Git either on Windows or Linux system. So first let's start with installing Git on developer1 system, nothing but on my laptop. This is my laptop where I should install Git. Now let's go to browser and search for Git to install on Windows. This is my browser, search for Git on Windows. And you can see git-scm.com. This is the first link itself. Just click on this one. And here you can see downloading Git. We can install Git for Windows. This is for 32 bit and this is for 64 bit. Our system is 64 bit, so I am going to install 64 bit. It takes a while to get it downloaded. Let's wait. Okay, we have downloaded Git software. Let's install this one on our Windows. Just click on that one so that it is a exe. Anyway, we can install it. To install, we need a admin privileges. I have admin privileges. So let's go. And uh, I'm going with the default settings itself. Nothing to change. And install. Okay, installation is completed. We don't require view release nodes. We will just launch the git bash. So if we launch it, it is going to open the git bash. Okay, this is my git bash. And if I increase the font size, you can see I'm a Velaxi user. This we called it as a git bash prompt. We can execute our Linux commands on Windows by using this one. Even I can do ls cd cat. So this is how we can install git on Windows system. In next video, we are going to see how to set up git on Linux system. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Hello guys, welcome back. In previous lecture, we have seen how to install git on a Windows system. In this lecture, we are going to see how to install Git on a Linux system. But so far, we have a laptop which runs as a Windows system. We don't have any Linux system, right? This is where we can take advantage of cloud services. In my case, I am using AWS Cloud to create a Linux system or Linux server. But in AWS, server we call it as a EC2 instance. So, we are going to create a Linux EC2 instance. Now, we should have an AWS account to create a Linux EC2 instance. I have already an AWS account. I am going to use my AWS account. If you don't have an AWS account, don't worry. I have created separate lecture for how to create an AWS account and how can you launch a Linux EC2 instance on AWS Cloud. Those videos are available at the end of this Git course. Please go and watch there. If you are comfortable create a EC2 instance on AWS Cloud, you can continue with this lecture. But anyway, quickly I am going to launch an EC2 instance even in this lecture as well. So you can follow along with me. Now let's jump into our AWS management console to create a Linux EC2 instance. This is my AWS management console landing page. Even once you have created your AWS account, you will get landed over here. And here you have regions, regions nothing but just think like a cloud data centers. AWS provides data centers in different geographical regions. By default, you may landed on North Virginia, but usually I choose Mumbai region, which is near to me and I can create EC2 instance under Mumbai region. Now, to create an EC2 instance, go to all services. Under all services, there is an option called EC2. Click over here to go to compute services. Now you can see here, this is my EC2 dashboard. I have already one running instance and uh, these are the resources, nothing but which are used by your EC2 instance. 
but i am interested to create a linux ec2 instance for that we have a option called launch instance so launch instance here you can see launch instance option just choose this option now you need to choose what kind of operating system do you want to install as i said we need to install linux right but even in linux also we have multiple flavors that is amazon linux this is also amazon linux red hat enterprise linux susi linux ubuntu okay like this different flavors are there but in our case we are going with amazon linux it is something like sent wires only so let's choose this one next t2 micro we can create one ec2 instance for free of cost on aws cloud next go to configure instance details nothing to change in this page then add storage even here also nothing to change then add tags here i am going to name it as a developer why because we are using this as a developer 2 system and windows as a developer 1 system next configure security group so security group nothing but firewalls which allows traffic to connect to your instance in this case i'm just going to create a new security group i will name it as a git sg git sg okay sorry sg and by default we are opening port number 22 port number 22 is the default port to connect to our linux systems anyway i have already explained all this stuff in our if you are new to linux i would recommend you to go through with that course next review and launch now let's launch it while launching we need to choose a key pair key pair nothing but a password to connect to our linux system so far i have a key pair but i am going to create a new key pair for this server that is git key i am going to name it and while creating your key pair you should download it otherwise you cannot log into your system so i have downloaded my git key and little bit scroll launch instance sorry now our system is getting ready view instances and i will just open and show you where my key is located and usually i keep my keys in one folders so that i don't miss my keys anyway let's go and see okay our system is up and running you can see here it is in running state nothing but we can connect to this system and to avoid viewing all instances i am going to just use the tag like name and uh, name of our server is developer2 system so that we can able to see only developer2 system let me scroll it up so we need to use public ip to connect to our linux system and we also have a private ip but we don't use private ip private ip is for internal communication anyway i have explained this in our linux course there you will get all this information now let's connect to this system to connect to this system we need a software called mobile xterm so you can just go okay search for google.com and if you search for mobile xterm you will get a mobile xterm link and it takes into website and if you scroll down you can see here get mobile xterm from here you can download free version for our case I have already downloaded and installed mobile xterm on my laptop so just open mobile xterm to connect to linux system this is mobile xterm which i have installed and opened on my system go to session and ssh give the ip address over here and advanced settings here we should provide the our key pair without this key pair we cannot able to log in then ec2 minus user okay this is the default user to connect to a linux system next just to okay to connect that's it i have logged into my linux system and let me increase the font size and go to as a become root so sudo su minus is a command to log into root because you have logged in as a user as you know if you want to install any softwares you must be a administrative user 
usually in windows we call it as a administrative user on linux we called him as a root user root user have the privileges to install any packages on our linux system now if i search for git over here you can see it is saying that command not found nothing but i don't know what you are talking now let's install git to install git yum install git and just enter now i would like to install this git so git installation is completed now if i execute git and you can see this time it is saying that syntax error not not saying that command not found okay all right this is how we can install git on linux system and even you can check out for git version git minus minus version is a command to check the git version that's all for this lecture see you in the next video hello friends welcome back in previous lectures we have installed git on windows and linux system now we should introduce ourselves to git why because we have two developers right we don't know which developer is working from which system whenever i push my changes we need to track it who has done that changes right that is the reason you should introduce yourself to git we should execute these commands to track our username and email id the command we should execute is git config minus minus global user dot name followed by the username in my case i am going to give as a shankar and a similar way user dot email we should provide the email id and please remember about this email id we are going to discuss about this one in the later point of time in my case i am going to use arsr319 at gmail dot com and this is one time activity nothing but you don't do it frequently once you have installed git you should do this activity so that that system is registered on your name and you can change it whenever you need once you have installed git it is always best practice that providing the username and email id you can display the username and email id with the same command without the extra parameter okay first we'll display the username and email id what is there in our linux system then we'll do the same thing on our windows so this is my linux system let me clear the screen and git config minus minus global user dot name i'm just checking what is the username is there so far there is no username similar way user dot email if i check there is no email attached to this one so let's set up username and email id for this one so username i'm just giving developer2 because as i said i'm going to use my linux system as a developer2 system and git config okay i have already typed above developer2 at gmail.com just i'm giving developer2 at uh, gmail.com that's it i have set up username and email id on my linux system now let's execute again user.email id you can see and similar way user name and you can see developer2 same thing i need to do on my windows system this is windows system right git bash and if you have any confusion what you can do go to start button search for git bash okay so you can see here this is git bash desktop app just right click on this one and open file location so this is where the git bash is installed i'm going to just create a shortcut on my desktop so send to desktop so now if i go to my desktop you can see here git bash is there you just double click to open this git bash that's it let me increase the font size and now if i execute the same commands over here git config minus minus global user dot name you can see i have already configured my name as a shankar and also email okay arsr319 at gmail.com i am not going to change these details as a uh, developer one because just think that shankar as a developer one and developer two is developer two only okay that's how we can introduce ourselves to git 
and also you can see this information with one more command that is git config minus minus list it is going to display all the configurations which are done on the git so if i display this one let me scroll it down so let me scroll little bit down so here you can see here this is from the starting of your command and here you can see user.email and name as well apart from this few other values are there you can understand these at the later point of time that's all for this lecture and see you in the next lecture hello friends welcome back in this lecture we are going to see how we can create a git repository before that one i would like to stress on few points first point is all git commands starts with git so whenever we execute any git related commands the command starts with git even if you see in our previous lecture while configuring our username and email id our command starts with git that is git config minus minus global right next you should introduce yourself to git this is we have already done if you don't introduce yourself to git while pushing your changes you may face some trouble or else it won't track your real name it may give some random name if you have some random names in your commits then we don't know who has done those changes next git works with repositories so whenever we want to work with git we should create repositories without repositories we cannot track our changes next most of the git commands should run inside a git repository so few commands may work without git repositories like git config commands but most of the commands you should run inside git repository so these are the points you should remember while working with the git now we are going to create a repository there are two ways to create a repository but we'll create a repository on our laptop first then we'll see how it works in the later point of time now let's go and create a repository okay this is my pc i'm going inside to my c drive under c drive i'm going to a folder called projects okay so here i'm going to create a new directory so let's go and create a new folder okay this folder name i'm giving it as a demo repo okay and go inside to demo repo so this is my demo repository and if i see the path c drive projects and demo repo is there now i would like to go here and initialize this as a repository so to do that one i can open my git bash and come over here or else i can directly open my git bash over here i will show you the two ways so first thing is if i open here and if i go to git bash here once you installed git in your windows you can see this kind of option so just click on this one now you can see your Velaxi user pwd nothing but present working directory you are under slash projects demo repo okay same location you are right other way is you have your git bash on your desktop right so this is our git bash if i double click to open and uh, if i go to c c drive okay now you can see you are under c drive from c drive then projects right then git repo sorry demo repo so this is how you can go and if you observe these all are linux commands if you install git bash you can execute your linux commands on windows as well so most of the linux commands works on your windows once you installed git bash but usually what we do is we go to the our respective directory and we'll open git bash over here like this okay so now i have opened my git bash over here now i would like to initialize this git repo directory as a repository for that we need to execute a command called git init dot dot nothing but current location treat it as a git repository now what is my current location pwd I am under demo repo and git init dot. Once I give enter, you can see the changes over here. My repository has been initialized and you can see there is one dot git directory has been created. So whenever you see dot git directory in your folder, it means that that is a git repository. 
now this demo repo became a git repository if i go outside and if i click on any other one okay like uh, workspace if i check this is not git repository why because there is no dot git so whenever you have dot git it means that it is a git repository right so demo repo let it be so once you initialized your repository you are ready to create files and those files are getting tracked so whatever files or directories you create inside demo repo only those files and directories are tracked from now now to test this one i am going to create a file now you can create a file from windows or else from here if you are creating from your git bash you should familiar with the linux commands if you are not that much comfortable you can create files from here okay now if i do ls over here you can see it is not showing the dot git directory why because in linux if you want to see hidden files you should execute ls minus a a stands for it is going to display the hidden files so whatever files are created with the dot in linux it treat it as a hidden files and this dot dot and dot is a like working directory and parent directory now i am going to create a file i will create from our git bash as well as from our windows first let me create with git bash for that i can use the cat greater than command and file one i am giving so file one and uh, this is line one this is line two okay is missing let it be and save it that's it now you can see a file has been created over here that is file one and if i do ls you can see file one and this hidden file it won't display until we give minus a command but whenever we need we can use that one now i'm going to create a file from here i'm going to create a new text document text document i'm going to name it as a file 2 okay so file 2 i have created and in file 2 i haven't created any content so if i do ls you can see file 1 and file 2 file 2 have the extension of txt because that is the text document and if i open the file 2 there is no content at all right so it is empty if i open file 1 you can see some content is there i can keep some content over here open this is file 2 and save this file and close it off and if i go here cat file 2.txt you can see the content this is file 2 this is how you can add files to your repository either from git bash or else from your windows system right that's all for this lecture in next lecture we are going to see how we can track these changes thanks for watching see you there hello friends welcome back in previous lecture we have seen how to create a repository on our local system and how can we add files to that one in this lecture we are going to see what are the different stages are there in our git repository there is some certain procedure we should follow to add our content to git repository just creating a file inside your repository doesn't add your file to repository whenever we create any files inside your repository it start tracking those files that's it if you want to add those files to a repository we need to execute these commands so first we'll understand the different stages first thing is working area working area nothing but the folder which you have converted as a git repository we have executed git init dot right in our previous lecture let me show you that repository so this is the repository which we have created in our previous lecture and these are the files which we created and let me open git bash over here let me increase the font size and i will keep open both the screens so that it is easy for us to understand and if i see pwd i am under slash projects demo repo and these are the files i could see so far we have converted this directory as a repository or else this folder as a repository and we created these two files so this we call it as a working area whenever you create any files under working area it start tracking these files tracking the files doesn't mean that these files are added to repository to add these files to repository we should execute some certain commands 
that is where I have mentioned. So if you see this one, we have files over here. Now we need to add those to index area. So index area or staging area both represents to the same. To add our files from working directory to staging area, we should execute command called git add. So git add is a command to add our files from working area to staging area. Once these files are available under staging area, we need to execute again git commit command to add these files to repository. So local repository or repository, we can add files to our local repository by using git commit command. Now let's jump back to our repository and we'll add our existing files to staging area then repository. So to add our files to the staging area, we'll execute command called git add over there. So this is our git repository and we want to add these files to our staging area. For that we should execute git add right and you should execute commands only on your git bash. You cannot execute on your windows or GUI. If you want to execute those on GUI, there is one more option that is git GUI. Okay. So git GUI is a same thing. Instead of running your commands, you can do it from your GUI as well like creating repository cloning all this stuff you can do but most of the people they don't use git gui we should use git bash only so i am not going to talk about git gui in this training we are just quitting this and we'll execute over here we'll execute all our commands over here okay so now git add and file name so i can give git add file one and if I want to add two files, git add file1 and file2.txt. It got as a txt extension. Why? Because we have created it from our GUI. But in Linux, whenever we create any file, it doesn't come up with any extension. Okay. So this is the one command to add our files. Other commands are git add dot. Dot nothing but in the current directory, whatever files are there, add all those files to staging area. That is another command. Another one is git add minus minus all. Okay. This is one more command which which is going to add our all files to our repository. All are going to do the same activity. So we are going to use all these commands in going forward. But for now we will do with the file name. Okay. File 1 and file 2 dot txt. Okay. I am adding these two files. This is the command to add our files from working directory to staging area. So working directory nothing but whenever you initialize your repository by default it becomes to the working directory. If you go outside of your repository it is not working directory. It is a normal directory. That is the difference. But before executing this command I will just execute one more command that is git status. Git status is very useful command which tells you where is your files are located at this moment nothing but whether these files are at working area or else staging area or is it committed to your repository now let's execute this git status command before executing git add command and we'll see it is saying on branch master we are going to talk about this branch in later point of time but until some period of time you can see uh, only this message and no commits yet what does it means that there is no commits done in our repository yet means it is a fresh repository i haven't added any files to our repository we just created a repository under repository we created two files those are still under working directory it is not yet added to our repository and untracked files so untracked files nothing but these files are at working area only if it is come under to tracked it means that staging area Please remember, whenever the files are there in the staging area, it represents as tracked files. If it is in untracked means those are in working directory. And those are represented in the red color. Red color means it represents that those files are still at working area, not yet added to staging area. Okay. So to add these files, you can use a command called git add file. Okay, this is one way to add. So same thing we are executing, right? Git add file1 and file2.txt. Same thing we are going to do to add these files to tracking. Nothing but staging area. And nothing added to commit but untracked files present. Which means that we haven't added any files to the staging area. If something is there in the staging area, 
then you can see over here nothing but those files are in the staging area so you will understand in better way going forward but so far what i am going to do is let me pull it little bit down i am going to add git add file one i am not going to execute on both the files we'll add only file one to our staging area means file2.txt still it is at untracked or in working directory itself now we can see git status again this time you can see okay no commits yet we haven't done any commits and changes to be committed which means that these files are in the staging area whenever these are in staging area it appears as a green color and whenever those are in working directory still it will show you in the red color so untracked files nothing but this is still in the working directory this is at staging area and if you want to commit your changes to repository you can do only on the files which are at staging area nothing but now file one is in the staging area i can commit this one but not file two if i want to add this one to my repository then first i need to send it to the staging area then only i can commit it okay now let's do it again git add dot or else i can do git add file to dot txt so it is going to add my file to staging area now if i check git status both the files are in staging area nothing there in the outside of staging area now i would like to commit these changes to my repository to commit these changes to my repository i should execute a command called git commit okay git commit followed by your commit message commit message nothing but what changes you have done and what is the commits you are doing why because multiple developers are working and each developer might be doing his own changes right so this commit message represents what changes he has done in this commit okay so before committing i am going to execute one more command that is git log okay so git log is a command which tells you that what and all commits you have done on your repository if you see there is no commits yet why because this is a fresh repository even though we added our files to our staging area we haven't committed our changes to the repository so git status will tell you that where exactly your files are there git log tells you that whether you have committed your changes or not okay now i am going to execute again git commit followed by the message i am going to tell that this is my first commit okay i am giving this is my first commit but whenever you are giving commit you need to use the minus m flag okay minus m flag represents to the commit id without minus m flag it doesn't take it up now let's execute and you can see the output of this one so master so and so this is my first commit and two files has been changed nothing but two files has been added and three instructions why because in one file two lines are there another file one line is there and plus nothing but we have added those files if you remove some files on the existing file then you can see minus over here and created mode nothing but current permissions on your file so 644 is the default permission is available on these two files this is how we can commit our changes to our repository now if i do git status you should not able to see any files under working directory or staging area why because whatever files we have or whatever files we have created those files are added to staging area and also committed to our repository and if i check git log now you can see one commit just to see this one git commit and it also giving a commit id yes i missed to explain about it this is the sha code or commit id we can call so commit id will have the lengthy one but first six characters would be fine to find out our commit because it is unique for each commit and there is a head represents to the master we are going to talk about this one in the later and author you just see this one we have set up my username and email id right so this is going to display over here nothing but who has done this commit and when he has done this commit and what is the commit id this is the information so like this we can commit our changes and we can track these changes so now by looking at this commit i can understand what commit he has done and what is his intention to made his commit and also who has done this commit and when he has done this commit 
and what is commit id all this information is displayed over here like this whenever we add any commits it is going to add in the git log that we can identify by using the git log command okay so far we have done only one commit okay so this is how we need to add those files now you may ask that is there any way to bypass this uh, procedure no we must add our files first to staging area and then we can add it to the repository sometimes we can directly add to the repository if those files are already updated but anyway we are going to see that one in the later point of time but it must go with the staging and repository now i am going to quickly show you the what and all commands we have executed it is kind of recap so we have executed a command called git add that adds files into the staging area then we have executed git commit that add changes to the local vcs nothing but in our laptop we have created a repository to that repository we have added right now git status shows current stage of repository means in which location your existing files are available that tells about the git status then git log shows commit history we have seen how many commits we have done on our repository by using git log so these are the commands we have used in this lecture that's all for this lecture see you in the next lecture hello folks welcome back in previous lecture we have seen git stages right in this lecture we are going to dig a little bit more inside to git stages for that one we are going to use this demonstration so far we have created two files and both the files are added to staging area by using git add command then we have pushed those changes to the our local repository so now file 1 and file 2 is already at our local repository now we are going to create two more files that is file 3 and file 4 but out of this only file 3 i am going to add to our staging area okay so which means that we have file 1 and file 2 in the local repository file 3 in the staging area and file 4 i am not going to add even for staging area so it will be in the working directory okay then we'll do some modifications on the file 2 file 3 and file 4 and we'll see the git status command which is recognized by the git status and uh, on which location nothing but whether it is identified in the working directory or staging area and local repository let's see how does it goes this is my repository which i have initiated that is demo repo i am going to take git bash over here and let me increase font size let me pull it down and increase little more and if i see git sorry pwd yes our current location and the ls we have file 1 and file 2 for better naming convention instead of using file2.txt i am going to use as a file 2 but later time we will modify because each modification will be tracked under git now as we discussed in our demonstration we are going to create two more files that is touch file 3 and file 4 okay these two files we are creating now if i check we have four files and git status if i check now you can see two files are there that is file 3 and file 4 why it is not showing file 2 sorry file 1 and file 2 why because these two files are already staged and updated in our local repository after updating in our local repository there is no modifications on these files that is the reason it won't show under untracked because i have already tracked and reported in my github repository all right so now to add these files to our staging area we should execute git add file name as i shown you we are going to add only file 3 to our staging area and file 4 i don't add to our staging area let it be in the working directory working directory nothing but it will be in red color under untracked files now let's add git add file 3 and if i do git status now you can see under changes to be committed nothing but this is staging area in staging area we have a new file called file 3 i have added file 3 to our staging area file 4 is still untracked nothing but i haven't added this one from our working directory to staging area okay anyway these two files are empty files nothing but we haven't added any content to these files let me open file 3 and cat file 4 
okay both are empty and equivalent changes you can see over here also that is the reason i keep it open now i am going to add some content to file 3 and file 4 so vi file 3 i am going to just name it as a this is file 3 and save this file similar way file 4 this is sorry this is file 4 and save this that's it we have updated both the files but out of these two files file 3 is only in the staging area and one more thing i am going to update file 2 as well so file 2 also empty i think this is sorry not file 2 right it is file 2.txt otherwise it is going to create a new file with the file 2 so file 2.txt i am modifying so this is file 2 and uh, this is a text sorry text file okay that's it so we have modified three files file 1 we haven't modified file 2 we have modified but file 2 is already in the our local repository file 3 also modified but file 3 is only available in our staging area let me show you in the image so this is what we have done so far we have file 1 and file 2 are there both are available in the local repository and file 3 is only in the staging area it is not yet added to local repository to add to local repository we should use git commit right but on file 3 we haven't used it and file 4 is in working directory only nothing but it, it is not yet in the staging area now let's go back and check for git status now you can see here there are changes to be committed nothing but this is staging area so in staging area file 3 is there at the same time file 3 is also available in the working directory see here in the working directory it has been modified nothing but you have added file 3 in the staging area after that again you have done some changes to your file 3 similar way file 2 file 2 we have added to our repository it is not there in the staging area anymore okay it is in our repository after adding file 2 into repository again we have modified that is the reason it is showing in the working directory only nothing but these three commits we have to do in our staging area now how can i add these changes to our staging area all together for that we can use git add dot okay git add dot is a command where we can add all our files to staging area at a go so let's execute and if i check git status now you can see all changes has been tracked now but it is treating that new file file 3 is new file and file 4 also new file file 2 we have modified it okay so this is how we can push our changes to the staging area now i would like to commit these changes to our local repository for that again git commit minus m adding file 3 and file 4 as well okay and close this and enter that's it we have pushed our changes to repository and three files has been changed or updated and four instructions nothing but four lines one deletion one deletion nothing but in file 2 we have given enter so it treated it as a deleted and updated one more line that is how it treat okay so this is how we can commit our changes to our local repository now if i check for commits git log right git log is a command to list out all the commits which we have done in our local repository and this time it should be two commits so this is the first commit and this is second commit all right so this is how we can commit our changes to local repository that's all for this video see you in the next video hello friends welcome back in this video we are going to see how can we compare our changes from working directory to staging area at the same time staging area to local repo or else working directory to local repo so how can we do those comparisons first let's start with the comparison between the working directory to staging area nothing but we have four files in our working directory we'll modify and we'll send couple of files into staging area then again we'll modify and see the comparisons anyway i'm going to show you with an example how we can do that one so this is my git repository so far we have four files over here let me clear the screen and pwd and ls so four files we have now i am going to update couple of files nothing but file 1 and file 2 i am going to update let it be file 3 and file 4 
and we'll add these two files to our staging area okay for that i'm just going to update vi file one or else i can go here and open in a notepad and i can update that also i can do okay so anyway vi file one and here so this line is one is there i'm just going to update the typo this is line one nothing but i have done some changes and if i do git status now earlier we were not having any updated files okay now we have updated it so it is identified that there is a file updated in the working directory but it hasn't added to the staging area even i want to update file 2 as well so what i will do i will rename the file 2 because it is file2.txt instead of file2.txt i'm going to make it as a just file 2 now git status again if i do but this time instead of it to treat it as a updated one it thinks that we have deleted file2.txt and we have created file2 that is how it thinks but anyway our motto is we would like to add couple of files to our staging area now what i am going to do is i am going to add these changes to staging area i can add these changes to staging area at a go that is git add minus minus all okay this is one command or else git add dot or else i need to give the each file name so git add minus minus all because we have used minus sorry git add dot in our previous lecture okay so now let's execute and if i do git status now you can see here renamed it identified after adding it to the staging area that this file file2.txt has been renamed as a file2 okay so now these two files are there in the staging area which means that we have pushed these changes for time being we just leave the file 3 and file 4 so we have pushed our changes to the staging area again i am going to modify file 1 and file 2 then we'll compare with the staging area files with our local repository okay now again i am going to modify my files that is vi file 1 or else i am going to add okay let me try to update from my windows system itself so for that let me open it come on open with notepad and here line 1 is there okay it is not taking it as a different lines now let me add it as a this is line 3 okay that's it and control s close this one so we have updated file file 1 now i am going to update file 2 as well open with notepad plus plus okay this is the text file we have added in previous lecture now i am going to remove this line and save this file because we have removed extension as well now let's go back and if i check git status now you can see okay two files are there you can see file 1 and file 2 is there in the staging area as well as in the current working directory nothing but these changes are not yet tracked by our staging area okay so initial changes are tracked and whatever changes just now we have done those changes are not yet updated in our staging area now how can i compare these two files nothing but these are staging area files these are working directory area files right so for that we can use a command called git diff okay git diff what does it do it is going to take the staging area files and the current working directory area files and we'll see what changes we have done okay that is what it is going to do and uh, to better understanding you just think that this is version 2 why because version 1 we have already updated in our local repository and think that this is version 3 so now you can use git diff command and we'll see what is the output we are going to see you just see here what happened it is comparing the file which is there in the working directory to the file which is there in the staging area b stands for staging area and you just see here this is line 1 we have added one enter in our notepad right that treated it as a plus and we have also added line 3 so we have added two lines that is what it is trying to say so extra two lines are added in the working area file similar way if i compare with the file 2 one line has been deleted in the working area file working area file nothing but red color files okay so that is what happened nothing but in version 3 these additional changes we have done whenever there is addition of a line it will appear as a green color whenever there is a deletion it appears as a red color okay so this is how we can compare 
working area directory files with staging area files. Now I would like to compare the files which are there in my local repository with the staging area files. Means same file 1 and file 2, file 2 is not there anyway. File 1 is already there in our local repository, right? But file2.txt is there in our local repository. To compare with the local directory repository with our staging area, then we need to use a command called git diff minus minus staged. Okay. So git diff minus minus staged. Now let's execute this one and we'll see what will happen. You can just see here it is comparing only file 1. Yeah, even it is comparing with file 2 as well. Okay, it identified the file 2 as well. Anyway, you can see here file 1. In file 1, what we have done, it is comparing with the what we have committed in our local repository with the file which is there in the staging area, not in the working directory area. In working directory area, we have added one more line, right? This is line 3, but that is not tracked. Why? Because it is comparing with files which are there in the staging area with the files which are there in our local repository. These two it is comparing. So here in this file we were having this line 1 is there because there was a typo this is line 1 was not there. So this line 1 is there and also this is line 2 that two lines were there in the file 1. But here we have updated the typo. So updated one it is going to compare. Similar way file2.txt is there. Here we have modified file2.txt to file2. That is the reason it is showing those two differences. Now you can see here we have removed the this line 1 and we have updated that with the this is line 1. That is how it identifies. And last one space was extra there in the previous one that we have removed over here. That is how it identified. Okay, so now the comparisons are happened with the local repository with staging area. Okay, so this is how we can compare working directory area files with staging area and staging area files with local repository. To compare with working directory area files with staging area, then we can just use git diff. Whereas if we want to compare with the staging area files with local repository, git diff minus minus staged. That is the command we need to use. We have one more command that is git diff minus minus staged head. Okay. So this also similar way, same whatever output we got with the git diff staged, same thing we are going to get, which means that find out the differentiation between the stage and the head, head nothing but with the repository. Now let me pull it little bit and uh, try to execute this command again. You can see same output you could see. Now one last thing I want to do that is I would like to compare with the working directory with the local repository. Nothing but whatever changes I have done over here and what are the commits I have done. I would like to compare these two. If you do remember in file 3 over here we have three lines. Here we have two lines but one line is with typo. So this line 1 this is the entry is there in the file 1 and here file 2 as file 2.txt here it is file 2. So I don't think so file 2 it is going to compare but let's see how does it work. So git diff just head. Okay. So which means that if I give git diff it is going to compare with the working directory with staging right. If I give git diff head it is going to compare with the repository rather than staging area. But anyway you are going to identify what is head in the later point of time. But for now, just think that head means it is like a local repository. Now let me execute this one and you can see. So in file 1, it is identified that this line has been removed in the working directory area file and we have added this and also we have added one extra line, one more extra line over here. Similar way, it is identified that there is a file to a new file has been created because it thinks that file2.txt and file2 is both are different. So in working directory, one new file called file2 has been created. At the same time, it thinks that file2.txt has been deleted. So it is going to delete. This is how we can compare our changes with working directory to staging area, staging area to local repo and uh, local repo to working directory. Okay, just quickly run through the commands what we have discussed so far. So the first command which we executed is git diff. It is going to compare changes of working directory with the staging area. Next git diff minus minus staged. It is going to compare staging area changes with local repository. Instead of this command we can also use git diff minus minus staged space head. That also works or give the same output. Next git diff head. It is going to compare 
working directory with the local repository. That is how git diff commands are going to work. That's all for this lecture and see you in the next lecture. Hello friends, welcome back. In this lecture, we are going to talk about commits. We have already done couple of commits. We are going to do one more and we'll check it out. Difference between each commit. For that one, I'm just opening my git bash over here. Okay, let me increase font size and I could see there is warning. Okay, on file one because we have edited this file one with the notepad. So that could be the issue. So what I'm going to do is let me remove the file one. File one and git status. Let it be in the staging area. We'll commit these onto our local repository. So now git add dot nothing but whatever changes I have done all changes. I'm adding it to my local repository git status and git commit minus m updated files okay so we are committing our changes and we have done one more commit now if i check git log we could see three commits so so far we have done three commits and uh, you can see head head points to the latest commit which we have done now i would like to compare the changes between the latest commit with the previous commit for that we can do git diff let me pull this side so git diff and I can give the entire commit ID or else first six digits of your commit ID. So this is first six digits, right? I can give the first six or seven digits of my commit ID with the other commit so that we can compare this one with our previous commit. You can see here. So here it is comparing with two different commits and this is the latest commit and this is the older commit. So in latest commit slash a file one and older commit slash b file one so if you see the slash a file one nothing but in the latest commit you can see triple minus and dev null which represents that in the latest commit there is no file called file one why because we have removed it right whatever changes we have there in our working directory all has been committed and you can just check this one git status all the commits are done at the local repository that is the reason there is no file called file one at this moment in our repository but in the previous one, previous commit, nothing but in this commit, there was a file called file one and these were the lines were there in that file. Next, we are comparing with file two. So file two is there in the latest commit, but not in the older commit, older commit file two dot txt, right? So that is what it is representing. In the latest file, we have file two, nothing but a slash file two and uh, previous one, there is no file called uh, file to that is the reason it is showing as a del null and in the latest commit these are the lines we have added similar way if we check the file to dot txt file to dot txt is there in the previous commit not in the latest commit so if you see here dev null nothing but in the latest commit there is no file to dot txt we just have file to in the older commit we have file to dot txt and these are the entries in that file that is how we can compare two different commits using git diff command that is how we can compare two different commits now we can do same comparison with the initial commit nothing but first commit for that let me clear the screen and git log if i do you can see three commits are there now i would like to compare this commit with this commit for that i am going to use git diff and i am giving minimum uh, six or seven entries we should give after that it can be anything and you can just see this what and all differences we could see of course file one is not there in the latest commit in in initial commit it is there similar way file two is here in this commit but not in the previous commit that is why dev null next file two dot txt now it is not there in first commit it was there similar way file three is here nothing but in this commit we have file three but in the previous commit we don't have file 3 and in the latest commit we have added this line and let me give enter and also file 4 we have in the latest commit but not in the previous commit that is how we can compare okay so this is how we can compare which files are added in which commit but there are other ways we can compare in better way we are going to see those in the later point of time but if you observe 
so far we are working on our local system and we are not sharing our code with any other team member who want to work with us we are just doing changes in our directory or repository and adding it to our local repository now let's just think that developer 2 also want to work on the same code means me and developer 2 both are working on the same project if that is the case how we can share our code with the other team members that is what we are going to discuss in the next section thanks for watching and see you in the next section hello guys welcome back in previous lecture we have seen how to install git on windows and linux system also creating repositories and pushing our code onto the repository i mean to say local repository but if you do remember the activities what we have done so far we are doing all the activities in our windows system or windows laptop we haven't communicated with any other system even our repository also still exist in our local system so far it is fine but if you want to work with a team it doesn't work like this and most of the cases you don't work alone that is where you need to share your code with other team members assume that you have another team member you would like to share your code directly sharing your code is not possible why because you need to copy entire repository each and every time and also it is difficult to copy your repository whenever we need why because this system may be up or not and uh, if more people are start using this repository the more difficulty you are facing so to overcome this kind of problem we need to use a separate system where we can keep our repository on that system and we can push our changes over there and uh, other developers can pull that code from that location that is where github comes into the picture so what is github github is a code hosting platform where we can host our repositories so other developers can able to use those repositories and do the changes to the same code so the major advantage of using github is we can work with team or we can work collaboratively without github we cannot able to achieve the distributed version control system if you do remember we were talking about distributed version control system in our initial class right let me quickly go through with that once again this is distributed version control system so far assume that i am working over here assume that this is my laptop and i have created repository and all the code is available over here and sharing the code over here is a difficulty that is where we are using github as a main server repository which can helps us to distribute our code with other developers that is how we can enable distributed version control system let's come back now how can i send my code over here so for my code is available in my laptop i would like to send it to the github so that other developer can able to pull my code in this case other developer nothing but developer 2 where we have created a linux system on aws cloud and installed git right from that system i want to do some activities on the same repository so we should push our code onto the github but to push our code onto github we should have a github account so how to create a github account we are going to see in the next lecture thanks for watching and see you there hello guys welcome back in this lecture we are going to see how to create a github account as i discussed in our previous lecture to store our code or to share our code with the group of people or with team we should have a github account right let's go and create it I am on my browser. Let's search for create github account. Okay, you can see first link github.com and join. Let me click on this one. And this is taking us directly to a create your account page. Rather than coming over here, let's go to home page. And this is the home page of github.com. Okay. Here you can sign up by clicking on this one or else by default it is a sign up page we can provide our details over here so i am going to give some username and this username should be unique it should not be identical i am giving velaxi demo account okay just i am giving some random name so that this account name should not be used by any others and uh, email id i am giving velaxi technologies at gmail.com hopefully with this account i don't have any github account and i am giving some password okay i have given email id and password now 
sign up for github so it came to the create your account page here we need to verify our account to verify our account we need to solve a puzzle so let's verify done and join a free plan and this you can uncheck if, if you don't want to receive any notifications and what kind of work do you do i am a software engineer student or product manager in this case i am software engineer i am choosing next how much programming experience do you have i can say a little and uh, what do you plan to use github i can say that learn git and github i am interested so in case if you are interested on any languages you can specify over here but i am leaving this as empty and complete setup so now my account has been created but to activate it we need to validate our email id but i have already an account so i don't want to create a new account again but this is how we can create an account let me log into my existing account for that one i am going back to my github.com and it is by default logged into Velaxi demo account i am deleting this account because i don't want to create this account just quickly account and delete account okay why because i don't need this account your username or email id Velaxi. so we are deleting now i'm going to log in my default account that is github.com and sign in for my account my account is arsr319 and i am logging into my account all right i have logged into my github account and this is the default landing page i could see few repositories over here but in your case you might not see these repositories if you create a new account and you can find out more information about your account by clicking on your account settings and i have logged in as a revd revd is the my username and you can see your profile repositories projects all this information is there so let me click on my profile and this is the profile and by default you will be in the overview page and if you want to change your information you can change it over here and this will tell you that how frequently you are working on your repository green color means you are working actively on these areas no color means it means that you are not working at all anyway i have total 58 repositories on this account and i can check out my repositories by clicking over here so these all are the repositories which are available on this account anyway we are going to see little more in the later point of time in previous section we have created a repository on our local system right by using git in it but here we need to create a repository over here by using new option anyway we are going to see that one in the next video thanks for watching and see you there hello guys welcome back in previous lecture we have seen how to create a github account in this lecture we are going to create a repository on github if you do remember in previous section we have created a github repository on git nothing but in our local system but in this lecture we are going to create a repository over here github and we can pull that repository onto our local system and do activities anyway as a starting point we should create a github repository let's go and create a repository this is my github account and as i said i have 58 repositories so far and i'm going to create a new repository by choosing this option or else i can choose this plus symbol to create a new repository and moreover to create a new repository you must log into your account okay so i have already logged in so i can able to create a new repository so this repository is going to create under revd account i am going to name it as a velaxi technologies git repo okay so just i am going to give the relevant name so that it is easy for us to remember this is velaxi technologies git repo and uh, if you scroll down you can provide a description if you wish i am not giving any description and uh, another one is you can see public and private repositories and just see the description what they have given anyone on the internet can see this repository you can choose who can commit which means that if you upload your code in the public repository anybody in the internet which means that this repository is publicly available 
if they browse this repository from your account they can able to see the content what is there in our repository whereas private repository you can choose who can see and commit this repository means it is only available and accessible for the people to whom you can give access so when can we use public and when can we use private if you have your proprietary content and you don't want to disclose your code with any other person then we can go with the private and also you can restrict the access to specific persons or specific account holders whereas public repository if you want to share your code with community and you are fine to share your code in those cases we can use the public repositories and moreover if nothing to hide in the code what you have written in our case we can choose public repository because we are not going to keep any proprietary data in this repository and at a later point of time we may choose private repositories next initialize this repository with add readme file add .git .ignore okay this is new feature and choose a license okay these two are new features earlier these two options were not there anyway first thing is add readme file usually in the readme file we are going to give detailed information about your repository what exactly it is doing and uh, in which cases we can use this repository something like this you have written the code and to understand what that code is doing is difficult and how to use that code is difficult right instead of that one you can update readme file by providing instructions how others can use your repository if they want that is where we can write readme file and while writing readme file we must write in the markdown language which we are going to see in the later point of time for now i am just choosing this option that to add readme file and we don't need git ignore we are going to talk about git ignore later point of time and create a repository okay so now i can say i have created a repository the repository name is velaxi technologies git repo and in this we have one file that is readme.md md stands for markdown language and by default it adds just your repository name in this file okay so this is the content added in your readme file so this is how we can create a repository and there are lot of options are available over here but uh, majorly we can concentrate over here master you can see this is the branch we called you can see branches and master by default it creates a branch called master and all your content goes into the master branch and we are going to talk about branches in the later point of time again and it is initialized by revd initial commit nothing but i have done one commit we have seen commits by using git log right same thing you can see here and commits you can check it out over here this is the one commit and it has done one minute ago and here you can see go to file add file code okay there are different options over here and we are majorly going to use this one that is we want to clone this repository to clone this repository we just need to click over here and we need to take up this url again this url is clone with https and we have one more option that is use ssh we are going to talk about ssh later point of time but for now we are going to use https so here if we click it will get copied into our clipboard and we can use wherever we want this is about how we can clone our repository and apart from that we have issues pull requests actions projects wiki uh insights and settings mostly we are dealing with settings okay like that there are various options we have but we are going to deal with some of these whenever it is necessary i'm going back to code again and uh, this is our default landing page that's all for this video in next lecture we are going to clone this repository into developer system and start working with that that is what we are going to see thanks for watching and see you there hey guys welcome back in previous lecture we have seen how to create a repository right in this lecture we are going to clone that repository onto our local system how to clone we are going to see that one before that one let's understand how the local and remote repository works if you see here 
couple of commands you might be familiar by this time that is git add command and git commit command these two commands we have done and move and remove just ignore it so git add where we want to add our files from working area to staging area then git commit where we want to add our commands from staging area to local repository now just keep this repository for aside we have created a demo repo right so this is the repository we have created demo repo so this repository we are not using for some time let it keep aside now after doing that one what we have done we have created our account on remote repository and we created a repository over here so that repository i would like to clone into my local system we are concentrating on this command git clone so we are going to clone this repository onto workspace or onto our local system so this is how our systems looks like at this moment so just think that this is developer one or my laptop and this is a linux system and a few other developers also want to get the same repository and we have initialized a repository over here and if i do git clone repository name that repository is going to come onto my local system same thing we can do from the other systems as well to get this code or to get this repository Anyway, we are going to execute git clone command to pull the code from our repository. Now, let's jump into our GitHub account to get the URL of repository to clone it onto my local system. This is our remote repository which we have created in our previous lecture. So, to clone this repository onto our local system, we need to take this repository URL. For that, click on code. Then, we are going to use HTTP, HTTPS URL. So copy this one and go back to our working directory. Now this is anywhere repo. Inside a repo, again, I don't want to create a repository. So go back over here. So under projects, I'm going to clone that remote repository. For that, I'm going to open git bash over here. So nothing but under projects folder, we have initialized git bash. I have increased font size. Okay. Now, you can just see here if i do git status over here you can see not a git repository what does it mean that it is not a repository right it is just a folder only demo repo is the repository in case if you want to know that whether a directory is a repository or not it should have dot git directory here we don't have dot git directory so it is not a repository if you want to convert this entire project folder as a repository then we can execute git init dot okay that we can do but i don't want to do that one for now we just want to clone the repository onto this folder for that we need to use a command called git clone and the repository url so i have copied the repository url and you can see this is https github.com slash revd this is my account followed by the repository name and it comes with dot git extension if i do this one it is going to clone the repository onto my local system my local system nothing but developer one system and you can see the vt git dot repo sorry vt git repo has been created over here and if i click over here you can see dot git and repo nothing but it is a repository and again if i go back here and pwd present working directory i'm under projects and i should go inside to velaxi technologies git repo and clear the screen and if i do ls over here you can see only readme file is there and if i open readme file hash vt git repo nothing but velaxi technologies git repo so this is the content we have cloned from our remote repository now i can do my development activities on this repository and i can push it back how we can add changes and pushing these changes to the remote repository we are going to see in the next lecture thanks for watching and see you there hello guys welcome back so far our environment it looks like this we have a git repository on github as well as same repository is available in our local system now i'm going to update my local repository with new code after that this repository is differ from the repository which we have there in github let's take the example that even other developer nothing but a developer too who is using our linux system it is on aws this guy also want to work on the same code along with developer one 
Now you don't know what changes developer one has done. If he is trying to pull this repository and start developing it, there may be a problem. That is the reason we need to push our code into the GitHub repository all the time so that latest updates can be available for the developer too as well. For that, we should run a command called git push origin master. Here master nothing but a branch. I have shown you that while creating our GitHub repository, one branch has been created, right? So same branch we are going to push. Anyway, we are going to talk about this one more detailed in the later point of time. So when we execute this command, our code which is there in our local system is going to get updated with the GitHub repository. Now developer 2 can able to pull this code and start developing it. Again to pull the code, he has to run the git clone, right? Because he has to clone this repository on his local system. When he run the git clone, code get pulled into the other developer system. This is what we are going to try in this. This is what we are going to try in this. Now everybody's code is updated. So this is how GitHub helps us to share the code among the developers who are working on the same project. Now let's try the same thing. At this moment our repositories are looks like this. We have same code over here. Now I am going to update our code over here. Let's go and do that. So this is our GitHub repository which is cloned from GitHub. Now let's open git bash over here. Increase the font size. And here git status if I check. You can see there is no changes in our branch. Whatever is there in our remote repository same I have pulled over here. ls you can see only readme file. Now assume that this is a html project. I want to create multiple html files on this one. Let's take that I am creating index.html file. So for that index.html I am writing it as a h1. This is index.html file and I am closing html. Okay, if you don't know the html, don't worry. This is just a header. I am going to write it and save this file. Now if I see again git status, you can see there is index.html file. That is contact.html. VA contact.html. So here I am going to give our contact details are I'm closing it up then I'm providing h2 okay h1 nothing but header 1 h2 nothing but header 2 uh, depends upon the numbers the font size varies okay phone number 1234567891 just I'm giving some random number and save the file and I forgot to assume that I forgot to add an email to contact details. Let it be and save this file and if I check a git status. So two files are there. From here we have already tried how we can add these files to staging area and from there to local repository. So before committing this if I check git log you can see only one commit one commit nothing but whenever we created our repository in the github at the time this commit was done that commit was initial commit we have added readme file right and also you can just see here author rowdy and because we haven't set up our email id over there and if you see the date when we have done the commit and by default it treated as a initial commit right now we are going to commit our changes to this repository for that git add dot okay git add dot nothing but add all new files or modified files which are there in my current repository that is the meaning of this command so i have added now if i check git status you can see these files has been added to staging area now from here i want to push it into my local repository so git commit minus m added contact and uh, index index files okay so this is how we can add our files and if i check git status so now you can see here it is saying that your branch is ahead of origin master by one commit what does it mean our branch nothing but our local repository have one extra commit comparatively my remote repository 
So if I check git log now, you can see how many commits are there. We have two commits, right? But whereas if I go to my GitHub and if I look for commits, you can see here commit still only one commit is there. So it is comparing this commit with the local commits which we have done on our system and uh, our origin. You can just see here origin master. Origin master nothing but our GitHub account. In our GitHub account, we are having this commit, whereas in our local repository, we have extra this commit. Now, I would like to make this commit in my remote repository. That is where we should use git push origin master. Whenever we execute this command, whatever changes I have done in my local repository, same are get updated with my remote repository. Here origin nothing but our centralized repository, our centralized repository nothing but github.com. So we are trying to push our changes to our origin and uh, onto master branch, master nothing but onto this branch we are pushing. Let's try to execute this command and you can just see what happens at this moment. Okay, I could able to push my changes onto my remote repository and uh, now if I check in my remote repository by refreshing it, you can see one more commit over here. You can see here added contact and index files and that is by RevD. And by the way, whenever we are pushing our changes, it should ask for credentials. But in my case, my credentials are already recorded in my local system. That is the reason it is not asking for credentials. But I am going to show you how to set up the credentials when we are dealing with the Linux system. Okay, again I am going back to my code and this time i could see my index.html and contact.html and it is updated nine minutes ago this nine minutes is in our local repository when we have committed in our local repository content is same as what we have added so this is how we can push our changes onto remote repository now assume that a developer to also want to work with this one so as of now we have done changes and changes has been pushed into remote repository now I would like to pull these changes onto other system that is our Linux system. On Linux system, I want to pull and I want to do my modifications. How can I do that one? We'll see in the next lecture. Hello guys, welcome back. In previous lecture, we have seen how can we modify the code and push it into the GitHub, right? In this lecture, assume that developer 2 also want to work on the same code. Let's take the example. So this is available in the GitHub. So now developer one went and identified that in contact.html file, there is no email ID. Now developer two want to update email ID in the contact list. For that, he has to pull this code. He cannot directly update over here, right? Of course we can do, but that is not right way to do that one. For this, he has to pull this code onto his system. He has to add his changes to the code and push it back so that it will be available to everyone. Anyway, we are going to take this code. I mean to say whatever code is available in the GitHub, that code we will take it as a deployable code. So all the changes must be updated with the GitHub account code. For that, I need to log into my developer to system. From there, I can pull this code. As you know, we have created a Linux system on AWS cloud for a developer to system. And uh, I'm going to log into this system. To log into this system, I'm taking the public IP address of this system and go to mobile extern. This is mobile extern session ssh and IP address. Next, we need to load the key pair. We have given key pair as git key, right? This is the key pair and the default user for EC2 server that is EC2 minus user. That's it. Let's connect to this system. And uh, now I have logged into my system. Now I'm going to rename it as a developer2 system so that it is easy for us to recognize. I'm logging as a root. For that, we need to execute sudo su minus, which means that switch as a root. So to edit hostname, we need to edit slash etc hostname, hostname file. Here, this is the name we have, but I don't want to this name. I'm, I want to developer. Okay, something like this I need. But after changing hostname, you need to reboot your system. Rather than doing that one, you can just do hostname developer to system okay this is for temporary nothing but until reboot it will show as a developer to system okay special character is not allowed i think 
minus I am giving. Okay, it has been updated and also in host file also I should update it because it doesn't take special character. Right? Now let me switch once again as a root so that we can see the latest name. Okay? That's how you can do or else we can do the source. Nothing but exit. Okay, source source doesn't work because we need to reboot anyway i am going to switch back as a root user again so now you can see your hostname has been changed as a developer too now let me clear the screen and pwd at this moment i am under root directory and there is no files over here now how can i clone this code it is very simple git clone followed by our repository name right so you know the how to get the url of repository that is go to our repository and click over here get the repository and go back to our system and give the repository that's it now i have cloned this repository into my local system and you can see vt git repo and if i go inside to vt git repo and here you can see contact.html index.html and readme.html Okay, so this is how we can clone code into another developer system. Now, my purpose is I would like to update contact.html because developer1 forgot to update or did some mistake in the contact.html. Maybe here we are adding few lines, but this is how the concept does work. We may not using code at this moment, but this is how concept does work. So, I am editing contact.html and will add h2 email contact at email.com okay just i'm giving some random name so h2 that's it we have updated our code and let's save this file now if i see git status you can see one file has been modified in our local system and that is also available in the working directory we need to add this one to our staging area and git commands are same even though you are running on windows or linux so git add dot git status now it is in the staging area git commit minus m added email to contact okay so by looking at this commit id i can identify that what changes developer 2 has done now if i check for git status now you can see our local repository is ahead by one additional commit whereas remote repository doesn't and if i check git log okay you can see here this is the origin origin nothing but our remote repository our remote repository have commits only two but my local system have one more additional commit okay so that is the reason it is saying that our local system is forwarded by one additional commit now i would like to push these changes to my remote repository before pushing it you can see author we have done it as a developer too and uh, this is the email id now let's try to push these changes to remote repository and we'll see what happens git push origin master okay you can see here it is asking for username where it didn't ask for username when i am pushing it from my windows system why because in my windows system my credentials are already stored that is the reason it is not asking for credentials whereas in my linux system my credentials are not yet updated that is the reason it is asking for credentials again you may get one more doubt that while cloning the repository it didn't ask for credentials but while pushing our changes it is asking for credentials why does it happen why because our github is a public repository whenever it is a public repository everybody can able to clone that one but it doesn't mean that everybody can able to update my code right if somebody want to modify my code they have to get my permission otherwise they cannot able to modify if you want to use my code yes you can use and you can do whatever changes you want in this case also developer 2 want to modify the code he has modified it but while he is pushing his code onto my repository he should have my authentication nothing but my credentials he should have but giving my credentials to developer 2 is not right way but just think that for this moment we need credentials to push our changes so that i have given my credentials to developer 2 but going forward we don't use these credentials okay so to proceed further i am giving my credentials over here that is ravd and password also i am giving so i have given my credentials 
and these changes has been pushed into remote repository and if I go and check it out in the remote repository let me refresh it and you can see here this time one more commit has been done and that has came as a RT2 it means that somebody has created github account with this email id that is the name it has propagated okay anyway if I check for the commits you can see here three commits are there and this commit just now it has been done and added email to contact list and if I go to my code I could able to see the latest commit okay you can see here email contact at email.com so this is how we can update the existing repository code as a another developer and so far two developers are working on this code that's the reason you can see the contributors are two in this file two contributors are updated their code so this is how we can pull the code and do modifications and push the changes. So this process continue to repeat until we get the expected output in our development process. That's all for this lecture and see you in the next lecture. Hello guys, welcome back. In this lecture, we are going to see what is the difference between git clone and git pull. So far, we are using git clone to clone the repository. In this lecture, we are going to see the git pull. So to demonstrate this one, I am taking the same repository. In this repository, we have three commits at this moment. And the same three commits are available in the developer2 system as well. I just executed git log command and you can see three commits are there. And these commits are updated in our remote repository. And if I check for developer1 system, this is our developer1 system. But in the developer1 system, we have only two commits. Because third commit was done by the developer2 and he updated this one in the remote repository remote repository nothing but over here he has committed updated now i would like to get these updates to my developer one system for that we need to execute a command called git pull okay so git pull i need to execute now what is the difference between git pull and git clone in case the repository is not exist in your system then we need to use the git clone if we take our previous lecture in our previous lecture initially we have executed git clone over here okay and then we have done our changes and we pushed over here and even as a developer too also initially he has used git clone command why because the repository itself is not exist in the local system in case if it is not exist in the local system then we need to go with the git clone whereas repository is already available but few changes you want to pull from the remote repository if that is the case we need to use the git pull command so here here in my developer one system i have already this repository that is velaxi technologies git repo but this is not up to date up to date nothing but some commits are missing in my local system so i should execute git pull command let's execute git pull and we'll see what happens and here you can see it is pulling the changes and you can see what changes it has pulled contact.html and this file has been changed and one insertion and one deletion deletion nothing but maybe we have deleted the space empty line that is the reason it is saying as a one deletion let me open the contact.html now i have pulled it that is the reason i could see this email in the developer one system and if i check git log again this time it is going to show you it is going to show us three commits rather than two commits and here we have head master origin master origin head this we are going to talk about more detail in the later point of time so in our local system current head is representing to the master master nothing but for our branch so we are going to talk about head and uh, this mapping in later point of time but these are the commits and here you can see this third commit was done by the developer too i could able to see that one and also he has given a description that added email to contact so this is the major difference between the git clone and git pull i'm repeating once again we are going to use git clone command if we want to clone the repository from the github first time nothing but in your local system the repository is not there and you are cloning it git pull we are going to use in case repository is already there but you want to check out whether your local repository and remote repository are at the same page or not nothing but whatever commits we have on the remote repository same commits are there in the local repository or not for that purpose we are going to do the git pull. now let's think in another way assume that developer 2 is not pulled latest code from github but he has done his own changes and he is trying to push it what happens that we are going to see in the next lecture 
Okay, that's all for this lecture and see you in the next lecture. Hello folks, in this lecture we are going to talk about a common issue which is faced by the developers and how do they resolve it to avoid the problem. Let's take an example that there is a repository in our GitHub account. Now developer 1 and developer 2 want to work on the same code. So to get that code we need to pull it into our local system right. For that we can execute a command called git clone so that the code will come into the local system. Now assume that developer 1 has pulled the code similar way even developer 2 also cloning the same repository. At this point of time everybody have the same piece of code. Now developer 1 and developer 2 start working on this code. Let's assume that developer 1 has updated his code. Now there is some change or variation with the remote repository code. Similar way even developer 2 also updated his code. Now both the guys have done their own changes to the same repository. Now we need to push this code onto remote repository right. Now let's say that developer 1 is trying to check in his code onto remote repository. At this point of time developer 1 can able to check in his code without any issue. Why? Because whatever commit id on the remote repository and whatever commit id he was having on local repository both are same. Now on top of that one he has done his own commits. So while pushing also there won't be any problem developer 1 can able to update his code with the remote repository. Whereas if developer 2 is trying to update his code onto remote repository it doesn't take it. Why? Because whenever you have pulled this code from the remote repository, the code what were there in the remote repository and what is there at this point of time both are differ. To avoid this problem, we need to pull the code by using git pull command, pushing our changes or checking in our changes. That is the best practice. Apart from this, we can still use git branches which we are going to talk about those in the later point of this course. Let's see this. Let's see this demonstration with practical. So to demonstrate this example, I am taking a repository called test hello. So far we have 12 commits over here. I am going to clone this repository onto developer 1 system as well as developer 2 system. Let's go to developer 1 system first. Developer 1 system means my local system. I am under projects directory. Under this I have one more directory called java projects. This time I am going to clone my repository over here. So let's open git bash over here. Okay, so if I do pwd, I'm under Java projects. We have few existing projects over there. Anyway, I'm going to clone my repository, git clone. Let's take the repository. This is the repository. And I'm cloning it over here. Alright, developer1 has been cloned this repository successfully and if I do ls, we have a test hello, I am inside to test hello. Similar way, I am going to clone this repository onto developer2 system as well. This is developer2 system, I am under root directory, I have already few existing repositories, here I am going to clone the repository. So even on Linux system or developer2 system also, I should use the same command. So we are cloning the repository. Now let me go to test hello and clear the screen. Now both the developers are start working on this repository. Let's assume that now both have the version 1 code which means that git log if I do you can just see here your current commit is at E97E. Even here also git log your current commit is at E97E. Now while pushing my code even in the remote repository also same commit should be there. If some other commit you cannot able to push your code. Okay. So let me update a few content in this file. Let me go to src here. Okay. Main java. Okay. I am updating this file app.java. Some updates we need to do. Let's update this file something is there so i'm just uh, updating it as a welcome to devops training is there this i'm going to change it as a welcome to git sorry training okay so i'm just uh, save this file and if i do git status git add dot i'm adding this onto local com sorry staging area 
git commit minus m updated app dot app dot java file okay so i have updated and this has been updated in the local repo if i do git log this has been updated in the local repo now if i want to push or if i want to check in this commit onto remote repository i can do without any issues why because even my remote repository is still at this version okay so if i do if i go to commits you can see here at this moment your remote repository also at e97e that is the commit id even in your developer one system also in the same even in developer two system also at the same level now what i am doing is as a developer two i am also updating this code let me do ls and i am updating only pom.xml file so here change the snapshot version this you can understand in my complete devops course if you have enrolled if you enrolled only for the git course don't worry it is just we are updating some content and save this file and git status if i do here i have updated pom.xml and git add i'm adding my changes to the staging area and git commit minus m use updated pom.xml okay so i have updated my code and if i do git log over here here also on top of my remote commit i have done one more commit now in this case even developer one and developer two both are updating the same local repository now whoever pushing their code first they don't get any problem why because in remote repository whatever commit is there even these guys also having the same commit on top of that one we are updating but whoever checking their code second time they are going to get the problem why because if developer one has pushed his code then in the remote repository commit id should be this one but whenever i am pushing as a developer to i am still thinking that this is the commit id but whereas in remote repository the commit id became this one then we get a problem let's see that one i am pushing my changes at i am pushing my changes as a developer one so git push origin master okay i have updated my changes onto remote repository if i go and refresh it over here okay one more commit which has done at three minutes ago now let me try to commit my changes as a developer too and we'll see what happens git push origin master in this case what i'm thinking still my remote repository is at this commit on top of that one i'm trying to update this commit but whereas in the reality it has one more commit now you can see okay while pushing it is asking for credentials because i haven't set up any credentials over here revd okay you can see here failed to push some reference to so and so what it is trying to say is updates were rejected because the remote contains work that you do not have locally this is usually caused by another repository pushing to the same reference so whatever reference i am trying to push uh, means on top of this one i am trying to push my changes this is the reference i am taking but it is no more valid reference at this point why because there is one more reference point on top of this reference point only i can push it my changes that is why you are getting this error so to resolve this one you need to pull the changes from the remote repository then again you need to push it before doing this one if i do git log you can still see this this is your commit right now i am going to do git pull okay it is saying that merge branch master from so and so into your local system yes i want to do this is take it as a one more extra commit in your local system now it has been updated app.java and if i do git log you can see here this is actually your local commit and this is the remote commit which is pulled from the remote repository but while pulling your remote repository your code and remote repository code has to get merged that is the reason you will get one more commit as extra that is merge branch okay now how many commits we are having in the remote repository initially 12 were there then 
as a developer one i have done one more commit it became 13 but this time it should be 14 right instead of 14 it will become 15 why because this merge branch commit also added in my local repository and before this one i could see another commit that is what earlier commit e97e okay anyway if i do git push over here this time it should be pushed into the remote repository all right i have successfully pushed my code onto remote repository and if i just refresh it this time it should be 15 commits okay if i go to my commits over here okay march branch is one more extra commit and this is as a developer too i have done this one before that app.java because he has pushed his code prior to my code that is how you can push your code but to overcome this problem we are going to use branches most of the cases developers they don't commit their changes onto the branch which they are using as a best practice instead of doing your changes onto the branch which you pulled from the remote repository you create your own branch and do the changes that is how you can avoid these kind of conflicts anyway you are going to understand about git branches in the later point of time in this course thanks for watching and see you in the next lecture hello folks welcome back in this lecture we are going to talk about how can we connect to github with ssh keys so far we are using https links to clone the repository right https links allows us to use the username and password whereas if we use ssh keys we need to provide the key based authentication for that we need to generate ssh keys and moreover ssh based authentication is more secure than the password based authentication for this one we need to enable on the developer one and developer two systems because both are using only password based authentication at this moment initially i am going to set up the ssh based authentication on the developer two system nothing but on our linux system same procedure we need to follow on our developer one system nothing but on our windows system but i have already enabled ssh based authentication on my windows system so we cannot enable it again maybe we can enable it later point of time whenever it is necessary but the procedure is same what we are following in our developer 2 system let's go and do that one so this is my linux system i have already logged in as a root user you can just see here and currently i am under slash root directory now i would like to enable ssh based authentication between this linux system to my github account this is our github account right so i would like to connect to this github account without password or else with ssh keys for that we need to generate ssh keys on our linux system and those keys we should add to our github account for this there is a very good document in the github documentation let me open that one connecting to github use using with ssh okay the link is already propagating but anyway so if you search for this one you can see connecting to github with ssh there is a detailed documentation is there among this if you want to change existing keys this you need to follow but in our case we are generating new keys from the starting we are doing so this is the link we need to go to see what are the commands we should execute to generate ssh keys you can see here there is a command called ssh keygen let me increase font size okay ssh keygen and uh, once keys are generated then we need to start our ssh agent after ssh agent is started we need to add our private key to the ssh agent these three commands we should execute and instead of executing this entire command we can just execute ssh keygen as well okay usually we use ssh keygen that also works same way but it is more robust so this is our linux system i'm executing ssh keygen to generate the key and you can see here it is generating keys under slash root dot ssh id rsa okay it generates two keys that is id rsa and id rsa pub those two are the keys which it is going to generate and we need to give just enter nothing to add 
if you need more protection of course you can use some pass phrase but in our case we are just ignoring it now we have generated our ssh keys and if you go inside to slash root slash dot ssh you can see id rsa and id rsa dot pub this public key we need to copy onto our github account then we can enable passwordless authentication before copying this one onto our github account we need to start our ssh agent as well for that you can see the command over here that is evil ssh agent minus s so i am just executing this command as well once this is executed one last thing we should do that is we need to add our private key to this agent so that so whenever we are using ssh based authentication it, it is going to use this private key so let's execute now what i have done i have generated keys on my linux system now i need to copy my public key onto github account so that the authentication get enabled without any issue so far i haven't copied it but just i will try to clone the repository before adding keys and we'll see what happens then we'll add the keys and we'll see what happens for that i am going to take one repository let me go to repositories and i am going to test repository i just created this one and this is just empty repository and we can clone this repository so while cloning you know right we can use https link whenever we use https link it doesn't ask for the credentials while cloning it but while we want to push it it definitely ask for credentials whereas ssh we need to give the credentials even though we want to download it now let me take this one and i am trying to clone this repository onto my linux system so let me go back to root because i am under .ssh directory and pwd currently i am under root and we have only velaxi technologies git repo over here now i am trying to clone the repository of the test repo and we'll see what happens earlier it was a https it was starting now it is started with git and we'll see it is asking to do you want to enable key based authentication yes i want to do and you can see here permanently added some keys and it is saying that permission denied which means that you are trying to clone the repository with with ssh authentication but i don't know who you are that is the problem or that is the issue it is throwing now what i will do i will copy my public key onto github account then again i will try to execute this command and we'll see what happens so our public key is available under slash root dot ssh slash id rsa dot pub right so this is the public key okay you can see here we have already seen that and you can see so this is the output of that file i'm just copying this output and go back to our github account and go to account here we need to go to settings under settings there is a ssh and gpg keys click on this one and we should add ssh keys so far i haven't added any ssh keys i am adding new one and i will name it as a developer2 then i should add my key over here so i just added key and add ssh key okay we have added key onto our repository now what we should do is we will try to execute the same command again this time and we'll see what happens now the authentication is fine and we can able to clone this repository without any issues now it is trying to clone and you can see i could able to clone the repository without any issues now i will do some changes and uh, try to push it even while pushing also it should not ask for credentials whereas in earlier it was asking for credentials right so what i will do i will go inside to test repo and will create a test file sorry touch index.html again i am creating one index.html git status if i check one file is there git add git commit minus m added index.html git push origin master that's it i am pushing my changes and uh, this time it should not ask for credentials you can see it is not even asking for credentials because it is using ssh based authentication this is how we can connect to the github using ssh now same thing i want to do on my windows system as well on my windows system keys are already generated so this is my windows system and uh, 
those keys I'm using for some other purpose. So I could not able to disclose or open those keys. I will directly add those keys in my GitHub account and we will see whether I can able to clone that repository into my system or not. Before adding keys, I am just going to clone this repository, git clone and I am going to take the repository again. So test repo, right? So I am just cloning this repository with the SSH link. And even in this system also it doesn't work. Why? Because we haven't enabled SSH based authentication. See here it is saying that permission denied. So what we need to do? We need to follow again all these steps. Nothing but first we need to generate keys up here first we need to generate keys but this step is already done in my windows system i don't want to execute this one and then we need to start the agent and we need to add these keys to our agent okay i'm going to execute these two steps on my windows system okay i'm starting ssh agent then i'm adding my public key to this agent okay i have given my public key now what i am going to do is i need to add this private key to my repository i am just going to copy my private key sorry not private key sorry public key dot pub so this is the public key i am just copying this public key i am adding my public key into my repository sorry my github account go back to settings again and ssh keys and new ssh key i am going to name it as a developer1 and i am adding my keys and add key now i have added developer1 key as well now if i go back to my developer1 system let me clear the screen and i am trying to clone the repository again so this is the command to clone the repository and this time it should able to clone the repository without any issues all right so this is how we can enable ssh based authentication even 10 developers are working on the same repository you need not to provide or give credentials to everyone they can able to use the ssh based authentication it is secure and it is a seamless process that is how we can enable ssh based authentication that's all for this lecture and see you in the next lecture. Hello folks, welcome back. So far what we have done is we have created a repository on our GitHub account and then we have used a git clone command to get that code onto developer system. I mean to say dev system. So these are the steps we have followed. First thing is we have created a repository on GitHub and cloned repository onto dev system. Now let's think in the opposite direction. Before creating a repository on my GitHub account, assume that I have created a repository on my local system. What is the command we use? That is git init, right? If you do remember, we have created a first repository by using git init command. So if we create a repository with git init command, then how can we update this code with the GitHub account? That is what we are going to see. For this one, I am going to use the repository which we have initially created that is a demo repo. So that repository we are going to use to do this activity. Why? Because demo repo is not yet updated into my GitHub account. So I want to update my code into GitHub account so that developer 2 can able to pull the code. I am going to show you how can we do that one. This is my Windows system and here we have created a repository called demo repo, right? So this is the initial repository which we have created in our developer system and it has these three files and if I open git bash over here Okay So if I do git status you can see Everything is clean in my local repository nothing but I have pushed these changes to local repository But these changes but this code is not yet updated in the github yet and also I can check git log to check the commits. So far I have done three commits and usually if it is attached with the remote repository then you can see the origin link as well. But here you can see only head link to master nothing but it is available only in the local repository. Now my requirement is I would like to share this code with the other developer who is working on Linux system. I mean to say this is the guy. This guy is developer too right. I would like to share this code with this developer. 
then how can I do that one? Of course, I need to use the GitHub, right? So first I need to push this code to GitHub so that developer 2 can able to clone the code from the GitHub. That is what we are going to do now. Now, how can I push this code onto GitHub? Can I able to do git push origin master? Okay, we'll see what happens if I do that one. You can just see it is saying that origin does not appear to be a git repository, could not read from the remote repository, which means that it is saying that, okay, boss, you are trying to push this code onto remote repository, but I don't know to which remote repository I would like to push. So now what we need to do is we need to create a remote repository even though we create or we initialize a repository in our local system equivalent repository we should create in the remote repository equivalent repository we should create in the github then we need to combine those two nothing but link those two repositories so that this repository code get updated into the repository which we created in the github account that is what we need to do. For this one, I am going to create a repository called demo repo in our GitHub account and we'll link up those two. Before linking up, it's time to explore about the .git directory. So let's go inside to .git directory and see what is there. I'm giving PWD, I'm under my demo repo and if I do ls -a, a to list out the hidden files as well. And you can see there is a .git directory. I will go inside to .git directory and if I do ls, you can see there is a file called config. We are going to talk about other files time to time, but we are going to talk about config file. Let me open this config file and you can see there is no information about origin. Usually this file contains the information of your remote repository. So far we don't have any remote repository. That is the reason you could not able to see. To understand better, I am going to other repository that is already associated with our GitHub account. So this is already associated with our GitHub, right? I am going to open git bash over here. And if I do pwd ls -a, you can see dot git is there. I am going inside to dot git and ls again. Here you can see config and if I open, you can just see remote origin which means that the remote repository which is associated with this repository so this particular repository vt git repo is associated with the repository which is available in my account and this is the repository name so that is how the association does happens so even for our other repository nothing but this repository also we need to add this remote origin so we should have a remote repository to do that activity let's go to our github account and create a repository over there so this is my github account and let's go and create a repository i can go and create from here or else i can create from here as well new repository i'm creating demo repo okay the name can be anything of course but uh, let it be same or equivalent name so that we can avoid the confusion. So we are creating a repository called demo repo. That is the repository name we are using here as well, right? Sorry, not this one. So if you, if we see, let me close this one. And if you see, cd dot dot, we need to come out from the git. Otherwise our git commands doesn't work. Okay. So you can see demo repo, this is the repository we are creating. So demo repo and it is a public repository and I am not initializing the readme file. I will tell you why I am not initializing. If we initialize readme file, we can just see the readme file. If you don't initialize readme file, just we can create repository. You can see some of the instructions we got to proceed further. So if we don't create repository, we will get these kind of instructions. How can you clone this repository into your local system? Or else if you have a local repository already, how can you add that one? First, we'll start from here. We can clone this repository by using HTTPS link or else SSH link. Of course, you know by this time. Next thing is in case if we want to create a new repository first in our local system and then we want to add it, then these are the commands. Okay, first we are creating a readme file in our local system and initializing the repository and adding the code to our staging area, then committing the changes to the local repository. And this is branch, we can just ignore that one. Next thing is you can just see 
git remote add origin and remote repository url so this is the command we should use to add our local repository with the github account or remote repository so if we do this one this particular repository is get associated with the repository which we have created over here that is what it is going to happen okay this is what we are expecting once this is done we can push our changes into our remote repository nothing but over here we can push it all right so this is another one and uh, at last again they have given in case we have already done this one we have initialized the repository and we have added our changes to local repository as well now we want to do this activity that is git remote add origin and we are adding our repository name let's execute this one and before executing this one make sure that we don't have any files which are uncommitted okay so our branch is clean now i am going to add this one git remote add origin under the origin repository name let me increase a little bit of font size yep okay now let me give enter after giving enter let me open this file again so ls minus a i can open this directly from the dot git slash config okay now you can see earlier file this is earlier one right there were only core entries now this time you can see remote origin entry also added why because we just executed this command so that this local repository is now able to communicate with this repository now let's push our changes to remote repository for that git push origin master okay let's enter and you can see here it is trying to push changes and it won't ask for credentials why because my credentials are already updated in the repository and if you observe this one we have used a ssh based link not the https link all right so this is how we can push our changes now let me refresh it to see the changes and we can see three files are there and also three commits in my local repository i have done three commits right all these three commits are available and it was done yesterday so this is how we can update our code with the remote repository even though we create our repository first in our local system next thing is even developer to also want to work on this code then how can he get this code it is quite simple why because once it is available over here he just need to clone it in case he is doing it at first time now we can use ssh link or https link why because we have keys as well as we have passwords so we don't have any issue so i am using ssh link only clear the screen and i am already in the test repo repository i don't want to clone my another repository inside this repository so come out git clone and repository name okay so i am cloning the repository with ssh link and we should able to clone it successfully so this is how we can work collaboratively by using github that's all for this section in next section we are going to do similar kind of activity but we'll see as a developer perspective how can we create a project and push changes to the remote repository that is what we are going to do thanks for watching and see you there hello folks welcome back in this lecture we are going to see how a developer set up his system and how does he push his code onto github account this is developer one system assume that developer one is working on java project if that is the case we'll see what tools he has installed and how does he create a project i'm just quickly going through with the list of the applications which he has installed that is apache maven so this is a build tool which we can use for the java development maybe in the later point of our training where i am discussing about maven jenkins there you can see the advantages of maven but for time being just thinks that they install one build tool next thing is eclipse eclipse is a ide ide stands for interactive development terminal in the market there are lot of ides are available java developers they mostly go with the eclipse if you are developer writing dotnet code he may go with the visual studio if he is a python pycharm like that there are lot of ides depends upon the developer convenient they use that ide but as i said most of the cases java developers use eclipse then we have tomcat tomcat 9 we have installed why because once the code is developed i would like to test it whether code is working fine or not so this testing might be doing at 
local system level but i will get some confident that my code is working before pushing it into the github account so these are the commonly installed packages in case if you are a java developer now let's see how developers write the code just think that i am a java developer for time being and i am writing java code for that i need to open my ide so this is eclipse ide and you need not to do all this activity i am just showing for better understanding how developers usually do their activities so this is workspace nothing but where do you want to store your files i want to store my files under c drive projects and workspace okay so i will open new explorer so this is new explorer you can just see we have workspace over here right we are going to keep our project information over here so let it be i'm just going to drag a little bit so that you can see once we are creating over here it will get update over here and launch it okay so this is default landing page of our eclipse ide just we can close this one and i have already created a hello world project sometime back so it is displaying over here i can remove this one because we are not using at this moment delete project content on the disk okay we have deleted even this project also i am deleting so now i would like to create a new project for that one i can go to file and a new project and here i can choose the projects if you have already used projects it will be propagating over here you can choose but let's choose the project and here you can search for what kind of project you want to create in our case we are creating a maven project okay this is the maven project i'm just selecting it and next this all are default let it be and here we need to select an archetype nothing but a template which you want to use so whenever we use this template it automatically creates some default directory structure in the development environment that is the advantages of using ides but you don't need to know all this stuff until if you are developing some code so i'm quickly searching for web app so this is the web app archetype i have selected and next and here we need to give the maven project information this is group id artifact id version and package this information we must provide while creating a maven project okay you can understand all this stuff if you are a developer or while we were discussing about the maven project so for time being i'm just giving archetype as a veloxi technologies demo okay next finish that's it so now what i can say that we have created a new project the new project name is veloxi demo and if i explore you can see it created multiple directories and files so because we have used ide even i don't know how to write the java code but this is how they create because it is a template which we are using it all right same thing you can see under your workspace okay this is what we were talking right earlier there were no veloxi demo if i open this one you can see same files are there now i can say that this is my project and i would like to share this project with other developers then what we can do now we need to initialize this folder as a repository and we need to share this with other developers i hope it might not visible properly but just understand the concept how the developers create their projects now i can say that i have created my project and uh, even developer to also want to work on this project then what i can do i need to push this code onto github account now you know right how we can convert this one into the git repository and how can we push let's do that quickly now i am taking git bash over here so that i can initialize the repository and push this code onto our github so let me increase font size and the window size pwd i am under my workspace and veloxi technologies demo and if i check git currently sorry git status okay it doesn't work why because we haven't initialized this repository as a git repository so for that we need to do git init dot okay so we have initialized this one as a repository and you can see now dot git directory has been created and if i open dot git slash config so far it is not associated with any remote repository whatever changes i am going to do those changes are available in my local system only 
I cannot able to share with others. If I want to share with others, of course, I need to push this code onto GitHub account. Now let's see the status now. Okay, there are multiple files under directories which are at working directory area. I would like to add those to staging area. For that, we need to add it as a git add dot. So now the changes are there in the staging area. Now I would like to push, sorry, commit these changes into my local repository. So initial commit of Velocity Technologies demo project. Okay, so I have done, I have done my commits in my local system. Now if I check git log, we can see one commit is there and it is done by this author. If I check git status now, there is no files. My directory is clean. I mean to say my repository is clean. All changes are updated in my local repository. Now I would like to push these changes to remote repository. For that, we need to create a remote repository. So let's go back to our GitHub account and we can create a new repository. And a new repository name, Velaxi Technologies demo I am giving. And it is a public repository. And if I initialize readme file, it is going to create one more commit. Why? Because the initial commit it is going to take and it creates a readme file. I don't want to do that one. That's the reason I am just creating a repository. So that without commits, a repository get created. And I have done all these steps. Now I just need to add my remote repository to my local repository. So just execute this one. Now if I check git status, git log. Okay. So this commit we need to do still we haven't committed our changes over here. We just added our remote repository. And uh, I can just see git config. Okay, now it is updated. Now let me push my changes. Git push origin master. But usually the best practice is whenever you are pushing your changes, just execute git pull command. Anyway, there is no any commits, but it is a best practice to do this activity. Okay, it is saying that you need to give the remote uh, repository name and branch because this is the first time we are doing and it is untracking. So doing this one is best practice or else we need to set up our upstream by using this one. Let me set up my upstream by using this one. Nothing but our local which branch is associated with which remote branch. That is the uh, meaning. So I am setting it up. Okay, it is already associated with master. So nothing to do. We just need to use git push minus u origin master or else git push origin master. Okay, either way will work. Let me try to execute this one. Okay, we have committed our changes to the remote repository. Now let me refresh it over here. And we can see the code which we have created in our developer system. Now other developers also can able to take this code and start developing or start updating the same code. This is how collaboratively we can work on same project. Okay, that's all for this lecture and see you in the next lecture. Hello folks, welcome back. In this lecture, we are going to talk about git commits. So far, we have seen how we can commit our changes by using git. But going forward, we are going to see how can we do commits from the GitHub. And also comparing the git commits, who has done which changes, who introduced a each file and when they have introduced. So these kind of things, we are going to check it out from the git as well as GitHub. So first we'll start understanding about commits on our git. Anyway, we have already seen how the commits are looks like and how to understand commits. But in this section, I'm going to explain one more time. Then we'll see how we can check same thing on GitHub as well. GitHub nothing but in our remote repository. Let's jump into our project. So this is our project repository. Here we are creating all our repositories and I have opened git bash over here. If I check PWD, it is current working directory that is C projects. We are in the same directory. Okay, C project. Next thing, I am going inside to a project called Docker. This repository I have created to share Docker related information, but I have done multiple commits on this one. So I thought it could be a best example. How can you take this repository on your system? We are going to talk that one in the later point of sessions. 
but let's see how we can understand about commits but we can understand about commits if we have more commits that's the reason i'm taking this repository let me and if i check pwd i am inside my git docker sorry docker repository and if i do ls there are multiple directories and files within this repository and whether it is a repository or not just if you go inside to your docker you can see dot git over here it means that it is a repository even you can just check git status over here so you can see that this command is working means it is a git repository now we'll find out the what and all commits we have done on this repository before that if you check on master branch your branch is up to date with the origin master which means that all local commits has been updated in the remote repository i will go onto my github repository as well so here we have a repository called docker so this is the repository we are talking about it okay anyway so i have committed it six days before as a remedy and we are going to talk about these commits in the next lecture but so far we'll talk about over here only now if i check git log okay 29 commits we have seen same commits you can see over here okay so this is the latest commit and the latest but one like this we have so many commits over here okay and if you see the name this is initially updated by arsr319 okay that was the my name i have given and you can see this is a random email id which means that i have updated it from the github account itself not from the git nothing but i haven't created files over here maybe i have created repository directly over there and updated that might have done next if i go up and here if you see shankar and uh, the email id which is associated with that email id okay and uh, if i scroll up again ravdi and uh, this is the again from the github i have updated like this multiple uh, contributors has been added their changes to this repository i can say so far we have seen three right and this is again shankar nothing but previous guy only like this you can see lot of commits and also who has done that commit and when it when it was done and what is the commit information so all this information is appeared over here now we need to understand so now we need to understand what is head head always represents to the content which is available in our repository so these files are related to the latest commit right so this commit so our head is representing to the latest commit and the files whatever is available over here those are belongs to this commit and uh, i can switch to the previous commits as well whenever i go to previous commits my head also going to point to the previous commits and also i can see the content is going to the previous versions okay nothing but whatever updates i have done in this commit that commit changes are going to disappear so for now just think that head is always represents to the content which we are using in our repository now we can compare our latest commit with the previous commit we have already discussed about that command that is git diff right sorry let me quit out of it and git let me do git log again because i need to take the latest two commits so quit so git diff so this is the command to compare two different commits so if i check for this commits so here i can take a complete commit id or else first seven digits also enough or else if i take more than first seven digits also fine okay i can take this first commit and this is the second commit if i compare these two you can find what are the new changes we have introduced in this latest commit if you see here triple minus a stands for it is the latest file and whatever line starts with minus it represents to the latest commit nothing but these lines are newly added into the latest file and plus nothing but it was there in the previous commit now it is not there it is not there in the current commit and this is as it is nothing but there is no change on these lines again here we have added this line and in earlier it was there and now these two lines are same at the same time these two lines are newly added and this line was deleted okay so this is how we can find out or we can use git diff command to identify what changes are there here whatever is there in the red color it represents to the latest commit changes whatever appears in the green color those represents to the lines which were there in the previous commit and not available in the latest commit if it is in white color which represents that there is no change in these lines 
okay that is how we can compare the changes now let me quit now we are going to compare same changes in the other way okay that i am going to show you that is git log right so if i execute git log this is the latest commit and uh, head is pointing to this one most of the cases you can see head is pointing to the latest commit so i can do the comparison with the git diff head head minus one it is going to be head minus one this is head minus two head minus three like that we can compare now i would like to compare this one and this one first i will do comparison of this one and this one then i will do the first commit sorry latest commit and uh, with previous with previous to previous commit okay let's try that one if i do git diff head head minus one okay if i do this one i should able to see the same content which we have seen in the previous but here we should not use minus one here we need to use tilde minus one okay please remember that one i just mentioned minus one so it is easy for us to remember but it is not minus tilde one which represents that previous commit now you can see whatever output we have seen in our previous commit same thing we are able to see let me quit of this and again i am going to do head head minus 2 okay now you can see so this is the change we could see which means that in previous to previous commit there was no file called jenkins docker file that is the reason it is saying dev null nothing but i couldn't find this commit sorry i couldn't find this file in my previous commit so that is how git diff will work and one more time i am going to execute that is clear git git log now i would like to compare this one with this one okay not with the latest commit previous to previous commit with the sorry five commits before with that commit i am going to compare for that i just need to quit and this is the commit i would like to test so git diff okay this commit i am going to give this one i can give this one or else i can give the head minus two right this is head minus one this is head minus two with the head minus four that's also works if you see the changes we have changed the sent os image file so whatever newly introduced in this commit those are in the red color whatever removed from this commit those are in the green color okay like this we have done many changes on this file okay so this is how we can compare as i said another way to compare is head minus two right head instead of minus we need to use tilde head minus two with the head minus four okay head tilde four sorry so you can see same changes are displaying over here right so that is how git diff works or helps us to find out the differences between the two commits that's all for this lecture and see you in the next lecture. Hello folks, welcome back. In a previous lecture, we have seen how git diff helps us to understand what are the differences between the two commits. In this lecture, we are going to see how can I identify what changes I have pushed in the specific commit. I don't want to compare two different commits. I just want to see what are the changes I have done in the specific commit. In that case, we can use a command called git show. Okay, this is the command which helps us to identify what are the changes we have pushed through a commit. Before that one, we need to find out the git sha code, that is git log. This helps us to identify the git sha code. So we were talking about head means which is representing to the latest commit. And origin master, I didn't talk about this one, which means that it is a remote repository. Even remote repository also mapping to the same commit. Remote repository, nothing but github.com. There, whatever repository we have, that is also pointing to the same repository. Sorry, same commit. All right, now I want to execute git show command. For that, git show, I'm going to take the latest commit and uh, this is the SHA code. So I'm listing out the latest commit SHA code. Now you can see what and all changes I have introduced in this commit and what I have removed. It means that we have removed this line and these are the new changes we introduced and we didn't touch this one and we removed this one. We added this one like this. Whatever changes we have done in the latest commit, all those are representing over here. Similar way we can do again git show instead of using sha code i can just give the head as well 
okay git show head this is also going to give the same output why because head also representing to the same commit now i would like to know what are the changes i have pushed previous to previous commit if that is the case i can do git log and find out the previous to previous commit this is the previous commit okay so git show this is the previous to previous commit okay and uh, these are the changes i have introduced sorry so here i have merged one branch with the another branch nothing but i have done some additional commits in the remote repository i, I might have pulled that one that is the reason it is showing okay same thing i can list out by using head minus two head minus two nothing but latest one is head minus one means previous minus two means previous to previous so head tilde two it is also going to display the same commit okay so this is how we can list out the changes what we have done in our previous commits now i would like to see how many people has changed code in my particular file i don't want to see changes what are done in your file now i would like to see how many people has worked on that file why do we want to see assume that you have written a working application but after few commits it got corrupted you don't know who has done who has introduced those bugs now you would like to see who has done the commits for that you can just use the git log but you want to see in a specific file who has done that particular change in this case we can use a command called git annotate on the desired file let's take that i want to find out who has changed my jenkins docker file okay let's take the jenkins docker file so we can use git annotate okay git annotate followed by the file if i give this command it is going to list out who has created each line of this file if i take the first line okay in this file let me display that file as well so that you can understand clearly you can see this is the first line second line third line so like that multiple lines are there so first line from sent os so this is the first line who has introduced that is introduced by shankar and with this commit id and you can see one commit these all are same commit these lines are added in the same commit and this is another commit and this is uh, also same commit and this is again first commit like this you can see each line and who has done these changes and when they have introduced these changes and what is the commit id assume that i am finding bug over here somebody added this line then i can easily identify that okay who is updated this line so this guy has recently updated this line so this is causing for the issue we can ask why he has introduced this line and what is the motto behind that this is how we can identify who has introduced a bug in your file easily if you know where exactly the bug is so this is but if you want to identify with the git log command who has done this change then we need to go to the each commit and check out what files he has modified whether this particular file is there in his commit or not okay that is difficult right instead of that one we can use the git annotate command which helps better all right that's all for this lecture in next lecture we are going to understand how the commits appear in the github account thanks for watching and see you there hello folks welcome back in previous lectures we have seen how we can identify commits on git in this lecture we are going to explore about the github and how can we identify commits and who has done the changes and also what changes are introduced in each commit let's go and check it out so this is the github repository which i am representing in our git so same repository i am taking that is ravidi and docker so it is updated six days ago and total 29 commits are there let's go and see those commits so these are the commits which are done on this repository and also we could able to list out these commits with the git log command whatever commits we see in the git log command same commits are appearing over here and if you see this is the latest commit right and uh, sha code if you see this is the first seven digits okay one seven dc so if i go to my git and if i check for that okay i'm under docker and git log you can see it is also double seven dc for 3d same thing you can see over here so this is the latest commit and if you want to see what are the changes you have introduced in this commit we can check out with the git show command over here right here i want to see what changes i have introduced i can do the git show 
same way you can list out the changes what you have done on this commit by clicking on this one okay so this tells what changes you have introduced in this commit it is like a git show command showing one changed file nothing but we have changed on only one file with 11 additions and three deletions and you can see over here clearly minus and in which is in the red color represents that we have deleted this line and what is green and plus symbol it represents to that we have added these lines okay which are there in the white color which means that we don't change anything over here this is how we can see the changes which we have done in that specific commit let me go back to the another commit so code and again commits so if we go to the previous commits okay i'm going with the commit which was done on august 21st okay if I go and check it out over here, you can see what changes you have done. Again, you have changed only one file and there was a typo and uh, I have updated that typo. So this is how we can check our changes on the GitHub. So that is like a git show command. So there is no equivalent command for the git diff in the GitHub because you just see the content what is there in the latest commit. It will give the fair knowledge that what changes you have done compared with the previous commit. Now you want to use the previous commit code nothing but this is the commit i have done on september 7th i would like to use this code not the latest code which i have done in the latest code i have updated my jenkins file so i don't want that changes if that is the case i can just click over here so what will happen it will go to my previous version it will go to my previous version and i have updated jenkins docker file right so this was updated you you can see here this is the previous one because this bin i have removed and this one also i have removed and i have set up the jenkins installation steps okay so that is how you can go back to the previous commit if you see here it is showing the previous commit id usually it should showcase as a master so master nothing but the latest commit and if you see something like this it means that you gone to the some of the previous commits okay and by the way same thing you can do from the git as well that is by changing your git checkout okay so git checkout and your commit id if you do you are going to the previous commit so git checkout and uh, commit id i am giving before giving this one i will just display the file that is this is what we have changed and you can see it starts with the sent OS, but whereas if I go to previous one, it is starting with some other line. So git checkout. Okay, so we have switched. And cat, if I do Jenkins Docker file, you can see it is started with the from Jenkins latest. How we have switched in our GitHub. Okay, so in GitHub also we have switched. But if I want to go back to master, now you can see your latest commit so master represents to the latest commit so this is how we can switch into other commit but that we are going to talk in the separate lecture so this is how we can see the changes now how we have seen each line who has updated in a file by using git annotate command same thing we can do from here as well for that i am going inside to docker volumes here we have one file yeah docker volumes.md i am taking this file okay so now i would like to know who has done changes to each line of this code then we can go with the option called blame whenever we go with the blame it will tell you that each line of code in this particular file who has modified you can see here this is the commit id updated docker volume and there was a one addition and one deletion of a line okay so in this commit and this was done in that commit okay if you see this number means there are a previous changes to the same line nothing but other people are i might be updated the same line multiple times then only you will see this one. if you don't see this kind of box over here which means that we haven't changed this line only we have updated once that is while creating this file only once we have updated after that there is no change to this particular line okay and this was updated with this commit like this there are different commits and this is the guy who has committed that is revdy okay so revdy has been updated the same file multiple times and there are multiple commits on this file so this is how we can check who has done the changes and what is the commit id when he has updated this file now i would like to see what was there previous to this one then i can just click over here 
so you can see earlier it was docker volumes was was there from docker volumes to i have updated to manage data in docker that i have done so this was the initial line so this line i have updated with the latest data that is manage data in docker okay i just clicked on the back buttons to go back to the previous so this is how you can do and you want to see what and all other changes i have introduced with this one then you can just click on this commit it takes to the our commit you can see here clearly you can understand there was a two changes one addition and one deletion so we have deleted docker volumes and added manage docker in the docker nothing but we have done only one change with that commit that is also we just updated this line so this is how we can identify who has done the changes to the file by using github as well this is equivalent to the git annotate command so that's all for this lecture in next lecture we are going to see how can we commit changes on github so far we are committing changes from the git right now we are going to do with the github whenever i say git it means that from our local system github nothing but on the browser hello folks welcome back in this lecture, we are going to see how can we update a file in the GitHub itself. So this is our GitHub repository, Docker I am taking for this example. And here you can see the option, go to a file, add file and code. So as you know, code is the option to clone our repository in the local system. Whereas add a file helps us to create a new file or else upload a file onto GitHub. Now let me create a file first and then we'll see upload your file. Before that one, if you see here we have 29 commits. I'm creating a file over here. So let me give you a readme.md. Okay, I'm creating a readme.md file and I'm saying that this is Docker repository. And MD stands for markdown language and uh, whenever you give hash in the readme file, it takes it as a header. Now let's commit this change. So to commit this change, you have your option over here, preview. Preview nothing but how this file looks like. You can see here, this is a Docker repository. Why? Because I have given hash. Whenever we give hash in the markdown language, it appears as a header. Next, commit a new file. So we are committing a new file and what is the commit ID? Usually we will give git commit minus m and the commit information, right? So same thing we should give over here that is added readme file. Okay. And this is detailed description. If you would like to give, I'm just giving the added readme file only. Next commit directly to the master branch. Yes, I would like to commit on master branch about new branches. We will talk about later and commit new file. So this is how we can commit our changes on GitHub itself. Now you can see it has been updated 15 seconds ago and 30 commits. Earlier it was 29 commits and it has done by the RevD itself because that is the username I have logged into. So this is how we can add our commits and you can see the readme file over here. This is the one and whenever you have a readme.md file that automatically open up in your repository and you can see here readme.md is opened up and what content we have added over here. So this is how we can create a new file. Even we can edit the existing file. Let's take that readme.md file. And I don't want to name it like this as a header. So I can go with the edit option. Here you have a edit option. And uh, I would like to say that. So I have updated this file. Once we have updated, we can go with the preview changes. Or else if you scroll down, you can see this one. Updated Docker file. Updated readme file. Okay, instead of scrolling down, you can just click on click on preview changes so that it will tell you that what changes we are doing and the same commit information we can give all right so let's commit it out so this is how we can do commits on our git repository again if i go back to my docker repository this time 31 commits so apart from this even we can add a file i'm just uploading a file and i can drag and drop that file over here or else I can choose the file from here. So I'm choosing the option to choose your file. Now I'm choosing VI commands. Let me take it up. And you can see it is uploading and this has been updated and added VI commands. Okay. So like this, we can upload files from the GitHub as well. Now we can see the VI commands file. 
yes va commands.txt it is it is updated 15 seconds ago okay so this is how we can update our changes on the github repository okay now if i go to my laptop nothing but developer one system and pwd i'm in the docker but if you see we have done few other commits on the github itself those commits are not yet updated over here why because we have added readme file and uh, va commands file as well so these are not yet available over here so if we want to update something on this repository nothing but docker repository then we must pull the latest code from the github why because we have done some additional changes if we don't pull that repository we don't get the latest changes and uh, whenever we are committing our changes then we will face an issue so for that git pull i am doing Okay, you can see here va commands.txt and readme.md file has been added. Okay, now if I check, you can see readme.md and va commands.txt. But there is a space, that's the reason it came in the quotes. And in the Docker repository, va commands are not necessary. So now I am going to remove this one git rm. I'm just removing it. Git status. And if I do ls, there is no file called vi. Okay, now I need to commit it git commit. Okay, before committing, if I check git log, so if we see here, we have latest commits what we have done in our GitHub. Now I am removing this file. So quit git status once again. So git add dot git add dot. Anyway, it is already available in the git commit minus m. Okay. we have committed in our local commit still if you go here and refresh you cannot see the latest change till 32 commits are there and vi file is still there now let's commit it git push origin master okay all right so we have pushed our changes and if i go and check it out now we could be able to see 33 commits so this is how we can do the changes from the github but one last thing i would like to show you that is git log if you see and you can see here who has committed this change this is shankar and whenever you go to the previous commit it has done from the github and we got a random email id with the ravdi so this is how it works thanks for watching and see you in the next lecture Hello folks, welcome back. In this section, we are going to talk about branches and why do we need branches and what are the branching strategies we can use to work efficiently with our code. Knowingly or unknowingly, we have already started working with our branches. Whenever we do any commits on our repositories, we might have seen that a branch called master is updating, right? So by default, whenever we create a repository, it creates a branch called master and all our commits are go and sit on the master branch master branch is a default branch which comes whenever we create a repository apart from master branch we can create our own branches and after creating our own branches we can remove the master branch as well it is not mandatory that you should maintain master branch it is just a default branch which comes while creating our repository but most of the cases, if we are practicing, we usually do on our master branch itself. So now, what are the advantages of using branches? Before talking about branches more deeper, let's understand how DevOps flow works. Then we can come back to the branches so that you can understand better. This is the big picture of DevOps, okay? a typical DevOps workflow, where we have source code management system, nothing but SCM. I can replace this one with GitHub as well, but uh, let me keep it as a generic as a SCM. Now our code is available over here. Whenever our code is available over here in the DevOps workflow, the code can be pulled by a build tool and it builds the code and also it do the unit testing, code quality analysis, code security analysis, all this testing and analysis it do to make sure that our code is following code standards or we are writing better code for this application. Once this is done, if our build is successful, it is going to create artifacts. Artifacts nothing but the outcome of our code compilation. If it is a Java code, we build 
where are jar files as a outcome file if it is a .NET we get .exe files like that what kind of code you are building the outcome of the artifacts may vary once we got artifactories we need to deploy it on the server to deploy it on the server we can use deployment tools this is the typical workflow which happens in the devops now to understand better we will just avoid all this and we'll talk about only SEM and server and this is already in place and everything is working fine. If that is the case, this is my development system where I want to push my code onto the GitHub. Okay, in GitHub we have master branch. Now I would like to push my code over here. Whatever code we are pushing over here, it get built and test and uh, generate artifacts and get deployed into the server that is the workflow it is happening just assume that it is already in place now i am building my code and i have done my first commit on my master branch whenever i do my first commit on my branch i don't know whether this code is working fine or not but as a devops workflow it takes that code and build test and deploy it on the server Assume that this code is working fine and I have deployed application is working fine. Okay. Thanks for the DevOps process which made my process very easy. Now again I would like to do some changes to my code. Why? Because this is not complete code. It is a piece of code. Now I come up with new changes. Whenever I pushed my code there is some bug but build is successful and we deployed that application on the server. Now the application which was running fine earlier it may break down due to the latest code whatever i have pushed and this is not one time process we regularly do our commits on the master branch and each time whenever we do our commit we are not sure whether this code is going to work or not on the server then there is no point of taking or deploying each piece of code right that is where branches comes into the picture if we create a new branch and only pushing working code onto that branch and deploying from the new branch is more efficient way of handling right now this is working code now i have pulled this code onto other branch and uh, in this branch i have enabled my devops workflow now whenever i see code on only production branch then only the build and deployment will happen on this system otherwise it won't happen Let's assume that this code is working fine. I have checked in that code into the production branch and it get deployed over here. My application is working fine. Now next code, this is not working. So I'm not pushing onto production branch. This is also not working. Now this code is working. Now I'm going to pull or check in that code onto the production system and replace the old application with the new application. Again, this time also my server is up and running. Why? Because previous code was working and this code is also working. Next, again, we have enhanced our application with a few more features and it is also working. Then I can check in that code onto production branch and replace the existing application. In this case, your system is always up and running and your customers may not face any problem. Moreover, they can see the latest features on the application without any problem. That is what we are expecting, right? In this case, if I am only using master branch, each and every deployment, I need to worry whether my code is working or not. Whenever I create another branch and if I am deploying from this branch, I can confidently say that this is working code. That is how branches helps us to avoid problematic code get deployed onto the systems. Now, you may ask that how do we know this code is working fine or not? That I am going to explain in the next video where we talk about branching strategies. Thanks for watching and see you there. Hello guys. In previous lecture we have discussed about why do we need branches. In this lecture we are going to see one of the branching strategy. In this method we are having development system and we have a test branch, quality and production branches. At the same time, we have test server, QA and production systems. Let's assume that our production system is going to be used by end users or our clients. So before deploying any code onto the production, we need to make sure that that code is working. For that, we are going to take advantage of test and QA branches. Let's assume that I am developing one application, some piece of code is ready and I have tested that one on my local system. 
nothing but on my laptop it is working fine but i don't have any confident or guarantee that it is going to work on production as well if that is the case it doesn't make sense to push our code onto production branch directly and get deployed onto the production system right here we can push our code onto test branch first and whatever code we got over here we can build and deploy it on the test system now if this code is not working on the test system no problem test system is for testing purpose if this code is not working i can understand that where are the bugs and i can fi fix those bugs again i can push that code onto the test branch now we have deployed this code as well but this also not working again we are going to enhance the code and push that code onto the test branch now whatever code we have pushed we have deployed it but this code is working fine which means that whatever features i thought to enable those features are working fine in this application which is running on test system i will name it as a version 1 way because this is working code and i can use this one in the quality and production system but if i want to deploy it on quality system the code should be available over here similar way if i want to deploy it on production system the code should be available over here now i can pull this code onto the qa branch and from here i am going to deploy it on the qa system this is just make sure that this version code is working fine once again so even if it is working fine on qa system then we move on to the production system but meantime developers are still continue to enhance the code right why because they want to introduce few more features so they have done one more update to the code but this code is not working one more update and this code also not working meantime in the back end we can still use the version 1 right so i can deploy the version 1 as a release one on my production system now production system is running with the release one which has limited features developers are still continue to enhance the code to come up with the new features whenever they find that all new features are introduced and uh, working fine they will name it as a new version now they have named it as a v2 and they still continue to work to release the new features okay so now v2 and v3 is there but our qa and production systems are still at v1 now we can take the version 2 to deploy it on the quality system now our application has been updated on the quality system from the version 1 to version 2 and uh, version 2 i don't want to deploy because those services may not be helpful for our customers much then i can wait for next version which they come up with few more features like this developers are continue to enhance the application and this workflow nothing but taking the code from the test branch to quality system from quality to production this process still continue here branch names may change nothing but instead of test we may use int instead of qa we may use preprod like this the branch names may change but the strategy is same maybe instead of using three branches we can use two branches or four branches like this we can change it okay so this is one of the branching strategy i am going to talk about one more branching strategy in the later point of this section that's all for this lecture in next lecture we are going to make our hands dirty hello folks welcome back in previous lecture we have talked about git branching strategies right in this lecture we are going to make use of those first let's start with creating branches as you know this is our repository demo repo which we have created some time back and we have three files and we have done three commits so far if i go to commits you can see these are the commits which we have done and also if you see the branch we have done all these changes on master branch now let's assume that my code is working fine and i have deployed this code on my system and it is working fine now i would like to introduce few more features to my application but if i am modifying this code after my changes this code may or may not work of course you can go back to the previous version that is the advantages of git right but you are not only the guy who is working on this code right with you few other people are working on same branch it create lot of confusion and it take lot of time to understand what changes you need to revert to go back to the previous version rather than that one we can use git branches that is where you can create branches over here okay so here if i look for test there is no test branch but we can create a test branch you can see here create a branch called test from master if we do this one what will happen it is going to create one more branch with the same code whatever is there in the master 
Now it's like a snapshot which you got it as a test. If I do some changes on test, it won't affect it on the master branch. It won't affect it on the master branch. So let me go back to again my test branch and I will create a file. I'm just adding a new file. Okay, create a file and file 5 I'm giving and content this is this is file 5 file 5 okay and i'm reviewing these changes and commit these changes now i have done one more commit on my test branch and you can see here four commits are there on my test branch and this is the latest commit which we have done and uh, you can see file 5 over here whereas if i go back to my master branch you cannot see file 5 why because you have done that change to your test branch not on the master branch so this is how you can create a new branch and you can commit your changes on new branch now you would like to add those changes onto master branch assume that your test branch nothing but this branch code you have deployed it on test system it is working fine now you would like to push this code onto the master branch that is where pull request comes into the picture but I am just parking this option for later point of time. We will do that one later. But by this time, hopefully you might understand that the branches is nothing but a snapshot of your working code. Then you can do your changes and test your changes whether those are working fine or not. If it is working, we are going to merge those changes with the main branch. Here main branch nothing but master branch. That is how we can work. But usually we don't work from the GUI. We need to work on the CLI. Nothing but in your git CLI repository. In next lecture we are going to see how we can do similar activity from git itself. Thanks for watching and see you there. Hi guys. In previous lecture we have seen how to create a branch from GitHub account, right? So we have created a branch called a test and we have done a commit, right? So you can see file 5 is there. Now in this lecture, we are going to create a test branch from our git CLI itself. For that, I am going to delete this branch. To delete your branches, you just need to go here, branches, and we can go and delete this branch if it is necessary. So we have deleted this branch and if I go over here again, this time we have only one branch that is master with three commits. Why? Because whatever commits we have done on our test branch, we haven't merged with our master branch. Now let's take the same repository in our local system. So here we have a repository called demo repo. If I go here, okay, same content. Let me open git bash over here. Now you can see we have only three files that is file two, file three, file four. And same thing you can check it out over here. So we have three commits in our local system like on our remote repository and head is representing to the master branch even origin master nothing but remote branch also we have three commits. Now I would like to list out how many branches I have. You can just do git branch command which will show you that how many branches you have. We have only one branch that is master and hash trick nothing but it is the active branch means you are working on master branch and the same thing you can see over here now to create new branch we can use a command called git branch test okay this is the command to create a new branch whenever we execute this command it is going to create a new branch and if i check git branch you can see two branches are there and if i do git log you can see one more pointer called test is representing to the same commit okay this is the latest commit and same thing it is mapping to understand more better let me show you a document git branches if i check for git branches branch in a nutshell and if we scroll down just to see this diagram here assume that we have done three commits in our master branch okay and latest commit is this one whenever we say this is latest commit and we are working on this commit our head is represents to this one and you can still go back to your previous versions that we are going to talk in later sessions but for now just to understand that you can point head to your previous commits as well how we can do i will quickly show you that is git checkout okay assume that i want to 
map my head to this commit means i want to see what is there in this commit if we don't have this commit okay we have only two commits what was the content was there for that we just need to do git checkout this one so that your head is going to point to this particular commit let me see now you can see from master you have switched to your uh, previous commit and if i do git log we have two commits at this moment and if i see the files okay we have file 1 file 2.txt file 3 and file 4 but in latest commit we don't have file 1 and also file 2.txt we have renamed it as it file 2 right so that is how we can switch our head to our previous commits but we are going to talk about this one later point of time i want to go back to our previous state in that case we can use git switch minus nothing but go back to that one and if i do git log we back to our latest commit and head is representing to the latest commit with master and test okay now i would like to add few changes to this code so instead of doing those changes on master branch i am going to do in the test branch for that i would like to switch to the test branch how we have switched from one commit to another commit by using git checkout similar way we can switch from one branch to another branch so to switch on to another branch we can use command called git checkout test now you can see switch to branch test and if i do git log again this time also still we have three commits but your head is mapping to test why because you are working on test branch at this moment and your master is inactive branch means it is sitting idle at this moment whatever files i am going to create or whatever changes i am doing at this moment those are tracked under only test branch whenever i go back to the master branch those changes we cannot able to see how we can do that one we are going to see in the next lecture thanks for watching and see you there hello friends in this lecture i am going to create a new file in the test branch as well as master branch Whenever we are shifting our branches, then you can see the variation in the GUI as well. At this moment, I am on my test branch. You can check out that by using git git branch. Okay, you can see your hashtag is representing to the test branch. Now, I would like to create one new file on my test branch only. So, vi file 1 I am creating. Okay, this is file 1. Okay, so for file 1 is not there. And uh, save this file. Okay, we have created a file called file1 and git log if you see still we haven't committed this one so we could see only three commits. Now I am committing this so git add dot git commit minus m added file1. Okay, so we have committed our changes now if I check git log you can see we have test branch which is representing to the latest commit even head also why because on test we are at the latest commit but whereas your master and origin master and origin head those all are at the previous version why because these changes are not yet added to the master branch how we can add these changes onto master branch that we can see in the later sessions but you can see file one has been created over here as well now if i go back to my master branch nothing but previous commit you can see that this file is going to disappear over here so git checkout master i am going back to my master branch and you can see file one is not there why because we have done or we have added our file one to test branch and also you can see git status you can see only sorry git log okay you can see only three commits even you cannot see the test branch commit why because you are still at the third commit you cannot able to display the fourth commit so now assume that your master branch code is working fine in this case i am not disturbing my master branch code why because i am doing my changes on test branch once i have tested over there if everything is fine then only i am going to push it onto the master branch that's how it works to understand this concept a little more better i am going to show you one document git branches if i search you can see branches in nutshell and if i scroll down now here what we have done we have created a new branch whenever we create a new branch it is also representing to the same commit where your master branch is representing after that 
if you still see your head is pointing to the master branch now i would like to point this head to the testing branch you, which means that you are working on testing branch for that you can execute a command called git checkout whenever you do git checkout you will switch on to the testing branch and your head also representing to where you are working okay then the head is going to represent over here and uh, I have done one additional commit on testing branch, right? Something like this. Your master branch is still here and we have done one additional commit only on testing branch. Again, if I go back to my master branch, your head is representing to the previous commit so that you cannot able to see this commit. Now, even I can do my own commit on master branch. If I do my own commit on my master branch, it gets splitted. Nothing but it will be creating one more branch. Yeah, something like this. So you can see here, if I do one more commit, this commit and this commit both are differ, but these two have the previous commit as a same commit. Now I would like to add these two commits changes, then we can use a merge command. In case if you have two branches and both are having two different commits, if you would like to add those changes, then we can use git merge. For now, our repository is looks like something, which means we have done one commit on testing and we have shifted to our master branch in master branch we could not able to see the latest commit now i am going to do one commit on my master branch as well for that i am going to create a file called git file 5 okay before creating i will open this one vi file 5 i am creating and this is file 5 all right so we have created one file and git status if i check it is not yet added to our local repository. I am adding it git commit minus m added file file 5. Okay. So we have done one commit on our master branch as well. If I check git log, you can see here we have four commits where our master is ahead with one additional commit comparatively origin master. But still we cannot able to see the test branch because it is another diversification okay something like this something like this two are two different if i want to add these changes to my master branch only i can use git merge to do that activity now if i do git status okay you can see your origin master is behind by one commit nothing but local system we have one extra commit only on master branch we are talking we are not talking about the test branch so i would like to commit these changes if I do git push origin master, which means that I am pushing only my changes of the master branch, not the test branch commits. Okay, let's see what will happen. Okay, our changes has been pushed onto the master branch on the remote repository. And if I refresh it, you can see four commits you have and still you have master branch. You cannot see the test branch why because test branch is available only local and you haven't pushed your test branch changes onto master branch if i want to push my test branch changes also onto master then git push origin test i need to give here i am giving master right instead of master i need to give test this time your test branch is get created over here and those changes are updated into the your repository now you can see here your test branch has been created and if i switch to the test branch okay you can see file 1 file 2 file 3 file 4 is there four commits where if i switch onto the master branch file 2 file 3 file 4 and file 5 is there so file 5 is available only on master branch not file 1 similar way file 1 is available only on test branch not in master so this is how we can add our changes only to the specific branch so that other code cannot get disturbed. That's all for this lecture. In next lecture, we are going to talk about git merge. Hello folks, welcome back. In previous lecture, we have created a branch and we have added our own files to branches, right? In this lecture, we are going to merge those two branches. We have a file file on master branch at the same time git checkout test we have file one on test branch now i would like to add my file one onto master branch why because master branch is like a production branch 
and I have tested my test branch code, everything is working fine, I would like to add that one. In this case, we are going to use a command called git merge. But while using git merge command, you need to be in the destination branch. Nothing but on which branch you would like to commit your changes. In this case, I would like to merge my changes onto master branch, right? So I need to be on master branch. For that, git git checkout master and now I need to execute git merge test. Whenever I do git merge test, whatever changes we have done on test branch, those get committed into the master branch. So in test branch, we have file one, we could able to see file one on master branch. But before executing, let me display over here as well. So git merge test. You can see here, merge branch test onto the master. Yes, I want to do that one. And WQ. Now you can see one file has been changed and one in section, nothing but in that file one line is there. Now if I do git log, you can see. So this is our test branch. You can see here added file one. Next, this is our master branch commit. We have added file 5, right? On top of that one, whenever we merge, even merge also get added as a commit. That is the reason your head is over here, where your origin master is still at the add file 5. Now, you can see under master file 1 to file 5, all files are there. Even I can check it out over here. Now, I can do same changes onto remote repository. Before doing that one, if I do git status, we should be ahead by two commits. Why? Because one is from this one, one is this one, another one is the merge what we have done. So we are going to do these changes onto remote repository. So git push origin master. Okay, I'm doing or I'm committing these changes onto master branch. So these commits are updated. If I go to my master branch now. So here so far, I'm on test branch, I'm shifting onto master branch. We could able to see latest six commits and if I open it up, you can see merge branch test into master, added file 5, added file 1. Okay, even test branch commit also appeared over here. So this is how we can update our code onto the master branch. That's all for this lecture and see you in the next lecture. Hello friends, welcome back. In previous lecture, we have seen how can we merge changes from one branch to another branch. In this lecture, we are going to see merge conflicts. First of all, let's understand what is merge conflict. Whenever we are trying to merge our code from one branch to another branch, if there is some conflicts, then the merge conflict will happen on Git. In this case, both the developers are trying to update the same code or while I was thinking to do some updates, if somebody do the changes on same line, then the merge conflicts happens. Let's see this one with practical. For that one, we need two developers. Now I'm going to use developer2 as well to create merge conflict. Then we'll see how we can resolve it. This is my local system. Let's assume that developer1 is working over here. At this moment, we have five files and each file has some content. At the same time, we have developer2 which we have created some time back and uh, I'm going to log into this system. So let's take the public IP. There is some changes in the dashboard of AWS console. That's okay. This is public IP. I'm taking public IP. Let's connect to this system. I'm opening my key. EC2 minus user. So I'm logging into my system. This is developer2 system. And let me switch to root user. And if I do here, I have a repository called demo repo. We have updated it some time back. So we need to pull the code if I want to see the latest code. Let me pull the changes. So git pull we need to do. Let's do this one. If you do remember in our previous lectures, we have created one more branch called test as well. Now if I check for git branch, it is showing master. Why? Because if we want to see the additional branch, we need to switch to the test branch. Then only we can see those updates. Let me switch before that. Let me give git log. You can see here head is representing to the master and the test is over here because test branch we just created to 
add only file one and we have committed those changes actually once we have committed our code we can remove the old branch because it is not necessary to keep it right once we have updated with the master branch but anyway let it be now if i want to see code of the git test before that if i do ls i can see all the files where if i switch to test branch git checkout test you can see you have switched to the test and if i do ls i can see only four files why because file 5 is not there in the test branch anyway our objective is to create merge conflicts but before that i am making sure that you can pull all the changes which are done by the other developer onto your system that is the intention now i am switching back to my master branch check out master now let's assume that i am modifying a file 2 let's open file 2 i will write some content on file 2 that is vi file 2 I'm just updating this content to this is file 2 instead of that one I have named it as file 2 okay so I have updated some content in the file 2 now let's do git status okay these changes are there meantime what I will do I am updating the same file as a other user this is my developer one user right so if I do git status okay nothing is there and if i do git log same commits you can see over here and before changing anything i am going to pull my code from my git repository so git git pull if i do there is nothing to pull from the remote repository because it is already up to date now here also as a developer one i am updating file 2 okay sorry i should not update over here I am going to create a new branch from master. I haven't updated anything on file 2. So I am going to create git checkout minus b. So this option is going to help us to create the branch at the same time switch on to the branch. This time I am going to create a branch called dev. So what does it do? It is going to create a branch called dev and we will switch to the dev branch. Otherwise we can do git branch dev so it creates the branch then git checkout dev we will switch on to dev right instead of running two commands we can run one command which creates the dev branch as well as we have shifted or switched from master to dev and if i do git log now okay we have three branches at this moment and we are working on dev branch and master is an inactive branch and even we have the test branch as well okay we can ignore test branch for this example now what i am going to do is if i do i could see same content what is there in the master branch now i am going to update file 2 on dev branch so here what i will do this file name is file 2 okay so as a developer one what i am doing i am just updating the same content of the same file what is updated by the developer 2 what is updated by the developer 2 now if i do wq and if i do file 2 you can see here this file name is file 2 and same thing if i see over here i have named it as a file 2 but actual content what was there earlier so this is our docker demo repository right if you see the content of file 2 okay so actual content was there this is file 2 now developer one has taken this file and updated it as a this file name is file 2 at the same time developer 2 also taken the same code and he has updated this file as a i have named it as a file 2 which means that two developers are updating same file and same line of code now assume that developer 2 has pushed his changes to the remote repository for that he has to add this code to the remote repository right so git status if i do it is not yet added to my local repo so git add to add it to the staging so git status again git commit minus m updated file 2 okay so i have done the local commit now i will push it into the remote repository so git push origin master okay now we have pushed our changes onto remote repository and remote repository is accepts these changes why because why because whatever code is there in the remote repository same code you have pulled into your local system and you have updated so there is no problem with the commits so git log if i do 
so this is the latest commit which we have done even we have pushed into the remote system so there is no problem remote server i mean to say github there is no problem now if i refresh it you can see i have named it as a file 2 which means that developer 2 has updated the file 2 that is the latest commit but as a developer 1 still i am working on file 2 as well now i would like to add this content to my master branch then i will push to the remote repository right that is what i need to do so to merge this code onto the master branch i have to switch to the master branch before that one i should commit these changes onto the dev branch okay without committing these changes onto the dev branch you cannot able to merge the changes so let's add this one so git status if i see we have one modified file on the dev branch so i need to add these changes to the dev branch git add dot git commit minus m file to updated okay so just i'm giving the file to updated as my commit this commit id can be anything or equal to uh, other commit also there is no issue okay so we have committed onto dev branch and if i do git log you can just see our master is here but our dev is ahead with the one extra commit now i would like to add this commit to the master branch to do that one i need to shift on to master branch or i need to check out into master branch right so git check out master so i have shifted on to master branch now i would like to merge my changes but actually whenever you are merging your changes it is always best practice that you need to pull the code onto your local system why because your remote repository may updated by the time so for that one i am going to do git pull okay git pull whenever i do it is going to pull the latest changes from the remote repository but in the latest changes what is there a file 2 has been updated so if i open the file 2 you can see here i have named it as file 2 that is the update we have received but at the same time as a dev branch i have updated same file and i am just switching on to dev branch git checkout dev in dev branch if i see file 2 okay this file name is file 2 is there now i would like to merge this file 2 changes onto this file 2 which is there in the master okay again git checkout master and uh, git merge dev okay what i am doing whatever changes i have done in the dev branch i am trying to commit onto the master branch now what exactly does it happen is whenever we were creating dev branch file to content was something else not this one right so that one i have updated to this one i am still assuming that this master is still having the old content only it is having old content only myself updated the same code so i am trying to push it i am trying to push it now let's see what will happen so i am doing git merge and you can just see auto merge file to conflict it is saying that conflict merge conflict in file 2 it is saying that there is a merge conflict in fi file 2 and auto merge is failed fix conflicts and then commit the result it is saying that there is some problem in the file 2 you need to fix those before committing it so what is the problem just if you go to our history we can understand more clearly so this is our previous commit right so if i open this commit you can clearly understand you can just see earlier the content was this is file 2 but developer 2 has updated this one as a this has named it as a file 2 okay but our dev branch is still thinking that the content of file 2 is this is file 2 only so it is trying to update the this is file 2 but whenever it is trying to update it has seen that there is some change somebody has already changed it or else it has to update with its own commit due to that one it has created a git conflict so hopefully you understand why git conflict happens whenever two developers are trying to update same file and same line of code then merge conflicts happens now how can we resolve merge conflicts it's quite simple because whoever is created that merge conflict they have to sit together and understand that which commits should be going to the git repository those commits they have to do now if i open my file to earlier file to have just i have named it as a file to and if i open this one now you can see the both the lines okay these two lines are there and it is saying that 
it was having i have named it as a file to and you are trying to update this line from the dev branch okay this is the head head nothing but at this moment master branch so now there is merge conflict now we need to edit and sit with the developer to and understand whether do we need this code to make it work or this code to make it work and what is the intention of updating this code and uh, even i have to tell that what is the intention of updating this code that's how they sit together and update the file now i need both the lines then i will just keep both and if i do this one and if i do git log again so now it is not yet committed now we need to commit it so git log if sorry git status git status if i do okay now we have updated file to git add dot git commit minus m resolved okay we are just giving that resolved merge conflicts on file to and uh, if i do git log now you can see one more latest commit where master branch have the latest commit your dev branch is still at lower why because we have updated something as a master branch now i can push my changes git push origin master so whenever we do this one this file get updated with the two lines not a single line all right now if i go back to my code you can see here revd has resolved the merge conflict on file 2 and if i go to file 2 you can see the both the lines this is how we can resolve merge conflicts all right that's all for this lecture and see you in the next lecture hello folks welcome back in this lecture we are going to talk about how can we fork a repository before that one let's understand what is for if we see this diagram hopefully we are already doing this one so we have a git repository and i would like to take this repository on my local system then we are going to do the git clone whenever we do git clone we will get a repository as a copy of our remote repository similar way we can fork a repository but forking will happen between two different accounts let's take that i have a github account similar way others also can create their own github accounts right similar way other persons also can create their own github accounts right let's take an example that i want to develop one application which is related to the traveling i can start developing my code from the scratch or else i can go and check if a similar kind of project is available in the github or not why because other people also might have similar kind of requirement they have developed this application and uh, they are fine to share with others so they might have pushed into the public repository in the github itself now i would like to take that code onto my repository in that case i can use the fork option whenever i do fork option whatever data he is having on his account that data is going to come and sit on my account as a new repository once it is cloned now these two repositories are independent repositories and if i do any changes on this repository it won't get affected over here so i can proceed with my own development activity so fork is helps us to take a repository from other account to your account you can start doing your activity now you may ask that can i do the clone on this repository yes you can do if you do the clone same thing will happen let's assume that this is the others account and they have created repository now you would like to clone onto your local system then you can use the git clone and the repository url okay but if you want to get it onto your github account directly rather than your local system then we can use the git fork command now let's go and see how does it work okay so this is my github repository and you can see i have lot of repositories and if you observe few people are already forking my repositories onto their account why because they might think that these are useful for them and they want to do some activity with these repositories if that is the case they can fork these repositories onto their account similar way even i need some code from others account then i can fork it let's search for one of the repository assume that uh, as i said we are going to develop travel related application so i'm going to search for cab booking okay just i'm searching for cab booking application and you can see here there are 865 repositories are matching to my search and if i see here some of the names cab online tax booking system assume that i need same kind of application 
so i can open this one if i open this one this is the code and you can see 12 commits were done and four years before and this is the guy who has updated so this is the code and if you see this is developed in the php all right and this is readme file and usually readme file helps us to understand how we can use this particular application okay that is the intention so he has given enough information and if you see here fork so for 17 persons forked this repository and stars 10 stars they have given and three people are monitoring this repository nothing but whenever they are doing some changes on this repository they will get notification and also we have only one branch that is master branch on his account and uh, master branch and he hasn't done any tags next thing is pull request we are going to talk about pull request later point of time more detail assume that i have found some bug in this code why because it is updated four years before now i am trying to use this application whenever i am using this application it is not working as expected so what do i do i will update this code once i have updated this code i would like to merge that code with this code nothing but this guy code if that is the case i can raise a pull request but pull request we are going to discuss about later point of time for now i am forking this repository let me click on the fork and you can see here forking so and so so and so onto my my repository and this is the code and i got all the commits which was done and who has updated and when was updated all this information has been copied into my system why because it's just like a snapshot onto my account now i can update this code on my repository not on his repository okay so this is how we can fork the repository for better understanding instead of going to the others repository i am going to use my other github account and will start forking the repositories or updating the repositories for that i am opening my private browser here we are going to open github.com okay so there we have logged in as a ravd here i am going to log in as a voyankil it is asking for code let me give this code okay i have provided my code and i have logged in and this is my other account the account name is voyankils here also we have few repositories now what i will do i am going to fork a repository from my revd account so in revd we have a docker repository so revd slash docker if i search okay you can see here i got a revd account and if i open this one and i can see the fork option why because this is others account from others account i am cloning this repository onto my account okay so fork this repository so to fork this repository i just need to click over here so that this repository coming onto voyankils and uh, repository name is same like a docker and it is forking from the revd and you can clearly see this one revd slash docker so this repository created from this source repository right now i am going to do few modifications to this one and will update those into my local repository then i am going to push those changes onto revd account as well why because i have found some mistakes or updates to these documents same thing i would like to share with the guy who has created this one then revd is going to get a pull request then we need to accept it okay that is what we are going to see in the next lecture thanks for watching and see you there hello folks welcome back in previous lecture we have seen how to fork a repository in this lecture i am going to take this repository into my local system will do some changes those changes i will push it into my voyankils account first from voyankils account i am going to push those changes onto revd account but revd account is not owned by me so it will go as a pull request to the revd and he has to log into his account and accept it so whenever the pull request comes i will jump back into my other account here and i will see that under docker account nothing but over here i could able to see and i can review those changes then only i can commit onto my branch so for 33 commits are there and the last commit was done on 3 days ago let me explain this one with a diagram so this is how we are going to do we have a github repository right this is a revd system from revd system to i am forking the repository onto my 
Yankills account. From there, I'm going to clone it into on my local repository and I will do few updates. After doing these updates, how I am going to push it into the Yankills account and from there pushing it into the Revd system. So first we'll do fork and clone, then we'll talk about pushing onto the Yankills account, then then onto Revd's account. Let's jump back. So this is my developer2 system and I am going to clone the repository over here. So git clone. Before that one let me see what and all repositories are there. Okay. Git clone. I am taking it from my Yankills account. Not from the Revd account. So let's copy this one. I can use the HTTPS or SSH. But SSH doesn't work now. So HTTPS I am taking. SSH only works for the Revd account only. So now I have cloned. Why? Because this is a public repository under Yankills account. So no credentials are required. Let's do this one ls. Now we have a docker. And if I go inside. Now I would like to move this Apache 2 docker file onto docker file. I think I kept all docker files over here. Okay. Yeah. Let's do that one. I'm just doing Apache 2 even Jenkins docker file. And sent to a image file. Okay, so these three files I am moving on to docker file directory. So let me give the space. So now we have done some changes and git status. Okay, these changes can be anything. Even we can remove files, add files or update files. Anything we can do. Okay, let's go inside to docker file. And also I am going to update one file that is docker file basics some content is there let me open this one okay just i'm adding minus over here and similar way over here as well some changes we have done and git status if i do okay there are some modification and some deletion and some addition so git add dot so why it is saying deleted because in the current location whatever files are there that we have moved into other location. So it just think that we deleted here and created new file under this directory. Anyway, that's not a problem and git status if I check. And one more thing we need to remember whenever we do git add dot whatever directory we are there in that directory whatever changes are there those are get updated into the staging area. These are not yet updated. Why? Because these are not in the current directory. It is outside of our directory. So if that is the case, we need to come out. Again, we need to give git add dot. Then you can see git status. Everything is updated. Now it identified that we have just renamed the file name or else we have copied into inside a repository. Now git commit minus m updated docker file directory. Okay, so we are committing a change onto our local repository. Now if I check git log, you can see here the latest commit is this one. But whereas your master is still at the previous commit. Now git push origin master. Now this time I need to provide my credentials that is yankills and password. So I have provided my credentials. Now if I go back to my repository, you can see. We haven't created a separate branch. We have committed on the same branch. So you can see 34 commits are there. Now these are 34 commits on my Yankills account. Whereas if I go to my Revd account. Here only I am just opening. Okay. In Revd account 33 commits. Which means that Yankill user has done some update to this repository. Now these updates I would like to share with the Revd guy. Nothing but the actual source of this file. If that is the case I can create a pull request whenever I do pull request whatever changes you have done those changes will go to the remote repository it is something like this so for what we have done is we have others github account this is Revd's github account from there we have forked a repository now I got a repository that I have taken into my local system okay so it came into my local system here I have updated that repository nothing but few changes we have done now I have pushed these changes onto remote repository. So it went to the remote repository of mine. Now I would like to push these changes onto the others repository. So for that I just need to create a pull request. 
let's do that one so now you can see here a option called pull request why because this branch is one commit ahead of revd master nothing but what is the source repository that is revd repository comparatively this one one extra commit is there that i can uh, push into the other repository that we call it as a pull request or pr and if you would like to compare you can do the comparison of the changes nothing but what exactly changes you have done in this one okay you can see here these are the changes you have done four changed files okay two additions two deletions so we have copied into this location okay this one this three and we have updated this line all right now i am going to create a pull request let me create a pull request now it is asking that from where to where we need to create a pull request we are creating from the voyankils account to revd account we are creating from the Voyankills account to RevD account and master branch. Even you can change your branches if you have. Assume that if I am not doing updates on my master branch, if I do on the dev branch, then I can specify that, okay, dev branch to source repository master branch. Something like that we can do. And these are the four changes and you can review your changes before creating the pull request so that it won't give any confusion. Now create a pull request and we need to give proper update it's something like we are committing our changes onto the other repository so updated docker file repository let it be and create a pull request okay now we have created a pull request and if you see here i came to the revd docker account and uh, you can see under pull request there is one pending request who has created this one voyankills but i have logged in as a voyankill so i cannot commit these changes because this this repository is not mine this is revd's repository so if i logged in as a revd then only i can commit these changes you can see here commit option is not coming and you can clearly see that conversation if you want to update something he will do over here and commits what are the commits you are doing so developer 2 committed five minutes ago so this is the commit you are trying to push it into the revd's account okay he can review these changes and he can approve it anyway let me let's jump back onto revd's account and we'll see so this is revd's account and if i refresh you can see the pull request over here yes pull request and you can see these are the updates i can review these updates by clicking on this commit so let's click on this one and uh, so this is the commit and if i want to see the commit information i can just open this one okay who has done this guy is developer too and uh, i can still open detailed information okay same thing will take us into the files changed okay next i can go back here conversation and i can merge this pull request okay whenever i merge this pull request that commit comes onto my system so let's merge while merging we can update this information if necessary and commit merge that's it and you can still leave a comment okay if you want to give some update to who has pushed this code i can leave something like uh, on my code okay so i just leave the comment so that it will go to the voyankils guy and i can go back to again voyankils guy and if i refresh it this time okay it is revd's branch anyway i will go back to my docker branch sorry my account so you can see here revd merged the pull request and i can go and check it out the commit as well okay so this is the commit and uh, we can see the conversation on the pull request closed pull request if i see this one i can see the conversation over here let me open this one and you can see he has said that thanks for your update on my code this is how we can create a pull request okay there is no difference between the merge and pull request but whenever we talk about merge it will happen on two different branches on your repository whereas pull request will happen to different accounts on the github account that is the only difference so this is how we can create a pull request that's all for this lecture and see you in the next lecture so far we are working with only public repositories how can we create it and how to work with private repositories this is my github account so far i have 61 repositories if i go here this is revd just for your information and i'm going to create a new repository we have already tried this option so we can create a repository from here 
or else even from the git git cli as well even though we create from the git cli we should create one repository over here this time we are going to name it as a private demo repo okay so we are naming it as a private demo repo instead of demo repo and here we have a option public and private as i said we are creating a private repository and we can choose this option next we can initialize a readme file if it is necessary for now i am not creating any readme file let's create a repository okay before creating it i will just show you from the other account this is vyankil's account right as a vyankil user i am a vyankil user if i go to revdi's account we can see here here 58 repositories are there i have supposed to see 61 repositories but among 61 three repositories are private repositories if the private repositories we are creating in account it won't be visible in the public even i could able to clone the repository called docker why because this is a public repository i cannot clone the private repositories and we are creating one more repository in the vyankil's sorry revdi's account so let's create one more and this time it is 62 even though we create one more we could still see only 58 why because we just now created a private repository so it won't reflect or i cannot able to find those repositories as a other user so which means that your repositories are secure whenever we create a private repository okay that is first thing and we can clone this repository if necessary by using git clone option okay let's try this one and we'll see what will happen instead of using uh, ssh url i am going to use the https url okay https url why because ssh url can work even though on the private repository because we have kept our credentials with this account okay so i am using just https link i will tell you why i am using this one i would like to clone this repository onto my developer 2 system so currently i am under root here i have few repositories now let me clone the repository git clone followed by the repository i am trying to clone a private repository of the revdis account let's try to do that one and you can see here usually whenever we are cloning any repository if it is a public it won't ask for credentials whereas if we are trying to clone a private repository of course we need to provide the credentials which means that authorized people only can able to clone these repositories okay even though you know the repository url now let me cancel it and i will do the git clone and i am going to use the ssh url so let me use the ssh url and we'll try to clone it and we'll see what happens i am trying to clone the private repository and you can see here it has been cloned and uh, it is appearing as a empty repository why i can able to clone this repository if you do remember sometime back we kept our developer 1 and developer 2 credentials onto our revd account that is the reason if i use the ssh link always ssh link it is already authorized to use these credentials so i can able to clone without any issues and i can see that one over here by using git private repo and nothing is there anyway because it is a empty repository and i will go back over here again and i am going to my account and if you see here 62 repositories are there let me click over here and you can clearly see that this is a private repository and remaining all are doesn't have any tag which represents that those all are public repositories wherever you can see private which means that those are private repositories and will be accessible for the users who has access to this account or else whose keys i have added to this account only those people can able to access the private repositories so that my code is secure and i can grant the access to the people who is authorized that is the benefit of using private repositories now we'll create few files and we'll try to push it over here so here what i am doing again i am going to create va index.html and save this file git status if i see i have created a file git add dot git commit minus m okay before committing if i do git log no commits are there why because it is an empty repository so git commit minus m added index.html file git log now we have done first commit and git push origin master and if you see here 
it is representing headmaster and you cannot see the origin why because origin doesn't have any commits at this moment this is the first commit we have done that too we have done in our local repository now we are pushing these changes onto remote repository and while pushing also it doesn't ask for credentials why because we have used the git url nothing but ssh url so it won't ask for any credentials i am already authorized person to push the changes now if i do git log you can see even your master also representing to the same branch this is how we can create private repositories and we can give authentication by using the ssh keys and you can maintain your code as a secured one your code as a secured one and one last thing i would like to show you if i go to sorry if I go to my account over here, okay. So you can see here, these all are the repositories, right? You can see the symbol. This symbol represents that it is a public repository. Wherever you could see the lock, that represents the private repository. Private repositories can be visible for the guys who created it or owner of uh, repositories, not for others. Okay. That's all for this lecture, and see you in the next lecture. Hello guys, welcome back. In this lecture, we are going to talk about Git Collaborator. In previous lecture, we have seen how can we create a pull request and how to merge changes from one GitHub account to another GitHub account. Here, we need an authentication from the owner of the repository. Let's go back and check it out. This is my repository called Docker and it is owned by Revdi. So, same repository is cloned by other user called Yankel. So, it is available over here. Now, as a owner of this repository, I trust that Vyankil user is good and I would like to work with him in this project. If that is the case, Vyankil user also going to work with me closely. He might be doing commits quite frequently. So, each and every commit I need to come over here and accept his pull request. Rather than that one, what I can do is I can add Vyankil user as a collaborator so i don't need to approve his commits whatever he do on this repository for that i can go to the settings okay we have this option so far we haven't discussed about this one let's explore about it and here we have options manage access security and analysis branching lot of options are there first we'll go with the manage access if i go here you can see here who can access this is a public repository so everybody can able to access it nothing but who can able to do commits on this repository without any further authentication so far only revd can do but there is no collaborators you can see here zero collaborators have access to this repository only you can contribute to this repository which means that only i can do my commits on this repository if somebody want to do they have to come up with a pull request there also i need to check and approve nothing but it is my own commit now i am going to add Vyankil user as a collaborator so that we can able to work together for that we can go to manage access here we can invite him to work with me on this project he will get access only for this repository on this repository he can do his changes let me search for Vyankil so Vyankil's this is the account and I am inviting him as a collaborator whenever we are inviting him as a collaborator First thing is this Docker repository should be cloned by this user. If he is not yet cloned, it doesn't work. If I go to the Vyankils, okay, it is already cloned on his account. So now I can send a collaborator request. So this will go as an email to Vyankils account. He can go and check his email and accept my invitation. Let's go and check it out. All right, you can see here Revdi has sent an invitation. If I open this one, Okay, Revdi has invited you to collaborate onto Docker repository and I can accept this one by clicking on this one. Let's click on this and accept his invitation. If we accept his invitation, he can get access to this one, nothing but my public profile and from where I'm working, all this information. That's okay because we are working as a team. I would like to accept his invitation. So now we are on Revdi's account. Now I can able to do any changes on his repository at this moment. Now let me clone this repository onto my local system. So git clone. I am cloning the repository. It is a public repository so I can download it. Now what I will do. I am going inside to this one. 
and we'll update something docker introduction so shift g i'm just giving an empty line over here or else i'm removing some lines over here okay so i have removed two empty lines over there and git status if i check it is updated git add git commit minus m updated docker introduction dot md file okay so we are pushing our changes onto local repository and if i do git log okay our local commit has been updated now i would like to push these changes so whenever i'm pushing these changes it will go to revd account directly why because we have cloned the repository from the revd account right and also we have used https link so my ssh credentials doesn't work anymore so let's try to push these changes git push origin master okay so you can see here we are pushing our changes but let's assume that developer 2 is voyankils at this moment so i am giving voyankils as my username and password voyankils password i am giving okay sorry okay now you can just see here this is revd's account but even though i have used voyankils account i can able to push the changes why i can able to do that one because revd has added me as a collaborator on the docker repository that is the reason i could able to push my changes and if i go back to again this repository okay this time we could see one more commit but latest commit was done by the developer 2 but developer 2 is using voyankils user credentials there is no pull request at this moment there is no pull request for better understanding what i will do i can do the changes from here as well okay so this is revd's account and i have logged in as a voyankils account i will go and update something in one of the file so readme file i'm just editing just i have added something and let me commit these changes and you can see i have committed these changes on the directly revd docker account earlier i cannot able to commit whenever i do commit from my voyankils account it will go as a pull request right but this time it won't go as a pull request whenever we do some changes it will directly get merged why because voyankils is a collaborator for this particular repository but if i do the same thing on other repositories it doesn't work just for validation purpose what i will do i am going with the java demo project and let me try to update something over here so i would like to update text file so if i do update of this file updating as voyankils user and let me commit these changes you can see here this time it is not coming as a commit it is asking that propose okay once i have done it is asking me to create a pull request why because i don't have or i am not a collaborator for the java demo project i am a collaborator for only docker project okay so now i need to create a pull request and this pull request go to the revd account again this is how we can work as a team to update the code that's all for this lecture thanks for watching and see you in the next lecture so far docker repository is owned by revd and also voyankil can able to contribute his changes onto this repository let's assume that you are on master branch and this code is working fine as expected now voyankil has a contributor access to this repository he can continue to push his changes onto master branch even revd also can able to push his changes onto the master branch let's assume that after changing few files as a revd or voyankil i have pushed those changes onto the master branch after pushing my latest commit this code is not working let's assume that this is a java code and this code is not working after the latest commit so that is not a good practice to break down the running code or working code to overcome this problem we have already discussed about branches so it is always best practice to create multiple branches and push your code onto the dev or test branches first and if you make sure that the code is working then only push it into the master or production branch
that is what advisable at the same time i need to make sure that nobody could able to commit onto my master branch even though i am a owner of that repository or i am a contributor for this repository that is where protected branches comes into the picture whenever we convert to a branch as a protected branch even though i am a owner of that repository or a contributor i cannot able to commit any changes directly it has to go through with the review process somebody has to review the code then only it should get committed again it come as a pull request in that case what we can do we can create multiple branches here i am going to create one more branch called dev okay so on dev either i am a vyankil user or revdi user i can able to push my changes onto dev without any issues because i am a contributor and i am a owner on the dev and uh, i am not going to convert dev as a protected branch whereas if i want to commit some changes onto the master branch of course i need to go through with the approval process so whatever changes we are pushing onto the dev we will test it on a test system if it is passing then only we will go onto the master branch or production branch i can say so let's convert our master branch as a protected branch again let's go to settings and here we have option called branches and i am going to update branch protection rules so for that i am going to add a rule here you can name your branch so i am going to protect my master branch we have multiple options to protect that is require pull request to review before merging which means that whenever we are committing any changes onto the master branch it should go with the pull request and it should be reviewed and the next one require status checks to pass before merging which means that we can put some conditions these are the status checks we need to pass so in the devops workflow you can understand this one more better next required sign commits required linear history include administratives these all are the options here you can see include administrators means even though i am a admin for this uh, repository even i should follow this one so for revd i want to restrict then i can include this one so enforce all configured restrictions above for administrators as well next there are few other rules we can apply it but among this we need to choose this option where we need to required pull request to review before merging which represents that whenever we want to push some changes onto the master branch or production branch i can say it has to reviewed by someone in my team because usually whenever we are working as a team at the time we are going with review process and how many members has to approve this one if i keep 3 three members has to approve before merging that changes into the master branch anyway we have only two users so we can give only one review whoever create a pull request they cannot able to review it so maximum we can give only one because two users are working on this repository let it be and i am going to create a pull request sorry protected branch now my master branch is protected and uh, if i go here we have two branches on dev branch either revdi or vyankil user can able to update the code without any issues but from the dev to master if i want to update my code i need to go with the review process in the real time also we will go with the same procedure whatever code is there in the dev branch we will deploy that on a dev or test system if it is working fine then we can merge that code with the master branch here we are doing merging kind of thing but in the cli we will execute git merge here we need to do it in the gui i will show you in a while before that let's commit some changes as a vyankil user or else revdi user and then we'll see what will happen first i am going to vyankil user so here i am checking for the revdi docker so this is the repository it is under revdi account but still i can edit because i am a collaborator for this one now let's edit it and while editing i cannot edit it on the master branch i can edit it only on dev branch first let me see what will happen if i try to modify on master branch earlier whenever i do commit on master branch it wasn't asking for any approvals this time we'll see what will happen i'm just going to update the docker commands file let me edit it okay so i'm just giving a space over here everything will be tracked with the git so commit changes 
you can see here while committing it is creating a branch via ankle patch one and we are trying to merge with the master earlier it was not doing this one it was directly able to commit my changes now it is asking me to create a pull request okay so i don't want to create a pull request so i'm backing out with my changes i'm not updating okay anyway it has created a new branch but we haven't created a pull request okay anyway now what we are going to do i'm selecting dev in the dev i'm trying to do some changes edit and i'm just giving an enter and commit changes okay now you can see here i can directly commit on the dev branch because i'm a collaborator for this one and and dev branch is not a protected branch that is the reason i can directly able to push it now i would like to commit the changes whatever are there in the dev branch to master branch then i can do a pull request then i can do a pull request compare and create a pull request let me do this one okay so we are creating a pull request from dev to master i would like to create it and create a pull request all right i have opened a pull request and if you see here you can see review required which means that we have given one approval is required right so i have done these commits as a vyankil user revdi can able to approve my request why because we both only working on this repository so now i can go back to revdi account and if i refresh it i can see the pull request and this is the pull request which we have created as a revdi and we need to approve it you can see here review request okay add your review you can see here comment approve and request changes so comment nothing but if there is any suggestions if you would like to give you can add that one approve means there is no suggestions everything is looks good i can approve it request changes means you identified that some changes you can do still to improve this code that you can tell to developer but here i assume that this is fine and i would like to approve it so submit for review and you can see here it has been approved even if i go here this has been approved by the revd now i can merge my pull request so my changes are fine i'm merging this one merging also i can do why because i'm a collaborator over here now if i see that extra change has been get updated in the master branch itself okay now vyankil merges pull request to from so on so to master and master we have seen 39 seconds ago one commit was done on the master branch okay this is how we can protect our branch and make sure that only working code get committed onto the protected branches now we'll try it as a revd user so i am adding a file over here just for demonstration i am doing all this stuff from here usually we need to clone it onto our local system and we should do but the gui will give the better understanding docker test file okay just i am committing one this is the this is test file and let me commit it see here i cannot able to commit onto the master you can clearly see the message even as a vyankil user also same message we are getting you cannot commit master because it is a protected branch so we need to create a new one or else what we can do instead of committing these changes onto the master branch let's leave this one i am going to shift on to the dev branch in dev branch i can do changes directly so let's add a file and you can see here commit directly onto the dev branch because it is not protected and i am the owner okay if you wish to create a new branch you can still create a new branch over here but let me commit it directly onto the dev branch now dev branch we have committed our changes here you could see 39 now i would like to push it into the master branch if i go to the master here also we have 39 because each merge create it as a additional commit so here also 39 even though we don't have latest one now i would like to merge these changes okay from the dev branch to master branch so for that i can create a pull request even though it is my own account this time vyankil user is going to approve this request so create a pull request and it should be reviewed and i am going here and i will go and refresh over here as a vyankil user and there is a one new pull request and this time it is created as a docker test file 
and i don't want to approve this one why because it is a test file and uh, it is not required so i can give the okay request changes this is not needed in this repo okay submit for review okay so this is not yet approved and i need to act on this rep, uh, one so change the request now what i can do i can i can still cannot able to do that one so what i will do i am going to close this pull request because i don't want to this file is uh, created wrongly on this repo okay i'm just committing my changes okay i don't want to reopen i just closed this request so there won't be any pull request okay that pull request has been closed without commit so this is how protected branches helps us to protect our working code from unnecessary changes now you might got fair knowledge about the branches as well right why we, why do we really need branches all right that's all for this lecture and see you in the next lecture hello folks in this lecture we are going to talk about tags why do we need tags and how can we create a tag for a specific commit tags are reference that point to specific commit in git history usually we create a tag to reference to a specific commit which is working fine let's assume that i am working on a project after doing multiple commits i have created a bug free code it has a some commit id which is not easy for me to remember then i can tag that as a user friendly name so that it is easy for me to remember let me show you how does it work let's take this repository and uh, me and my uncle's user working on this one let's assume that i have done 39 commits now my code is working fine and if you see the commit id this is the commit id let's assume that i have deployed this one on my server but still we continue to work on this project because we want to enhance more future after some point of time my code is not going as expected i want to go back to the i want to go back to the commit where i have taken this code and deployed it on my server then it is difficult to remember this sha code or uh, recollect it right rather than that one we can add one more pointer to the same commit as a user friendly name that is where tags comes into the picture so that uh, whenever i want to go back i can just search for that tag and i can take that commit to go back to the previous version next tagging is generally used to capture a point in history that is used for a marked version release which means that we will take that point in time history or snapshot of our code and we'll name it as a version 101 version 1.0 version 1.1 like that so that it, it is easy for us to understand that which level the code is working fine next a tag is like a branch that doesn't change so whenever we create a tag after that even though you do any commits those doesn't reflect on that particular tag why because that is a point in time history whenever you go back to that tag still you can see the same changes what you have taken while creating that tag let's go on to do this one on our repository so this is my docker repository i am going back to my system so let's go inside and open git bash so if you see here git log there are lot of commits okay let's assume that at this point of time my code is working fine now i would like to create a tag so that at this point of time whatever code is there it will be assigned to the tag first of all we'll see if there is any tags okay you can see there is no tags at this moment now i am going to create a tag git tag version 1.0 so what happens in my master branch at the time whatever commit is available so this is the commit id right at this point of time whatever code is there in my master branch it is going to tag it as a version 1 now let's see git tag and git log if i check you can see a new tag has been attached to this one that is a git tag v1.0 now let's assume that on top of that one i have done multiple commits those commits are not working as expected then 
I no need to worry because I have tagged it as a version one. So whenever I come back to this commit, I don't want to remember this commit ID because I have mapped it with the version 1.0. I just give the version 1.0, but we cannot do git checkout version 1.0. We need to use this reference point. I don't need to remember this one. I will just go and check for the version 1.0. So wherever version 1.0 is pointing that commit, I will switch back. Okay, that is the advantage. Now I would like to push these changes and we'll see where exactly do we see these versions. Okay, git status. Okay, nothing to commit because we haven't done any code change. We have added only a tag, right? So to push our tags onto remote repository, we should use git push origin version 1.0. So this is how we can push our tags onto remote repository. Before that, let me go and check whether any tags are associated for this repository. So this is our repository and if I go here, you can see this is the tags and there are no tags associated to this repository. Now let's go and push this tag git push origin version 1.0. Okay, a new tag has been associated and if I refresh it, we can see a new tag. So here version 1.0 is there. It is updated four days ago, but we have done recent commits, right? Four days ago. Oh, okay. I got it because we haven't pulled all the commits from our remote repository to local system. Why? Because here we have 39 commits. Uh, let me go and check it out. What was the latest commit I have? I think remove a VI file. I think, I think we have used this commit as a version. Let me go and check. Git log. Yep, you can see here 97D, nothing but we have only until this commit in our local system. So whenever we tagged it, we have tagged it to this commit. Okay, this we named it as a version one. After that, we have done multiple commits. Let's assume that these commits are not working. Then I don't have any issue. I can still go back to this version. Instead of coming over here, I can go to my code and I can go to tags and I can use this tag version 1.0 okay so this is the commit after that we have done six commits six commits and if you see here the version 1.0 is tagged with this commit so at this point of time whatever code is there same code is taken it as a version 1 if I click on this one this was the commit what was happened now we are going to pull the latest code onto our local system and we'll use this commit, latest commit. We'll use this commit as a version 1.1. Let's go and pull the code, git pull. Okay, I have pulled my code if I do git log. So this is the latest commit at this moment. And if I scroll down, you can see here version 1.0. Here we have tagged it as a version 1.0. Now I would like to tag this one as a version 1.1. Why? Because latest commit also working fine. I would like to capture this code at this point of time. For that, git tag, git tag version 1.1. Okay, instead of that one, we can use the commit ID as well. Okay, so this is the commit ID, right? Latest commit ID. At least I can take first seven digits, git tag version 1.1, right? Sorry, I need to give git to tag minus a version 1.1 followed by this commit ID. Okay, this is the command to add a new tag and even we can give the commit ID for this specific tag. I can give this as a. Okay, let's assume that I'm giving version 1.1 which works with the customer portal. Let's assume that in version 1.0 customer portal was not working. In version 1.1, we have introduced a customer portal as well. Then we can name it like this and git log if I check. This time it is tagged with the tag 1.1. Now let's commit this one. Git push origin version 1.1. Okay, now we have added one more tag and if I go and refresh it over here, we can see two tags and if I go here, okay, this is the latest tag which we have added and it is associated with this commit version 1.1. It is associated with this commit. Let's assume that I have taken latest code and deployed it on my system. Then if it is not working, I no need to worry because version 1.0 is working fine and I will go back to this commit. 
that's how tags helps us to remember our working commits that's all for this lecture and see you in the next lecture hello folks in this lecture we are going to see how can we revert our changes from working directory or staging area or else in our local repository let's assume that i am writing some code for my project after writing that code i felt that i want to revert those changes i don't want it then there are three scenarios first one is you have written your changes but you haven't staged those changes which means that it is only on working directory next thing is you have updated your changes and you committed those changes on staging area at last is you have committed your changes on your local repository now first we'll take the first scenario where you have updated your changes and your working directory recognized those and how can we revert those changes i have updated a document in our github repository for the same let's go and have a look so this is the repository i just created git course and uh, under my revd account if you go and check it out over here revert changes on git first thing is revert changing from working directory assume that we have few changes on our working directory and i would like to discard those changes then we can use git restore and the file name even you can specify multiple file names or else git checkout minus minus file name so both commands will work to discard the changes whatever you have done in your working directory or else we can manually delete the lines which we have added in the files identifying and deleting each line of code is quite difficult right so commands will help us lot to revert those changes let's go and do this one on our repository so i am on my c projects directory let me take one repository i am taking velaxi git repo repository and if i do ls we have few files over here and git status if i do sorry okay there is nothing to commit everything is up to date but anyway to validate it i am just doing git pull make sure that if any changes are there those changes comes into our local system i think there is one file that is product.html we just pulled it and if i do ls okay now it's fine and git log if i do we have multiple commits over here let me increase font size now what i want to do is now i want to update one file and create a file so ls here i am updating my index.html so i should keep it as a h2 only not h1 so by mistakenly i have saved this file and uh, and also i have created a file called file1 okay so now i have done two changes one is i have created a file another one is i have updated a file and if i check git log sorry git status these two changes are appearing in our working directory it is in red color nothing but it is just in working directory not yet added to your local repository if that is the case what i can do i can go and modify my file to keep it back okay so if i go here and just i will remove this one and if i do git log sorry git status now it is not showing index.html it is showing as a file one only okay again i am adding the changes to my index.html that is h1 welcome to our company and closing as a h2 here i have added only one line so removing is quite easy but assume that if you have multiple files you have updated and you don't know which lines you have added in that case we can use git restore command and followed by your file name okay git restore doesn't work for the uh, files which we newly created we can just go and delete these files right there is no point of reverting changes on this one but let's try that one and you can see git status if i see now okay yeah because of file one only because file one is just now created so git doesn't know about the file one so let's just give index.html and if i do git log sorry git status you can see here it is not showing and file one i just remove rm minus rf file one now my git 
now my working directory is clean okay so there is no commits at this moment this is how we can revert changes on our working directory now let's test with git checkout command as well so i am editing index.html as a h2 so i have introduced a bug over here git status it is available over here i want to see what are the changes i have done okay i could see that git index.html and this is the line i have added and this is the bug now i would like to revert it back then git checkout minus minus index.html and if i open index.html file now so the new line which we have added is not there and also if i do git status okay it is clean so this is how we can revert our changes from working directory in next lecture we are going to see how we can revert our changes from the staging area as well as local repository thanks for watching and see you there hello guys in previous lecture we have seen how can we revert our changes from working directory in this lecture we are going to see how can we revert our changes from the staging area to working directory and also repository to working directory there is no way that avoiding the working directory so what we need to do first we need to send our changes from staging area to working directory by using git restore command again we need to run the command to discard changes from working directory nothing but in this case we need to execute two commands first command discard our changes from the staging area second command discard our changes from the working directory similar way same thing will happen over here whenever we commit our changes in our local repository we can do the git reset which help us to discard our commits on the local repository but changes you can still see in the working directory again we need to run the git restore or git checkout on the working directory let me show you the relevant document for this so this is the document revert changes from staging area so we should execute git restore minus minus staged even for working directory also git restore we use followed by file name but whereas if it is already in the staging area then we can use git restore minus minus staged followed by file name in this command what happens it discard changes only in the staging area not in the working directory now you know right how to discard changes in the working directory either these commands we should execute that is the reason i have added it over here next thing is reverting changes from the local repository if you haven't committed into the remote repository so we can use git reset head tilde this helps us to go back to the previous commit but changes still is there in the working directory so we can execute this command to revert those changes let's go and do this one practically i am in my same repository which we have used in our previous lecture if i do index.html file i am updating again so cat index.html i will add one line okay h1 welcome welcome to our company close it as a h2 so i introduced a bug again and git add dot which means that i am sending these changes to the staging area before that if i do git status it is in uh, working directory only git add dot git st status you can see here it is under working directory now you can also clearly see the command what you need to execute git restore minus minus staged followed by file name to unstage it so same thing we need to do i am going to do this one to unstaged okay before executing this command let me open my index.html so these are the changes we have added newly now let me revert those changes in the staging area now if i see git index.html you can see here still you could see the changes why because why because we have discarded our changes from on the staging area only now we need to discard it from the working directory as well so for that if i do git status again now you can see here it is there in the working directory so from working directory again we can use the git restore followed by file name without minus minus stage flag then these changes will be discarded in our local repository as well i can do cat index.html so this is how we can revert our changes from the staging area now one last thing that i am going to add changes and will do a commit then we'll see how we can revert it before that if i do git log okay we have a commit called merge 
So merge is our latest commit. Now vi index.html and I am adding this line. Save this file and git add dot git status git commit minus m added or updated sorry updated index.html okay and git status if I check so git status if I check there is one commit and git log if I do you can see here after march commit there is one more commit which is done today that is updated index.html all right now I don't want this commit I want to revert these changes if that is the case I can do git reset head okay tilde tilde or else cap we can use okay this is we call it as a caret symbol git reset head cap one or else just cap if we don't give any number it will treat it as a one it is going one commit back on your local repository at this moment it is at this commit now it is going to refer to this commit so let's see that one and if i do git log you can see here head is came back to the previous commit but if you see the changes git status okay those came back into the working directory and uh, the changes what we have done still is there in the file now i would like to discard these changes now you know right how to revert the changes when it is in working directory okay we know git restore or else git checkout git checkout minus minus index.html okay so this is how we can revert our changes from the staging area or else from local repository but whenever we commit our changes into the remote repository it is bit difficult to do that one and there is no direct way to do that we may need this kind of activity very rarely but your commits on remote repository is not backed out okay please remember while pushing your changes onto the remote repository that's all for this lecture and see you in the next lecture hello folks in this lecture we are going to talk about git ignore file whenever you are writing your code sometimes you may need to avoid few files to committed in your repository if that is the case you need to remove those files from your repository while pushing your code or else you need to move those files onto other directory. Instead of doing that stuff, we can use a git ignore file which helps us to avoid pushing unnecessary files on your repository. Let's go and see how does it work. So this is my local system. I am under C projects directory. Here we have a repository called Velaxi git repo. Let me go inside. And if you see, we have HTML related code over here. Let's assume that to develop this project, I am getting few other ideas where I can improve it. For that, I would like to add a file where I, I can add some improvements related to this one. So let's think that I am creating a file called some improvements file. So touch improve.txt. Okay, just I have created improve.txt and if I go and check git status, I can see improve.txt file is there. Let's assume that I have updated something and while pushing my changes, even improve.txt also get updated in the code. But I don't want to do that one. If that is the case, we can do git ignore. Okay. Let me show you this one over here. So here I can create a git ignore file in my repository from the GUI or else I can give the va.git ignore. Okay. The file name must be dot git ignore. Here I can add my file. Improve. So, okay, that is improve.txt, right? Same name I am going to give. Okay, I have given this one. Now, if I go and check git status, you can see here, there is no improve file at all. We can just see git ignore file. But we need to commit this git ignore file. Now, let me commit this one. Git status, git commit minus m, added git ignore file. Okay, git push origin master. So I have committed my changes and if I check git status, nothing is there. But if I go and check it out my repository, so Velaxi git repo, here you cannot see that file except git ignore file. Now let's assume that I have created few other files that is uh, touch file1.txt, touch file2. 
dot txt okay this there is a typo anyway so now i would like to ignore these files also why because these two are not related to our project then so again i can update my git dot git ignore file and here i can add each file that is file file one there was a typo right so file one dot txt and file two dot txt okay so rather than this one we can do another way if all are related to the same extension we can use the wildcard character star dot txt now let me save this file and if i do git log sorry if i do git status we can see here modified only git ignore file why because even though we have added those still those are not tracked if i go and back it out instead of back it out this one i can use the git restore command as well so let's assume that git restore i'm just backing out these changes now if i do git status again you can see file1 and file2.txt files are there so again i'm going to add it back to our git repository just to start.txt again if i do git status now it is only identifying the git ignore and git add dot git commit minus m updated git ignore file git push origin master okay so even though we add git add and we push all our changes still we could not able to see the those files but only your git ignore file getting updated this is how we can ignore our files in case if you would like to ignore few files okay that's how we can use the git ignore file to ignore our files and i have updated one file in our git course okay git ignore file and uh, here you can see what and all parameters you can use in the git ignore file it will help you that what combinations you can use in your git ignore file that's all for this lecture see you in the next lecture hello folks welcome back in this lecture we are going to talk about git rebase to demonstrate this example i am going to create a new repository on my github let's go to repositories new i am creating a repository called number repo and it is a public repository and i am not adding any file let me create this repository okay this is our repository let me clone this one into my local system for that i am using the ssh link so this is my local system where i am under projects directory git clone i am cloning my numbers number repo into my local system go inside to number repo okay so as we said we are using git rebase usually git rebase we use whenever we want to squeeze multiple commits into one commit uh, let's assume that i have done five commits but five commits i don't want to push it into my repository then i can convert those five commits into a single commit that is what we can do so to demonstrate this one i am going to create a file called number.txt and we'll do multiple commits on this repository once that is done we could see five or six commits over here but we don't want to see that much history in our git log so that we can use git rebase to squeeze those changes let me create a file called number.txt and i'm going to add a line called this is number one okay just we are giving a single line and if i check git status there is a new file called number.txt in the working directory let me add it to the staging for that git add dot let me commit these changes before committing if i check my status git log okay there is no commits and git commit minus m added number one okay so we are giving first commit our repository has been updated with the new commit if i check git log there is one commit let me clear the screen now again i am going to update the same file number.txt this time i am going to add one more line and uh, this i am going to name it as a number two and git status if i check again one more change is there on same file so let's add this one to our repo now what we need to do is git add dot 
once this is done we need to do git commit right so instead of that one we can run both the commands in single that is git commit minus a minus m so minus a stands for if any files are modified add those files and minus m to add our comment right so i'm adding added number two and moreover this command works only the file which is already recognized by our git which means that if we are modifying the existing file then only this command does work if it is a new file then we should go with the git add command then git commit command okay so this has been updated now if i check git log two commits are there let me clear the screen again i am going to do two more commits on the same file okay so git commit so let me pull the git commit and this time this is number three again i'm editing my file this time i'm going to add it as a number four again i'm committing this as a fourth commit and one more last commit i'm going to do that is number five and let me commit this one so far we have done five changes to our file and git log if i check total five commits are there you can see here first second third fourth fifth but i have done same relevant content each and every time and i don't want to see these many commits in my remote repository or else even in my local system also then we can use git rebase command let's use git rebase command and squeeze all these changes into a single commit so let's do that one git rebase minus i okay this is the command and followed by head and how many commits you would like to squeeze so total five commits are there but out of five commits this is head nothing but this is the one head minus one head minus two head minus three head minus four okay so we need to give head tilde four which means that we are squeezing four commits okay head minus four we have given oh sorry first commit we cannot able to add it so if i give head minus five also it doesn't work let me try it out head minus five so invalid upstream so we have only head minus four and if i do this one you can see here so far we have total four commits we are trying to squeeze into a single commit so this is our latest commit right added number five this is the latest commit so all old commits from here to here everything is getting added to here total four commits we are adding and here we have some of the comments how we can do that one pick nothing but use this commit among this which commit do you want to add there you can specify the pick remaining we need to add the squeeze so squeeze use commit but uh, meld into the previous commit so whenever we use squeeze it is going to meld it into the previous commit so here i what i am doing i just want to keep this commit and remaining all i would like to squeeze i am adding squeeze over here same way here as well same way here as well now what will happen these three commits get added into the this commit so total four commits becoming a single commit now let me save this file so these many commits we are adding so i want to get the commit as something like this one okay here we need to give the commit message added number two three four and five okay so remaining i'm going to just comment it out i don't need all these okay that's it now let me save this file and uh, we have squeezed all our changes and if i check git status okay this is clean and git log if i check you can see only two commits and the commit message has been updated over here but if i check my file i can still see the five numbers okay because instead of having multiple commits we have squeezed all those into a single commit so this is how we can use git rebase command that's all for this lecture and see you in the next lecture. Hello folks, in this lecture we are going to talk about git fetch and git pull. So far we have used git pull many times because whenever we want to pull changes from our remote repository to our local system, we are using git pull. But if we see what happens whenever we use git pull is, 
if there is any changes in your remote repository those will get updated in our local repository at the same time the content what is updated in the remote repository same content get pulled into local repository so git pull do two activities that is it is going to sync our remote repository with local repository at the same time it pull the all the changes into our working directory whereas if we use git fetch it is going to sync only our remote repository with our local repository but you cannot see the changes of these files in our local working directory if i want to get those changes in our local working directory again i need to execute git merge command which means that git pull is equal to the git fetch and git merge okay now let's see this one with practical so this is the remote repository which i am having number repo i have used this repository for our previous lecture git rebase as well anyway i am going to clone this repository once again onto my local system in previous lecture i have already cloned but i removed it in my local system so it is not there now let me clone it again so i have cloned this number repo repository let me go inside to number repo nothing is there again i am going to create number.txt file okay so here i am going to do two commits this is number one and git add dot git commit minus m added number one okay so one commit we have done if i do git log one commit is there so again i am doing the same thing adding one more number this is number two this is number five okay so i'm adding this time four lines and git add or git commit minus am nothing but add these changes onto our local repository with the comment so added number two three four and five okay four and five so we have added this one and if i check git log we have two commits now let me clear the screen and I'll, I'm going to push these changes onto remote repository. Git push origin master. Okay, we have pushed these changes onto remote repository. Let me refresh it. And you can see number.txt and the two commits are there. Let me open this one and you can see five lines are there, which we have done in our local repository. Now what I'm going to do is I'm editing this file in the GUI itself. Usually it is not recommended, but for quick lab, I'm going to edit it from the GUI itself. Just assume that other developer is doing these changes and uh, he, ha he has pushed into the remote repository. Added number six. Okay. So this is one commit I'm doing and one more commit I'm doing. This is number seven. I'm just committing without any commit ID. So we have done two commits from our remote repository. And if I go and check it out, git log, we still have two commits. And if I check git cat number.txt, you can see here our file is not updated. Now I want to get updated this file with the latest commit, which is there in our remote repository. Also, my local repository also should update with the all the commits which are done on the remote repository for that we can use git pull right git pull origin master origin master which means that we are pulling the master branch from the remote repository anyway ours is the default is master itself so we can just use git pull as well so it is going to pull the all the changes on remote repository at the same time it updates the number.txt as well now if i check git log you can see here four commits are there and if i open number.txt okay all the lines has been updated now again i am going to update two more commits from my remote repository i am going to add number eight and just to commit this one because commit message is not important for us at this moment i am doing one more commit okay so two commits again i have done so total it could be six commits right so if i go to number repo six commits we have done but still in our local repository git log you can see four commits now i would like to pull these changes as well for that this time instead of git pull i am using git fetch and we'll see what happen 
okay git fetch origin master i can do so whenever we do origin master it is going to pull uh, changes from the master to local repository it won't get update our log or our file with the changes and if you see here update with the uh, local repository and instead of git fetch origin master we can just use git fetch as well now let's see what happened git log if i check i could still see the three commits even though our local repository is updated and if i do cat number dot txt i can still see the till number seven now i want to get those changes now i can use git merge so git merge what does it happen okay it is going to pull all changes from our local repository to our working directory something like this in the local repository we have changes already available now i want to get it into working directory then i need to use git merge let's execute and see git merge now you can see in the local repository there are few updates those updates came into my file now and if i check i could see the whatever updates are there in my local repository same i can see over here this is how we can use git fetch and merge if you want to don't disturb your local changes but still you want to pull all your remote repository changes then use the git fetch okay so that's all for this lecture and see you in the next lecture hello folks in previous sections we have seen what kind of options are available on git and github how does it help us to manage our code in this section, I am going to discuss how we can use all those options together to secure our code on Git or GitHub. To demonstrate this project, I am going to use a car rental Java project which helps us to understand how exactly do we work in the real world with Git. Let's assume that I am a DevOps engineer and my manager called me and asked me to create a repository. While I am creating a repository for our clients, we are going to follow these steps. In the real world, we are going to set up private repositories most of the cases. Even for this project also, I am going to create a private repository. Next, I am creating three branches. One is prod, UAT and dev. Here, I am not using master branch. As you know, by default, we get a master branch. But I am deleting that branch and I will use prod uat and dev branches and i will add team members as collaborators for this repository in this project i am going to use four developers so four developers i need to add as a collaborators but to add them as a collaborators they should have an github account next enable ssh based authentication i am going to enable passwordless authentication so that they can able to push their code onto the github account without any issues next to protect the prod and uat branches so here we are creating three branches developers can push any kind of code on dev branch but not on uat and prod branch if they are pushing or checking in any code on uat or prod branch it should be in working stage so that always my uat and prod branches contains working code one approval is needed to check in code onto UAT branch or UAT environment and two approvals needed to check in code onto prod branch. So this we are going to add with the collaborators. I have already discussed about collaborators in our previous sections, right? Next, build and deploy should be successful before checking the code onto UAT as well as prod, which means that assume that i have pushed my code onto the dev environment from dev environment i will build and deploy it on the dev system once it is successful then only i can check in my code onto uat similar way on uat also i will do build and deploy if it is successful then only i will check in my code onto prod that is how we can make sure that working code is moving onto the production so these are the steps i am going to take care while creating repository for my cab booking or taxi booking application let me show you this one in the diagram so this is github account and as i said we have four developers developer one my laptop is the developer one system from starting we are using my laptop as a developer one system right and a developer two system in aws account we have created a linux system that we are using it as a developer two system and developer three and developer four i have created two new amazon linux systems those we are going to use it as a developer 2 and developer 3 systems 
let me show you that so this is my developer one system i can open git bash over here and start working on my cab booking java project next thing as i said i have created developer 2 developer 3 and developer 4 systems on aws console so developer 2 is going to work from this system developer 3 is going to work from this system and developer 4 is working from here i have already logged into these systems let me show you so this is developer 2 system i named it as a dev2 this is developer 3 system i named it as a dev3 this is developer 4 system i named it as a dev4 so each developer is going to work on their own independent systems but in this demonstration i will act as a all these developers next thing we need to create a private repository right so here we are going to create a private repository in our github account once it is created we are going to create three branches those are production uat and dev branches next our developers are going to give their ssh keys with me so that i can add their ssh keys in my github account so that they can able to communicate with my repository without any credentials so they generate ssh keys and share with me so that i will enable their passwordless authentication or ssh based authentication and also i am going to protect prod and uat branches okay so these two will be protected and whenever you want to check in code from dev branch to uat one approval is needed similar way from uat to prod two approvals are needed so i will add these users as a collaborators over here but these users should have the github account rather than that one for developer 2 account i am going to use vyankil for developer 3 i will use velaxi so that they can able to approve while pushing our changes onto production branch so this is how we are going to set up our environment so that we can able to secure our code and also we will make sure that only working code will be available on prod and uat and developers can do any kind of activity on dev branch that's all for this lecture in next lecture we are going to set up all this environment thanks for watching and see you there hello folks in previous lecture we have discussed that we need to set up this environment to start developing our cab booking java application i have already explained this one with this diagram now let's go and create our private repository first this is my github account here i am going to create a new repository and this is car rental application so i am going to name it as a taxi booking okay taxi minus booking this is the name i am giving and uh, it should be a private repository right so i am naming it as a private repository i am adding a readme file for this one and create a repository all right we have created a repository called taxi booking that is a private repository and we got a default branch called master but i don't need this branch right we need to create prod uat and dev branches okay if you click on this one you can see here you have only one branch and that is also master and also please remember that if your branch is default branch you cannot delete this branch you need to create another branch and make that one as a default then only you can you can delete this one so to create a new branch it is quite simple just click over here and name the branch which you would like to create first i would like to create a dev branch okay you can see here create branch dev from master it is going to create a branch called dev from the master branch all right we got a dev branch and and whatever code is there in the master branch same code get copied into the dev branch similar way i want to create uat branch as well so we are creating a uat branch as well all right now we have created dev and uat and one last thing we are going to create prod branch fine we have created three branches you can see here dev prod and uat now our master is no more required and it is default so i cannot delete it before deleting it i need to change default to any one of these branch then i can delete i am going to make dev as a default branch for that one i can go to branches and you can see here change default branch i am going to change dev as my default branch and update 
yes i understand update the default branch all right now dev became a default branch if i go here you can see here your dev is the default branch and master is not default branch anymore now i can delete my master branch because i don't need it so to delete master branch you can see here new pull request or delete i want to delete this branch that's it i have deleted my master branch now we have only three branches those are dev prod and uat okay cool next thing is i need to create protection to my branches right so i need to protect my uat and prod branches why because developers can able to push their changes only onto the dev branch not onto the prod or uat branches for that i can go to settings and branches here you can add branch protection rule and please remember that this option is not enabled if it is a private repository and yours is a free account you should enable the pro account then only this option get enabled for the private repositories mine is a paid version of account nothing but i have pro account that is the reason this option is enabled now i am adding a rule and branch name pattern nothing but which branch do you want to protect i want to protect uat branch so while protecting uat branch what kind of rules you want to give require pull request to reviews before merging which means that if somebody is trying to push their code or check in their code onto uat branch we should go with the pull request and also it requires the reviews so how many people has to review i can specify one or two or up to six i can specify okay in this case i am going to specify only one one reviewer is fine to check in the code onto the uat branch and also if you scroll down there are lot of options but mostly we are going to use this option anyway i, I have already discussed some of these options in our previous lectures and include administrators nothing but even you are your administrator in this case i am your administrator do you want to enforce administrator also should follow the same rules in my case i am not specifying the include administrators because administrator can do whatever he want so i have just chosen that only whenever somebody pushing their changes onto uat one approver is needed that's it so that is how you can add or protect your branch next i want to add prod branch also so again click on branches and create one more rule and this time i am going to give the prod so on prod branch we are requesting for the reviews before merging and this time i am specifying two reviewers all right so and create it this is how we can protect our branches on github now developers can push their changes only onto dev branch not onto uat or prod if they want to push onto uat or prod they have to go with the approval process either it could be a peer to peer approval or manager or team lead approvals okay so this is the things we need to do next thing we need to add collaborators right so for collaborators go to settings and uh, manage access here we need to add collaborators so far we don't have any collaborators i am adding Vyankils as one of the collaborator, nothing but he can approve the changes, and he has to approve from his email ID. Similar way, I am adding one more collaborator that is Velaxi. Okay, Velaxi Infotech. I am adding one more collaborator and add Velaxi Infotech. So these two are the collaborators. Just think that Vyankils account belongs to the developer two, and Velaxi Infotech account belongs to the developer three. okay usually i should create separate accounts for them instead of creating them i am just reusing the existing accounts now i have added collaborators as well let me see what options we left out still we have created a private repository created three branches and added team as a collaborators it is done okay enable ssh based authentication this is yet to do protect prod and uat branches next one approval needed to check in the code onto uat and two approvals needed to check in the code onto prod so till here we have done build and deploy should be successful before checking the code onto uat as well as onto prod this we are going to see in the later point of time next thing we need to enable ssh based authentication 
this we are going to see in the next lecture thanks for watching and see you there hello folks welcome back we are in the process of setting up our github repositories accounts to secure our code as part of that one we have completed almost all steps except enabling ssh based authentication for this one each developer has to generate their ssh keys and share with me me nothing but to devops engineer so that i can enable ssh based authentication for this one there is a good document in github let's go and have a look anyway we have already seen that one quickly i am going to reuse the same document Alright, I am searching for SSH with GitHub. Okay, and if you see here, connecting to GitHub with SSH, this is the document I am looking. And if you see here, checking for existing SSH keys, not this one. Generating new SSH keys and adding it to the SSH agent. So, this is the option we need to use. Let me open it. Alright. So to generate SSH keys, we can use SSH keys and, and followed by these options rather than that one SSH keys and also works. If you need more protection, you can go with this one and also you can generate passwords. All this stuff you can do. In this case, we can run just SSH keys and okay, I'm going to execute this command on all developer systems. But if you do remember, we have already added our developer one and developer two keys. Developer one, nothing but my local laptop keys, as well as developer two means the AWS instance which we created at the starting of this course. Now we need to do same thing for developer three and developer four. So I'm going to developer three system. So this is developer three system and execute SSH keys in and uh, nothing to provide over here just give and oops i have already created i think anyway i'm going to recreate it overwrite yes and uh, just give enter so that it is going to generate new keys i'm going to use those keys so next thing i need to copy these keys onto remote repository before that let me generate keys for dev4 as well Yes, here also I want to overwrite. Usually that you cannot see if you are creating it at first time. Alright, now we have generated keys. Next thing we need to add these to SSH agent. For this we need to run this on all the systems. Oops, this is on dev4, similar way on dev3, even on dev2 as well. Alright, next thing. In dev1, it is already enabled, so nothing to do over here. I don't want to touch this system. Next thing, we need to execute this one ssh add so that it will get added our keys to our agent. So, ssh add and ssh add. Okay. Next thing, we need to add our ssh keys to the GitHub account. That is quite simple. We just need to go to our GitHub account and go to settings. Here we have already added developer 1 and developer 2 system keys. Now we want to add developer 3 and developer 4 system keys. So this is developer 3 and I will copy the developer 3 system keys. For that cat tilde nothing but home directory under home directory dot ssh id rsa dot pub. Okay. Pub. So this key we need to add over there so that it will enable SSH based authentication. So I'm adding it. So we have added developer three keys. Next developer four keys. Same thing I'm going to do on developer four system as well. So usually this information is provided by the independent developers. But here we are acting as a developers and as a DevOps engineer. So we need to take care. Now, developer 1, 2, 3, 4. These users can able to check in onto my any repositories without any issues if those are not protected. Okay. Alright. So I can say all these steps are completed except this one. This one we are going to deal when we are building our code. Next thing is it's time to start developing the code as a developers. 
now i can go and tell to my project manager that repository is ready now developers can start developing their code let's assume that now project manager has allocated some tasks to the each developer in this case now let's take that developer one is taking care of the home page nothing but landing page of your website and the developer two is taking care of the services which are provided by the car rental application and developer three he is taking care of the cars what kind of cars are available and the drivers are available or not and in case is there any issue with the car where they can go to garage all this information he is taking care as a developer three and the developer four he is going to take care of where the cars are available how the customers can contact if they need these services so this is how our project manager decided the tasks and it has been allocated to the respective developers now these developers has to start developing their code don't worry i am not going to write the code we have already the similar kind of application i am going to use that application to demonstrate this example but as a starting point we need to clone the repository which we have created in our github account that is that is taxi rentals right so we are going to clone that repository let's go and clone that repository as a each developer first i am going into the developer one system so this is developer one system and as you know in this course i am working under projects folder even for this project also i am working in the same location under this one we have one more folder called java projects i am going inside it is a project related one so i am working here and i have already source code for the taxi rental application this is the taxi grabber application so same code i am going to use instead of writing the code i will just copy these files into the respective locations as a respective developers so that our work is easy okay so now what i am going to do i am cloning my repository over here for that i am opening git bash and git clone let me take the repository url let's go to repositories and yeah taxi booking not taxi rentals so i'm using ssh link why because we have enabled ssh based authentication right if i am using https link then i need to provide credentials okay so instead of that one i'm using git url i mean to say ssh url so we are cloning the taxi booking application it has been cloned and if i go inside to taxi booking and git status if i check you can see nothing is there and we have only one file that is readme and git log if i check we have only one commit that is the initial commit while we were creating a readme file from the github account itself so same thing i need to do in the remaining all accounts so same command i am executing on developer two system first so here we have cloned okay here i am under root okay i am using for some other purpose as well so you can see few other stuff anyway that's okay i am going inside to taxi booking and if i check readme file over here same thing i am going to same thing i am going to clone from the other accounts or other developer systems as well okay next here also i am going to clone it all right we have cloned this repository onto all developer systems okay we have car rentals i am removing it and taxi booking okay we have only one readme file even here also cd taxi booking all right so we have cloned our remote repository onto all developer system next thing we need to start developing the code that we are going to see in the next lecture thanks for watching and see you there hello folks welcome back so far we have set up our git repositories on our github account now developers start developing their code as part of the development process developer one is planning to write the home page now i have segregated the code which i have shown you in the previous lecture what kind of code a developer one can add okay let me go and show you so this is the java projects account and here we have cloned our repository right that is taxi booking and you can see there is a folder called project code i have just segregated what kind of code as a developer one should add 
and I kept it under this location. We just need to copy it and copy it into the taxi booking. Instead of developing the code, I'm using the easiest way. Okay, readme file is copied, so I'm skipping this file. Now what I have done, I have copied the code what I need to add as a developer one. If you do remember, as a developer one, I need to write the home page code. If I go inside to web app, src main, okay, web app. Here I need to update my code. You can see here the index.jsp, this is not required. Okay, so this is the code I have written. Let me open with notepad. Okay, so this is the code I have written. Let's assume that I have written and I have done comments. Okay, everything looks good. This code, I need to push it into my remote repository as a developer one. So let's go back over here. And if I see ls now, now I have multiple files and git status if I check. I have few files and git log. Still only one commit because we haven't committed these changes. Git push, sorry git add dot git commit minus m added home page sorry home page code okay so this is the first commit i am doing and a lot of files got added and git status if i check one commit is there and git log we have added one commit in our local repository now git push sorry git push origin master sorry not master we need to give dev why because this is the dev branch right we don't have any branch called master so we need to give git push origin dev and before pushing it if i go and check it out still you cannot able to see any code over here all right sorry not this one now i'm pushing my changes onto remote repository even though it is a private it won't ask for any credentials why because my ssh keys are already added to remote account that's it my code has been updated over here and if i refresh it over here okay you can see the code over here now everything is fine but as a developer one i have pushed my code i don't know whether this code is working or not i need to test it right once I have tested, if it is working, then only I can go to the next level. Nothing but I can update the same code onto UAT from UAT to UAT to prod, right? That is where the DevOps process comes into the picture. So now what we need to do as a DevOps engineer, I need to take this code, build, and I should deploy it in one application server so that my testing team or my development team go and check it out whether it is working fine or not. If it is working, then they go for the approval and they push this code onto the UAT environment. So for that, I need to set up a dev environment, right? That I have already done. If you see here, we have three more systems that is Tomcat dev, Tomcat prod and Tomcat UAT. The code which is there in the dev branch, I'm going to deploy it over here. It is kind of test system. Once it is deployed over here, the code may or may not work. It's not a problem. But before deploying on UAT and prod, I should make sure that the code is working properly. So as a test point, what I can do, I can build it and deploy it on a dev system. For that, we need to build the code. Then only we can deploy it. Build nothing but compilation of the code. Because application systems cannot understand the source code, so we need to compile it. Who can compile the code and who can deploy it? That is where Jenkins comes into the picture. So with the Jenkins, we are going to compile that code and deploy it on a dev system. So let's go to our Jenkins system. Okay, I'm logging into my Jenkins system. If you don't know how to set up Jenkins system and Tomcat system, don't worry because if you have enrolled to my complete DevOps course, you are going to see all this stuff. Otherwise, ignore these steps because we are focusing how your Git works as the DevOps point of view. So just to try to understand the concept. Okay, this is my Jenkins console. I have already one job. We are going to create a new job that is for a dev environment. So what I can do, taxi booking underscore dev. Okay, because we are using dev branch code over here. That is the reason I'm giving taxi booking dev and it is a Maven project. Okay, next, where is your code is located? It is available in the Git, right? In the Git, what is the URL of your code? 
so i need to go here and get the url and i should get https link not the git ssh link why because it can understand only https and next thing you can see here it is failed to connect this repository why because it is a private repository for the private repository we should provide the credentials i have already added my credentials over here so i just loaded credentials now you cannot see that error so next thing on which branch this code is available there is no branch called master right we have branch called dev so in the dev branch the code is available on this repository take that code and build it so to build we are going to use the maven for that there are goals clean install package okay these all i have discussed in my other courses maybe you can check out those courses it will help you okay so i have given the goals to build our code next thing we need to deploy it but before deploying it i will just run the code and we'll see whether build is successful or not let me build it okay build is successful and if i go and open this one everything is fine okay success which means that build is successful next thing i need to deploy this code onto tomcat system right so go to configure i need to update that on which tomcat server i would like to deploy it so post build actions and get where are here here i need to provide the my where file name okay that you will be in the first build job the path of the where file so it is web app target web app dot where i am taking this one and container here i need to provide tomcat 8 that is our tomcat server and to deploy on tomcat server we need to provide credentials i have already added these credentials next url of tomcat so what is the url of your dev environment application server so for that i can just go here this is my dev server right so let me go and access it on port number 8080 why because sorry 8080 why because tomcat runs on port number 8080 yes you can see here this is the default tomcat landing page now i am going to use this url so what i am saying to my jenkins that deploy the var file on this application server while deploying use these credentials apply and save now again build it this time the deployment should happen on this system okay some test cases are running and you can see here deploying okay deployment is successful and i need to access this one with the web app all right you can see here now okay this is the application which i have written as a developer one and my role is as per my manager he said me that develop the home page our landing page i have developed it i think i have it is working fine but there are some bugs if you see here here you can see the images of the cars but here you cannot see that is one problem and list of the cars okay date sorry remaining all are fine but if you come down to prices you can see here assume that it is a indian related app i need to keep it in rupees so that also is a bug so this kind of bugs are intimated to the developers from the testing team or even developer come and check over here and he understand the problem and he continue to update that is how the developers are going to do now assume that still there are some issues meantime developer 2 also start developing his code and he want to add his services so developer 2 is responsible to add services page over here and let's go to developer 2 system so this is developer 2 system so he is going to add services page but before adding his code he has to pull the code right why because now there are few updates if you see here git log okay still we have one commit but whereas in the remote repository we have two commits right so i can do git pull origin dev okay because it is a dev branch not master or else i can just do git pull why because by default it is talking with the dev branch only so it is going to pull the code from the dev branch all right we have pulled all the code from the dev branch and i need to update my code under web app src main again web app here i need to update my code so now what i will do i am going to update my services application so the services code i need to write instead of writing i have the services page over here i will just copy that one okay so services 
open with notepad okay let me copy this code onto my developer 2 system just assume that he has written the services dot html code and i'm just copying it over here now i have copied my services application sorry services page over here and git status if i check one file is there now git add dot git commit minus m added services info and git push origin master okay so far in the remote repository we have only two commits okay two commits and uh, now we are going to do the another commit oops sorry we need to give the git push origin dev right there is no branch called master all right so we are pushing our changes anyway it won't ask for credentials and if i go and check this time it should be three commits and we could able to see services page as well okay services page is there now i can say that developer 2 has pushed his code onto remote repository now i need to build it again right why because now code has been updated i need to make sure that here the services page also is displaying let me try to do that one i am building it nothing to do i just need to build it within two minutes i can tell whether developer 2 has pushed working code or not if build is failed nothing to do i can tell to developer that okay the code is not working if build is successful still i could not able to see the options over here still i can say that there is some problem with the code okay so build is successful let me refresh it okay you can see here still you could not able to see the services page which means that there is some problem with the code now i asked developer 2 to check in the code and make sure that that page is available i know the problem so i'm going to quickly fix it okay this is just i have hided that uh, option and also one more thing i need to do services.html on services.html okay i have updated this code to make it work with the services and git status if i check git add dot git commit minus m fixed services phase bug okay so there was a bug i have fixed it and git push origin dev okay we have committed our new changes onto the remote repository once this is done again i need to build my code so i am doing one more build okay build is successful now let me go and refresh it because on same system we are deploying every time this time we could see services page okay great so which means that services page is working fine means developer 2 code also successful now what i can say now i will go and ask my project manager that if you are fine to release this home page and services page onto the uat environment we can able to do because these two are working fine that is what we say and uh, let's assume that your manager has agreed to deploy this on the UAT environment. How we can update our code onto UAT environment and how we can push that we are going to see in the next lecture. Thanks for watching and see you there. Hello folks. So for developer 1 and developer 2 has pushed their code and it is working fine. Now we want to roll out this as a version onto the UAT environment. As you know, whenever I want to commit these changes onto the UAT environment, I should go with the approval process, right? Reviewer process. I need to create a PR and it should go as a approval to the other developer. He has to approve. Let's assume that our Viankil user is the manager or project manager for our code. So now I am going to create a PR to my UAT environments and our Viankil user has to approve it. For that, I am logging into my Viankil account.
Okay, I have logged into my Voyankil's account. Now I need to approve the Revdis request which he sent adding me as a collaborator. So I'm quickly going to approve that one. Okay, you can see here this is the email we got for taxi booking application and I'm just accepting his invitation so that I can able to approve his code. Now as a Revdi, I'm going to create a PR. I'm going to create a PR which means that the code which is there in the dev environment I'm trying to push it into the UAT environment. So far in the dev environment this is the code we are having and if I go and check on UAT environment here we have only one readme file why because the code hasn't updated onto UAT environment either onto production environment as well. Okay so now I would like to create a pull request you can see here pull request and uh, I want to create a pull request to merge dev changes onto the UAT environment. So you can see here what is the destination repository destination is UAT right and source it is dev only right. So the code whatever is there in the dev we are trying to merge that onto the UAT environment. Okay it is a bit slow let me refresh it. Okay yep sorry there was a problem. So able to merge which means that from dev to UAT we can able to merge and if you see here if you scroll down these all this is the code which we have done on UAT sorry dev. Now I would like to add this onto the UAT for that create a pull request. Now let's create a pull request while creating pull request we can leave comment I can leave comment that yeah before that one I can give title adding home and services pages. Okay, same thing I am going to give as a comment and create a pull request. Once I have created a pull request, this will be created as a pull request. You can see here, review is required. Once review is done, then only merging is allowed. Okay, so the reviewer option we have given for Voyankils as well as Velaxi. Velaxi Infotech, sorry. But Velaxi Infotech, he hasn't approved my invitation yet. But as a Voyankils, I can able to approve this PR. Now you can see here there is no PR. Let me refresh it. Yes, a new PR is there and uh, adding home page and services page. And you can see here review request and add your review. Here we can add our review, but whereas if I go to my uh, own account, this option is disabled. Why? Because I cannot raise PR and I cannot approve it. Both cannot be done together. Now as a another developer I will go through with this code and I will see whether this code is fine or not. Let's assume that if I am a manager or team lead or technical manager I will go through with the code which has written by the developer 1 and developer 2. If I feel that this code doesn't create any harm to our UAT environment then only I will approve. Otherwise I don't approve. If you see in your dev environment uh, first commit was working fine but second commit was not working as expected which means that that is a bug code whereas third commit it fixed that bug and that code we are pushing on to UAT which means that working code is moving on to the next branch. Anyway I am going to approve this one. So approve submit review. So I have approved that okay you can able to push this code on to the UAT branch. Now even as a Voyankils user I can merge this code onto the UAT branch or else I can go to as a developer here also I can do because it is approved now I can merge my code onto the UAT environment okay. Okay so I am merging my code confirm merge. This is how we can push our changes from one branch to another branch with the approval process. Now if I go to my code and whatever code you could able to see in the dev branch same thing you can able to see on UAT as well. Now I would like to test or I would like to deploy this code on the UAT environment right. For that again I need to use the Jenkins and this time instead of deploying on the test system I mean to say dev system dev system IP address is this instead of that one I am going to deploy it on the UAT system. How we can do that one we are going to see in the next lecture. Thanks for watching and see you there. Hello folks welcome back. In this lecture we are going to deploy our UAT branch code onto the UAT environment. To do that one we need to build our code right. 
of course we have a jenkins server to do that activity so i'm going to jenkins now i cannot use the dev job because it is going to take the code from the dev branch and also it is going to deploy into the dev environment instead of that one i'm going to create a new job and i will name it as a taxi booking uat i am giving and i can copy the job from means taxi booking dev whatever options are there in the taxi booking dev job that it will get copied into the uat then i will modify uat branch sorry dev branch with the uat okay so now if you scroll down you can see we got the git url credentials and the branch also as a dev but this time i don't need dev branch right i need uat and building options also same and this time i don't want to deploy on the dev system i want to deploy it on the test system sorry uat system so what is the url of uat system this is uat system url so i am going to give this one and colon 8080 okay so this is the default page i am giving this one in my jenkins job sorry here apply and save so now what i can say i have set up one more pipeline to build and deploy my uat branch code now let's build this code okay build is successful now i am checking my uat environment that is web app i can change this one to the uh, taxi grabber name okay here you can see home and service which means that whatever code was successfully working on dev environment same thing is working over here from here i can go to the production as well with the same process nothing but again i need to raise a pull request and uh, get it approved by the two reviewers then i can move but i don't want to display only these two tabs in my production i need the complete code for that even developer 2 and developer 3 also going to add their code quickly so that we can deploy complete code onto the production before that one what i will do i will name sorry here i will name this as a version 1 okay let me tag it as a version 1 why because this is working fine right create a new release so for this commit i am going to name it as a version 1.0 okay okay sorry here we need to do the tag version 1.0 on dev or on uat i am going to do on uat okay and release title i am going to give it as a home page and services so i am going to name it as a publish release that's it so this named it as a release 1.0 so now in case if i update my code and if it is not working i will go back to the version 1.0 version 1.0 is attached with this commit id all right now i am going to push my code as a developer 3 and developer 4 as well so this is developer 3 now as a developer 3 i need to publish cars information garage and uh, drivers information right so i am going to do that one but before that always git pull we need to do now i am going inside to web app okay here i am copying the developer 3 code so as you know code is available over here right he is responsible for drivers garage and cars okay instead of uh, opening and copying we have another option in mobile xterm that is drag and drop option so if i go to sftp you can see here whenever i drag and drop it will go to the slash home slash ec2 minus user account anyway from there again i will copy it into this location so so cars drivers and garage so i'm just dragging and dropping over here is some issue yep you can see here it is copied now if i go back to or if i just do ls let me make it bigger one slash home slash ec2 minus user okay you can see these three files now i would like to copy these files onto current location so cp star i am going to give so whatever content is there just copy it over here 
and also I need to do few changes to my existing code that is index.jsp I need to enable those URLs okay so I have updated code to work with the garage cars and drivers information and git add dot git commit minus m added car sorry cars garage and drivers info okay now git push origin master sorry git push origin dev right so we have pushed our changes now again i need to build it but this time again i need to build only dev job not the uat job because there is no updates on uat branch right so build now this time on our dev system over here we could able to see uh, apart from home and services we could able to see the cars garage and uh, drivers information as well now let's go and see okay it is successful and let me refresh it you can see here now home services drivers cars garage information came but whereas this is our uat system right our uat system is still running with the version 1.0 only now we are updating our code on the dev branch so always we are doing our experiments on the dev branch and working code will be move on to the uat branch now here it is working fine but if i go to services you garage all this information you cannot able to see and also if i go to cars you can see locations and page this is not expected like that these kind of bugs okay here home page itself is not working there is bug again again if i go to home page it is working so this kind of things we call it as a bugs developers has to fix all these bugs in the dev environment itself if it is working fine then we move to the next level so now one last thing as a developer for i am going to push remaining all code so that it will be a complete application so now as a developer for let's assume that apart from these he has to push remaining all code okay now i am just going to copy the copy entire code so that it will it will be the job of developer for let's assume that i am going to developer for system and git pull over here and go to web app okay here i am just copying all the code so to copy it again i need to use the sftp over here sftp so just drag and drop over here it will get copied all right i have copied all those files over here now if i check ls minus l slash home slash ec2 minus user okay all these files are there so i'm copying from there to here i need sorry i need to do cp right so instead of this one cp slash home ec2 minus user star to here i want to overwrite yes because we have updated all this so okay it's copied now and if i do ll okay complete code code is there now he is pushing his changes git add dot git commit minus m added dev4 code okay git push origin master sorry dev so this is how we can push our changes now i can say we have done the complete code and if i go to my jenkins and if i build the latest code this is uat job and if i build the latest code it should be having the complete options of my website Alright, build is successful. Now if I go and refresh it over here, it should work. Yep, you can see here, 
home services, drivers, cars, garage, locations, pages, all this information is updated properly. Everything is working as expected at this moment. There is no issue at all. Okay, even earlier home page was not working. Now it is working. Now I can say that this complete code is working. I can create or push these changes onto UAT branch. Now again one more pull request. I am going to create it. So this time the pull request I am going to create from the dev to UAT, right? And create a pull request. But whenever we are pushing from dev to UAT, only one uh, approval is required. And the title I am giving complete code. Same thing as a description. Create a pull request. So now again it went to the approval process. Only Revd can approve. I have already logged in as a Revd. So again if I go and refresh it. One more pull request is there. And I need to approve it. Okay. You still could be able to see the previous one. Yep. This is the one I could. I am expecting. And again I am approving it. In case if I want to reject. I can still do that one. But hopefully you understand the concept. So even as a. Y ankles I can merge this code. Now code has been merged. Now what I will do. I am going to update or run my UAT job this time not the dev job and at this moment this is the code on my UAT environment once I run this job I could able to see the similar kind of application on UAT environment as well so let's build now all right deployment is successful now if I check over here Yes, you can see it is similar to our dev environment. Nothing but complete code we got on the UAT environment. Now it is ready to go to the production. There is no issues, right? So from UAT to production, I am going to merge my code. So again, one more pull request. I am going to create it. So new pull request. This time it is on to production from UAT. Not from dev. Even I can do it from dev as well, but I am doing it from UAT because I am 100% confident that UAT code is working fine. Okay, let's create a pull request now. And uh, I am going to name it as a production code. and create a pull request okay this time we have created a pull request checking for ability to merge automatically the branch has no conflicts okay okay complete production code okay yeah i understand because as a admin i can able to commit this one that is the reason i could able to uh, do this one if I if I have done as a Vankle user, it might not allow. But anyway, merge the pull request. I'm merging it onto production branch. So the first time I'm deploying my code onto the production, but I'm 100% sure that my production branch code is going to work works 100% fine. Why? Because it is already tested in the dev environment as well as UAT, and at last we came into the production, right? So now let's quickly create a one more job for production and deploy it on a production system. So for that one new item and taxi booking instead of UAT prod and uh, I'm copying it from the taxi booking UAT and let's go and here we need to change the branch as a prod and uh, here we need to give the URL of the prod system. Okay, so this is the prod system IP address. Let me go and connect to this system and start the Tomcat because Tomcat is not running on this system. So let's go to load keep here EC2 minus user. Okay, I'm becoming a root OPT Tom Apache Tomcat and bin. Here we have the application. So I'm quickly starting this application for that startup.sh. That's it. Now if I try to access my production server application from the browser, 
okay we could see the default tomcat page okay this is default tomcat page and we are trying to access it as a slash web app right if i do web app it is saying that there is no application with this one once we have run our job we could able to see that one so i'm going to use this url into my production job apply and save now let's build it once we have built if i could able to access this application i could able to see the my complete taxi grabber application is it build initiated so build is successful let me refresh it okay you can see here our production code is working without any issues which means that our code is working as expected so this is how we can deploy our application on the production and now now i will give this url to my customer he will have a look and if he need any changes to this one he will be advising and developers are continue to enhance the code this is how git helps us to deliver our project on time to time and also we can gain confidence of our customers that we are regularly working on their projects why because i can give the uat environment url or dev environment url so he can able to follow that okay some progress is happening on his code this is how git helps to our devops process to deliver our applications or codes in efficient manner hopefully you understand that complete git flow in the devops process i hope i have almost completed with my git course thanks for watching and see you in the final lecture